Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 352 of Spitting Checklets, presented by Pink Whitney from our friends at New Amsterdam Vodka and the Boston Sports Podcast family. Howdy, all. It's so awesome to be back after a nice little breather to recharge the batteries. Three weeks from today, we're going to kick off a new season. It's going to be our first season since 2019. Hopefully, we get a complete season. No stoppages, no shortages, whatever. Going to have some new looks, going to have a new team, going to have a new TV deal we're going to talk about. But first, Got to catch up with the fellas. Producer Mikey Grinelli, what did you do for the last month? Anything interesting? Let's just get to the other guys. Everyone's heard from me for the past month. Let's just get to the All big right, dogs. That's right. You, you, you were jumping in the mix here with the RA. Yeah, you guys yep. took over the podcast. What, what, were, what were you guys, guys talking, talking about? about? Yeah, exactly. Talking about me buying like too stuff. expensive of pizzas. Legitimately nothing. So thank God you guys are back. We need too expensive of pizzas. Oh, yeah, man. One night on on down the Jersey Shore, I paid like 75 bucks for just two plain cheese pizzas. It was a long story. Paul, we'll, we'll this, get to that one later. Yeah, we'll get to that one later. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, he just the said barn it. burner. Did, did it top the lacrosse story? <laughs> it, it may have. Yeah, we'll say it did. Uh, he's going to call. All right, let's do this. Over. Let's take this from the top. Paul Biz Nasty, Bissonette. We'll get to your big news in a little bit, but I saw a lot of your Instagram. You were a well-traveled man on, on your break. A lot of hiking, a lot of sweating. No, you saw Katie's Instagram. Okay. She was I posting did. a lot about the hiking. So I ended do up that, driving up that. to Vancouver, guys. I had a, a lot of awesome stuff going on up there. One of my best friends got married. I uh, ended up visiting Whistler. Um, where, you'll be happy to know I uh, joined a golf club. VGC Victoria Golf Club. I'm now officially a member at a course. Shot my first round, 92 with a with a uh, herniated disc in my back, L5S1. It was it was a little bit out that day, but still grinded through it. And then afterward, um, uh, Russ Cortnell was there because he's a member there. And uh, this other guy, Bussy, I got to get his name. I got to pull it up here. They were they were in the basement. They got this area. It's like where uh, where all the guys play dice afterward. Do you play dice at your club? I've never played dice at my club, but I've played a lot of other uh, gambling games. But no, dice is usually like a street corner game, isn't it? It's like public push shit, huh? What? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> would you join a fucking goat ranch in the, <laughs> the middle of downtown Vancouver? <laughs> East Hayes thing's got 18 holes in quick there. But uh, w- with this other guy who's a member, he's the only player in WHL history to be traded for a bus. So he's got the nickname Bussy, Tom Bussy What a nickname. Martin. Yeah, so we were playing dice till late in the morning. So ultimately, it's an unbelievable club. I had a great time over on the island. Uh, got to check out my properties and stuff like that. Now, uh, going back to, uh, to Russ Cornell, he's actually selling property over there for that. You remember Gauzer? I talk about it all the time. Discovery. Oh, Discovery. They got another one that's going on a little island just off of, uh, of uh, Vancouver Island. It's uh, I believe I think it's called James Island. So they have this private 18 holes and I think they're selling lots between like four and nine million bucks. It's like Billy Goat Central. So uh, I got to hang out with those guys. He told me all about that. And then, uh, as I mentioned, some hiking, which you saw on uh, Katie's Instagram. And we ended up driving up because we couldn't fly with the dogs. A lot of airlines ended up buttoning up on traveling with dogs on on the plane. So uh, Lloyd. I know, I know we haven't talked really much about Lloyd lately, but he's getting bigger. But uh, he is, uh, he's a bedwetter, Whit. My dog Who's is Lloyd. A, my dog. Remember when I adopted a dog and we didn't, we didn't figure out what the shit, name was? Dude, I forgot you had another <laughs> dog, dude. It's been a while. I yeah. thought Lloyd was a guy you met on one of your hikes for a second. Lloyd, oh, he wets the bed. Why, your dog sleeps in the bed with you? Some, t- some nights, yeah, especially when really? we were up in Vancouver. But yeah, he's, he's a just big like, guy, isn't he? He's getting big. He's 50 pounds already. I, I, I want to say he's about five months old. So he's going to be bigger than Finn. And and ultimately, it was a good time away. And uh, you, you mentioned Instagram, um, RA. I, I, uh, I shut down the social media. It felt great to, to live like a normal human again, where you're not reading and watching other people's lives nonstop. So I had a good, good break, uh, completely dialed out, and uh, had a wonderful trip with my girlfriend. So it was good. You lived... You 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 live not like a normal human, though. What do you mean? Because normal humans have all of the social media. That's true. I went off. I you went actually off, lived. Off, I you went lived off the old grid. school normal, but current day bizarro world, bizarro world biz, biz grealis. You you must have peaked here and there, though, biz. I mean, you had to. I mean, you had to have peaked once or twice, no? Because I, I try I to. Think- 
I think I don't know if he would, man. He gets in trances and shit when he's hiking. I I had to go through Jeff Jacobson. Anything I needed. Okay. Wow. Anything I needed posted. I had to go through Jeff. Oh, wow. I think think it's good good once in a while. Oh, it's all. I I wish I could do it. So I mean, to cut you off. I wish I could. You're good. Fucking. I wish I could as much as you did, because I said I was going to and I didn't interact as much, but I was still definitely like I'm a news hound. I'm a news junkie. I was definitely like, eh, 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 I, I did get a little bit of work done there, though. So I ended up filming that second Watson gloves commercial. Oh, uh, so- buddy. <laughs> Pasha sent me the trailer for that. No, he sent me. It's not even a trailer. It's, it's a 10 second clip. And I just, my mouth was a gap. Is that the word? A gap? And I was like, oh my God, what is this commercial going to be? Like, just the face and your outfit and what is around you. Yeah. I can't wait to see this. So that's one of our sponsors. And we ended up doing a collab uh, not too long ago. And we la- launched that first commercial. And then we, uh, you know, we got back and sat down and they're going to let us push the limits again. So uh, very thankful for that. Uh, speaking of other content, Sandbagger Ooh. with Zach Wierenski and Andrew Kopp, not an AHLer, by the way. Uh, that will be dropping today, folks. It's Tuesday. Uh, we're recording this Monday. Pasha did an unbelievable job. Jason drops editing. Wednesday. Drops Wednesday, seven Ooh, p.m. Good. Okay, we backed it up. Yeah, I it thought it was wrong. dropping. I thought it was dropping today. But uh, Wit, you've had a chance to peek at it. What are your thoughts so far? <laughs> I, I don't even really. I don't. I can't really give my thoughts until post post whenever. Okay. Like it, there's just so much shit that goes down in that match that I've been thinking about since the match. Like I haven't like that match has been on my head, on my mind. I think there's so much that we could chat about after, but right now I would be giving things away. Uh, I'll say this, just the fact that you thought caught played in the AHL and he had 15 goals last year was one of the funniest moments on the ride there. <laughs> uh, but I think it's great. I actually thought it started off a little bit slow when we were in the midst of the match. But looking back, it's it's, it's pretty good from the get go. Like these guys were um, they were they were they were more like taking us in slowly. Right. They're like, what's wrong with these guys? But then they finally got into the mix. And, and I think everyone's going to enjoy it. I saw a good trailer for it. Is has that dropped? No. That okay. drops Monday night at 8 p.m. So by the time this podcast drops, it will have dropped. Okay, nice. All right, so you guys have already seen it. Or, or go check it out. So we got, we got to hear about what you were up to, Wit. One of the posts yeah. that I did see when I po- – so I, I ended up downloading Twitter just to hit a couple retweets, one of which being uh, Ryder's first day of school. Yeah, first day of preschool. First day of preschool. Pretty crazy moment. I mean, he's turning four November 28th and why it's turning one November 16th. So just happening quick. Like all of a sudden this kid he's going to preschool. Now, granted, he's got two years of preschool. He, he, so he's got a brutal birthday for hockey, right? If you play hockey now, who even knows if he like will play hockey or wants to play hockey? But you better fucking want to play hockey. No, I'm just kidding. So, you know, you want to be ju- born January, February, right? So you're you're playing. You're one of the older kids with your birth year. So he's late. But school wise, he's going to be old school. I think it's September 15th if you're, or September 1st. If you're born after that, you can't go. to. So next year, he can't go to kindergarten even next year. He'll be turning five just like a month or two into another year of, 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 of whatever it is, preschool. So, you know, he's got a, quite a bit a way to go till he's in real school. But still, it's crazy to send him off to school. And he's he's enjoyed it. I mean, dude, he's like uh he just like is he's so unreal at some moments. And then that next moment he's bawling, crying, screaming at me. It's just like it's just four, three, four years old. They're nuts. They're crazy. But to see him go off to school and get some pictures with him, I was pretty pumped. I was pretty proud. You know what I mean? Seeing my guy he had some fresh new kicks on too. Bree oh, hooked yeah. him up with these nice white Adidas. For sure, they came home dirty as shit. I was like, they play outside an hour of the three hours he's gone. That's the other thing. We dropped him off. We went and got him like two hours later. So um, oh, preschool is only two hours. Uh, it's like three, two and a half, three. But you can have him do lunch bunch and then lunch bunch. You're going to stay an extra 45 minutes and eat lunch there. But, you know, I we did it today. The school called. You got to come get Ryder. He's furious. I don't know what's going on. He didn't want. I think everyone was leaving and he was staying for lunch. He's like, fuck that. I'm not staying. Everyone else is leaving. I'm leaving, too. So we'll see. It's not a long day, though. But, you know, it's, you just got to get him in the mix. It's three days a week. But he's starting skating. We're going to do skating. He started playing lacrosse. Dude, this guy started this program in Massachusetts. It's called Scoops Lacrosse. It's for kids age uh, like three and a half, four-ish to I think 10 it goes to. He's in like 10 towns now. This guy comes. He's pumping music the whole time. He makes the kids dance. He's doing, he's doing like a clown stuff, being a goofball. He's like 
teaching the kids like we got to the Barney costume right. on dude this guy I we, the first thing was Thursday night I was like this guy's an animal and he does it all over towns and so it's pretty cool lacrosse is a great sport baseball America's pastime is it still I don't know I love baseball but lacrosse if you want to be an athlete you play lacrosse that's an athletic sport that might be the toughest sport of them all it's it's, it's, it's beast mode so I got him a stick on Amazon he's firing the thing around um Dude, the break was great. I've actually been like itching to get back for a little bit now, though. Like, I think like I I I enjoy this so much getting on and just rambling on and on that it was like, all right, let's go. Like, like no, the thing was, we had really nothing to talk about. We could get on and do what we're doing right now and talk about absolute nonsense. But in the end, the people want to hear about hockey. So I'm excited to be back. Uh, played a lot of golf. My elbow's still fucked up. Sucks. Uh, it's like it's way better, but it's still not great. I got to get this thing figured out. Uh, what else? Yeah, um, oh, shot my career right? low though. Shot sixty five. Shot sixty five at yeah. Maya at Nantucket with my brother in law, yeah. who's a forty five handicap. He had thirty five drinks, broke two clubs. Dude, neither one out of anger. On the fourth tee, by the way, some guy joins us at the golf club. He shows up. He's like, "You're not playing the tips because we were playing one up." They have a big tournament, the U.S. Mid Amateur, coming up at this course. My Maya Comet. The winner goes to the Masters, so they close the back tee. So my sixty five is from the one up tees, so it's not as impressive, but. This guy pulls up. He's like, you guys aren't playing the tips. I'm like, dude, settle down now. He proceeds to pump three balls dead right out of bounds. I was like, this guy want to play the tips? Sure as <laughs> shit, my brother-in-law on the fourth tee. Dude, this kid, he just got these clubs. We're crushing drinks. I took a picture of uh, in front of his seat in the cart. It was like a 7.50 tee time. Pack of Newports, Red Bull, tra- Transfusion, and a Bud Light. <laughs> it's a great morning. So fourth tee, he hits the ground about three feet behind the ball and snaps his driver in Been half. There. He's looking. He's like, oh, my God. I was dying laughing. We get to the 17th tee. Dude, this, now he's hitting three wood. He hits the three wood. Same thing. I don't know what happened this time because the ball actually went forward. The club snaps in half and somehow, miraculously, scientifically, I don't know how this is possible. I'm sitting right behind him on my phone on a bench. The club head goes flying back, hits me in the ankle. I still have a fucked up ankle from this. No, granted, my ankles are brutal, but I'm like wounded. So he broke two clubs. We finished the round. I birdied the 18th hole. Did I eagle 18? I, I... I get to seven under on 18 and he goes, bro, like you played pretty good. I go, I just shot 65 dude. seven under is the best round of my life. He goes, <laughs> yeah, man, I knew you were making some birdies out there. <laughs> so like, I had no idea what was going on, which is probably why I played great, but that was awesome. Uh, most embarrassing moment for me. So I've long said on this podcast and in life in general, if you run out of gas, you're the biggest piece of trash scumbag. You should spend a night in jail. Like running out of gas is so unacceptable. And a lot of times I've mentioned that I think like women, no offense, ladies out there, but you guys are guilty at leaving tanks on near empty when your husband gets in the car. I'm I'm now the biggest loser to ever appear on a podcast. I went to physical therapy at BU the other day. I had my wife's car. She was still in Nantucket. And I don't know, I, I, it popped up that it was like 40 miles to empty. And I was like, oh, I'll go do it. No, I'll go do it at a, at a, uh, at a what's it called when they do the, uh, they pump your gas for you, all right. Um, full service? Full service. I saw one when the light came on the day before. I said, I'm not getting out pumping gas. I love the full service. I, I hate pumping gas. So I go, I, 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 I forget though. So I go into BU. I leave BU, it's three o'clock. Thank God it wasn't like five. And I go on this road. Uh, is it Buick Street? Yeah, I think it's Buick Street. And all of a sudden, the car shuts off. I'm like, what the fuck? I look down. There is no gas left in the car. This car. I was like, oh, my God. Dude, I'm in the middle of the intersection. In the middle of this road. Sorry, not in the intersection. Middle of this one lane road. Like, you know, there's one lane this way, one lane this way. But I'm now. So I'm like, shit. So uh, there's a little like entrance behind me and I'm on a slight little hill. So I put it in neutral and I'm trying to ghost ride this thing, but the power steering's off because the car can't be running. So I'm turning the wheel like this. I end up kind of backing in where I'm like, can maybe ride it down and just like park it there to not block traffic stops, gets stuck. So I'm now sticking out into the road, dude, people are losing their mind. I was outside. I was fucking lose. I was calling a- AAA, but I didn't know my number. I was just, I was walking around. I, my heart rate must've been 180. People are honking the horn at me. This guy walks out of the building. Like he's going home. 
And he goes, bro, you can't be parking your car there. I'm like, dude, I ran out of gas. I'm the biggest loser in the world. I'm a scumbag. I'm a scumbag. I'm an absolute loser. Dude, will you get, if I give you $100, will you walk to the gas station and get me gas? They'll get, he goes, I don't have a container. I go, no, they'll give you one. I've, I've been through this before because I've run out of gas before. <laughs> so, so listen, so the guy's like, yeah, man. All right. So I give him, I had $200 on me. So I give him the two hundos because I, you know, he needed to pay for the gas and I wanted to give him his money. Dude, this guy could have taken off, right? Like, what a guy. That's true. Sure as shit, for the next 15 to 20 minutes, I am I getting motherfucked up and down the street. People are waiting. The other, the, other, the other line's going. Then a car from my side that my car's blocking tries to get in. So then that causes traffic oh. on the other end. I see him coming back. I'm like, thank God. Unbelievable. He, can't, he comes back. He ends up filling it up. He's like, dude, you don't touch this. You don't need to touch this. I've already got gas on me. You don't need to touch this. I go, buddy. Thank you so much. You're the best guy I've ever met. Keep the money. Just keep the rest. Like, you know, probably one, one eighty. Cause they can only fill up a little bit. And like, he, and he goes, man, yeah, thank you so much. And he goes, Hey, can you do me one favor though? I go, yeah. He goes, don't call yourself a loser and a scumbag and an idiot. You're not, you're not those words. You're a good person. Wow. And have a great day, man. I was wow, like, what guy. if God was, was one <laughs> of us? Dude, Just I have the pictures strain. I'll send wow. you guys of him putting the gas in and the car in the middle of the road. But so the, I but, actually should have been put in jail for a night because running out of gas like, is an un... What is the word? Inexcusable inex- scumbag move. So like bells and whistles weren't going off. Usually when you're running out, especially new cars, they're like dinging every five seconds. Or did Dude, you did, know what? Shut the, the fuck up to the or, car. Or did, no, or did they, they say the this is my elbow. one when Bree was driving? <laughs> she didn't tell you. <laughs> so you had and your jacket. Bree's blowing me up. She's sending it to all of our friends, the family yeah. group chats. I'm like, this was a secret. Hey, did now you get the, tell the whole story. Did you get that move from Jack Eichel? Which one? Like getting the guy to go for you. And 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 what? So so you're saying you you didn't want to go because you didn't want to leave your car there? Were you yeah, afraid? because then I was like, people. But, would be I, but, in my, but I did want to go, but but I did want to go because I wouldn't have to be there to catch the wrath of all these people that oh, I was yeah. holding up. Oh, but then I'm like, dude. But then if they if they come and tow the car before I'm back, I don't know where to go. Uh, so you know, what Bo- I did was Boston, I actually huh? sat like. 30 yards down from the car. I have pictures. And like, so people were like screaming and swearing. You like, oh, like, look at this asshole. <laughs> like, look at this fucking guy. He walked away <laughs> 10 minutes ago. He's a loser. <laughs> so that was a Ugh. tough moment for me on the break. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't really have much else. Dude. I, just, I would say nice. Boston was, would probably be the worst city in the world to run out of gas oh, in an intersection tough. too. Yeah. I can't imagine Manhattan things that were yelled at you. a picture right now. <laughs> Oh, it's hilarious. Um, R.A., I ended up seeing a video of you uh, sent to us by... Oh! Uh, oh. <laughs> oh! Oh! Oh, yeah. This I don't is think a, I started judging by that reaction. This no. is a real treat. I'll R.A., let you, take it away you with. went to a concert the other night. Who'd you oh. see play? Oh, the Black Rose. You were Rose. front yeah, row. I was Black psyched off, psyched to get to it. Go ahead, yeah. You were psyched on something. <laughs> oh, uh, well, the sweat factor? Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, the the, 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 we got this sent to us from a friend of the lead singer of the band who opened up for whoever you were seeing. And he went up to introduce himself and you had no idea what was going on. Like he was like, this dude was on another planet, just loving the music. So we have the video. Uh, yeah, I know. I hadn't seen it yet because I yeah I, I saw that last Wednesday, dude. Front row. I mean, when you're on when, literally on the railing, I mean, Chris Robinson and Rich Robinson are 10 feet in front of us. Yeah, we like, saw. Just, no, but yeah, oh yeah, yeah. The, well, the, the people listening have, and I, I did tweet out a video. It said, "Where's Waldo?" And I don't think people found me, but we were legit in the front row. Yeah, I mean, plus I was rocking my fa- my head off. I mean, I'm a, I was head banging. I'm sure I was doing whatever in the video. I can imagine. I, I'm looking forward to seeing it. But I had an absolute blast. My first concert in four years, man. I had to let it out. Oh no shit! Yeah, because the fucking pandemic. You know, that was, that was two, two years ago. Two years, and well, you know, and and the last one I saw was Tom Petty, his fortieth tour, fortieth anniversary tour. God rest his soul, twenty seventeen. I hadn't been to a show since, so wow, and and it was great too. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Black Crows or their catalog at all, but their first album, the Shake Your Money Maker, it had you know, Jealous Again, Twice as Hard, She Talks to Angels, like three certified bangers right there. They played that whole album front to back, like the you know the whole the, the way it plays on the album, and then you know they take a quick break and then they play like five or six songs after that, and it's incredible, dude, just to see like this band they've been doing it for thirty years, like in front of you that close. There's there's nothing like it, man. If you can ever sit that close for any show, there's nothing like being that close to the artist and seeing them doing their thing. It's incredible. 
bought Especially nosebleed, if you're on bought nosebleeds <laughs> ends up in the front row or did you actually buy these front row seats this time well right? i had w- w- what they were is they were actually third row seats on the aisle but because you know the the rows get smaller as you get closer so there's no one in front of you so like the the kind of the concert rules are if you know you're on that seat and there's no one in front of you you kind of you kind of have that spot right on the rail so like we were like basically in i guess for lack of a better word entitled to the spot we had carved out in the rail but uh, no, it was did the dude say hi to me after the show with or during? Because one guy, I have like, no idea. Because one guy was kind of funny during the during the show, like Harry, I'm like headbanging in the front row, and a guy walks by, like he's over the security barrier. He's like, "Hey, love the show!" Like gives me a fist bump and keeps going. My brother's like, "What was that?" I was like, "I don't know, dude." Check let's listen. They're all over. And then another dude after the show. That's when I was fully drenched, and he came over and yeah, said, "What's up?" So it might have been the second guy, but. Yeah, nice to see some chicklets uh, listeners in attendance, too. I bumped into a few of them as well. All right, what else did you get into? Did you go to Cape Cod? Was that one of your trips? I did, yeah. I went down to uh, Chatham. Yeah, we didn't do – we usually do Vermont. We usually do our lake, that lake house in Vermont, uh, but we couldn't get it this year, so we ended up going to Chatham down Cape Cod. And I know, obviously, Cape Cod's known for their beaches, but I didn't realize how many, like, lakes are down the Cape Wet. Like, there's a small lake there. And the house is on the lake, so I didn't even go to the beach at all. We had like a, a literal lake right at right at the end of the driveway, so I just stayed at the house most of the week, except for going out to dinner or, or picking food up or whatever. And we went to some friends. Not a beach but, guy either, dude. Give me yeah. a pool or a lake. That, Beaches dude, are a pain in the prick. Especially sometimes. I'm pasty prick like me. I got to put all that goop all over me if I want to be out in it. So I'd, I'd rather just go for a dip and sit in the shade. And I love the ocean, but going to the beach is a fucking chore, man. Um, my friend went to a wedding in uh, Chatham this weekend. Chatham Bars in this beautiful like mm. resort in Chatham biz. Bruno Mars played the wedding. <laughs> uh, I I, uh, I don't know if I'm a big How Bruno sick Mars is that? music fan, but I'm I'm, I'm I, he's pretty energetic on stage. He, he's, just... he's he's incredible. The night he said like, yeah, I'm going to this wedding tonight. And this Bruno Mars, like we started listening to Bruno Mars, dude. He has yeah. bangers. Oh, does he? Yeah. That that, that and that slow. Song. Versace on the floor. That song's phenomenal. I don't know what it's called. There's just a bunch of great Bruno Mars songs. I didn't realize how much I enjoyed his music. But to play a wedding like that guy, he must have been like two million, three million yeah. bucks. Uh, speaking yeah, of music, wow. um, Kanye dropped his new album, R.A. Did you get a chance to check that out? Uh, I have not. Haven't. Uh, <laughs> it's not on my to-do list either. I probably won't get to it. No diss to Kanye, just not my, my thing. But what, what about, about you, you? It? No, no. Did I have this bad thing where I listen? Like, if I like some songs on Spotify, I then listen to like the ten most recent likes just over and over and over again. I'm such a bad like music you ride, selector. You ride the algorithm. Yeah, I guess so. But no, I just like I don't know how to get find new music. But I, I I'm not the biggest Kanye guy. I mean, if you send me some good songs, I'll listen. I listen to I I went through Drake's new one and like. I heard some good ones, but everyone that like people say this is the best song I listened to is brutal. I don't even remember the name of it. So I'm a little bit of an odd music duck, if that makes any sense. But like, I don't know. You seem to be all dialed into Kanye, dude. He'll release a new face mask and you'll be talking about it on this <laughs> podcast. No, I mean, it's, it's 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 a little bit of a spectacle when he drops an album. And I thought that, that the start of the album was pretty good. There was a bunch of bangers. It got a, a little too gospel for me and too long. So there's one thing about um, um, all the streaming services now is you essentially as an artist get rewarded on the length of the album. So these artists are starting to release these albums that are just too long. 27 songs on this one so wow. you kind of you kind of lose interest at a certain point and now i mean ra like going going back to the old times like i mean even some of your favorite bands like did they used to do the double discs like the double what, what? albums yeah like well the stones actually they had only one double album that was made in the studio they had a live a couple do- double yeah a couple double albums that were live but yeah they only made one double album exile on main street it's maybe their best album as well but yeah you'd seen it a lot more in the 70s and stuff but now to even hear the word album, like it's almost inconceivable because it's like music, such a singles based thing. It's like people have like one song. It's like just, you know, getting that one song out there, like the whole idea of a, a concept of an album. It's almost foreign to most musicians. Now, Is it is it normal now or am I totally off in that it was always songs are so short? 
you notice songs are so short now all right people's attention spans have dropped i i think it's been cyclical when like rock and roll first started like songs were basically under two minutes and then you know they oh, got okay. crazy long in okay. the 70s and i think it's it's come probably come back a little bit yeah I, and what biz said it also attention span too i'm sure that fact is in it at some point and by the way the band who opened for the black crows dirty honey you mentioned your, your buddy's friend work, work for them, so i want to give them a shout out as well i didn't get in knocking up blow smoke and pretend i get in for the open i'll have i don't know if he works for i think it's the well, lead singer who was trying to talk to you Oh, uh, really? The, uh, yeah. The, real, nah, because I, I I'm pretty sure. Viz, did you read that? Because yeah, I, because yeah, I, because uh, well, the dude, after, the second dude, did show, show he's coming up with the mic yeah. and RA had no he's clue. Like, RA, come on up. He's like, what? Yeah. Well, um, last time, actually, not the last time I saw, I saw the Black Crows when they were touring Jimmy Page, the uh, Led Zeppelin guitarist, Biz, like 22 years ago. And I actually caught the lead singer's harmonica. He threw it out to the, to the audience and it was probably the one of the best, two best catches I've ever made in my life jumped up and pulled down the dude's harmonica. So I was looking for it because I knew I was going to be close. I was going to like show him it during the show, but I couldn't find it. It's buried amongst all my shit somewhere. So, so he, he sends us the video. Yo, boys, Mark's, Mark's the singer from Dirty Honey sent me this. He opened up for Black Crows last night. Look at R.A. He was in one. I go, oh, my God, dude, I'm crying laughing. He goes, Mark goes up to him and says he's a huge fan of the pod. Oh, Ra's he, got zero idea that he just performed and blows him off, dude. No, I said no, no, no. I I said hello, thanks for listening, to this. dude. He was dressed like in shorts, like he didn't look like a he had like shorts and a t shirt on, dude. That, hey, he comes up. Ra's like, I'll sign. Yeah, what do you want me to sign? What do you want me to sign? <laughs> no, I was like, dude, give me That's backstage. Like, uh, I want to blaze up with the Robinson brothers. I think uh, I think uh, I don't know if I've told, told the story on the podcast before, but Pasha was at one of the drafts, and Cole Caulfield came up to him and like started saying <laughs> hi, and Posh was kind of like, all right, man. And then Posh went to the crowd. Next thing you know, 15 picks later, he's getting drafted by Montreal. And Pasha being the jock sniffer that he is, he's like, damn it, could have got in there. But uh, now speaking of Caulfield, we do have him for a sandbagger coming up. Him and Zegras, that'll be the next one. So uh, the big swing. A uh, little, little uh, Twitter said his hot take of the NHL season that Caulfield gets 40. Who? Yeah, so like NHL tweeted out, what's your hot take of the season? And Zegras retweeted and wrote, Cole Caulfield gets 40 talks. Wow. I mean, he's been with him. He knows the guy. He knows the guy like as well as anyone else how much they've played together, right? Younger days, growing up, USA. He believes in him. I could see it. That's a lot of pressure from the friend with 40, 40 tucks. Yeah, he's like, thanks, bro. In his, fir- in his first full season. Yeah, that's that would be it would be impressive as hell. But yeah, we get uh, we get a lot of hockey to get to. Actually, we got to give a big thanks first off. We haven't have been together. AJ Galante and Brad Wingfield for joining yeah. us last week. We we kind of gave that a little surprise episode. We everybody was talking about the doc. We knew how popular it was. We we were able to get both of them. So we hope you enjoyed that. So we want to thank those guys again. AJ's a, a great kid, man. It was uh it was great catching up with him because you watch the doc and you know you're like, oh, what kind of guys is going to be? And yes, he awesome dude. Like he's just a a, a great kid. I, I was so glad we had him on. If Wayne you have any, sh- if you have any preconceived like ideas about what he'd be like, like maybe a you know a rich kid, maybe you think he's spoiled. Like he was the man, like self-deprecating, good dude, well-spoken. I had a blast talking to him, so I'd like to yeah. maybe meet up with him again at some point. Absolutely. He actually sent us over like a bunch of footage from his like infamous camcorder from the Netflix documentary, and we incorporated that into our full-length YouTube pod. So check out the full-length YouTube oh, nice. pod because yeah, because there's a ton team. of like when he talks about John Cena coming to the game, like he has all that footage of it. So it's really cool. A lot of cool fight footage as well. Nice and well, yeah, with Winfield. Lucky Field. Wingfield ended up uh, texting me over a picture of when he baseball swung that guy in the neck. Pretty nice, pretty nice picture of it, like mid swing on the way down. Gary so. Sheffield him. <laughs> well, Biz, with hockey coming back into our lives, head on over to your local bar and make sure to order up some Pink Whitney. Not sure if you caught the highlights over the weekend in the PLL championship game, but that's what the chaos got. Those are the guys who won the tur- championship this year. They got a big trophy full of Pink Whitney, and you can do the same at your local spot. So. Head on out and grab some fine we're, pink Whitney. Whit, you were mentioning lacrosse earlier. Paul Rabel retired from from professional lacrosse. One of the is he is he like one of the goats of lacrosse? I consider him the goat. I consider him like the Gretzky. I mean, he he he's he's the all time great. He also is started what I think. this league too, right? Yeah. So he didn't just play. Like now he's like taking it to another level. We interviewed him a few years back, maybe yeah. not even years now. Yeah, no, the, during oh, the pandemic yeah. last year. Okay, yeah, he, great he guy. Ten years ago, I bet. Um, <laughs> It's great with the. It's cool what they're doing. How they go to cities and everyone plays. I watched a little bit of the final game. I mean, it's it's pretty sick to see him retire as a player and he be, he gets to just hop right in to continue to grow the league. So it's awesome. Congrats to him for an amazing run. 
Well said, well said. Well, boys, I said it earlier. I, I should say I, I alluded to it, and we kind of buried the lead here. Our boy, Paul Biznasty Bisnet, has gotten a gig at TNT. He's going to be an official TNT in-studio analyst as they, not for the first time ever, join this network. Biz, we're all proud papas right here, buddy. Hey, Biz. I don't even know Congrats, what to fucking bro. say. This is nuts, man. Like, I, I would have never thought in a million years after, you know, the career I had, I'd be fucking teeing it up with Wayne Gretzky on the panel. Um, I'm, I, you know, I, I, I obviously feel blessed. Like back when I even got the call to go interview, I was like, Holy shit. And went there, um, you know, and then ended up getting offered the job. And I, I guess the first thing was like, Oh, like, like Chicklets is, you know, that's, that, that's where I hang out. That's where I do most of my work. You know, is that going to be okay? And the fact that Barstool and, and Turner Sports is okay, that it's all going to work together. And I know some of you are probably wondering, well, you know, what's what's going to happen to the pod? Well, absolutely nothing. And I'm hoping Better that fucking be nothing. Tell you that for free. Well, well if anything, I, I hope guess. we get Wayno w- 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 on it at some point. That'd be awesome. Uh, I don't know if they described it in the in the in when they came out with um, all the details, but I'm actually not even going to be on the panel. I'm just getting Wayne his water and his towel between breaks. So they kind of they kind of overblown it, but uh no, it's uh, guys. I, I'm I'm a little overwhelmed. I, I, there's a ton of thanks to, to go around. Of, of course, the, the the Turner Sports, and I got to mention a few names: uh, uh, Tara, Michelle, Craig, and Sean. They were the ones who were there when I ended up going in. Maybe feel very comfortable. They were the ones afterward when I talked to them about how this would all work. Um, as well, of course, with uh, Erica Nardini and, and Barstool Sports and Dave allowing it all to go down. Um, and of course, to you guys, like, I don't think this opportunity comes about if this podcast never, it never was created. So like to, to, to you, RA and, and, and Grinnell and, and, and wit, like I, you know, I'm, you know, forever grateful to you guys. And, and of course, for all your support, but, um, giving me kind of like a second lease on life post-career and, you know, you just talked about Paul Rabel, uh, wit and in the, I'd, I'd say the hardest part of a professional athlete is when you retire and what you're going to get into next and, and luckily for, for this, this like media career, it's, you know, it's given me a, a second lease on life and something to look forward to when I wake up in the morning and, and something to strive towards. And, and also like, as far as the thank yous go, like you guys know, Jeff Jacobson, he's, he's my, I don't know you, you, he's a Jack of all trades, Swiss army knife. I guess he's my agent, uh, helps out with a lot of the creative on some of the other stuff that I do, like lots and gloves. Um, he's been a big help in all this. Um, of course, Pasha as well, who's uh, the videographer for a lot of the stuff that we do. Um, the Arizona Coyotes, when I first retired, they gave me my first opportunity in the media world um, into like the whole crew here. Todd Walsh, uh, whether it's Tyson Nash, Jody Jackson, Bob Heathouse, who who basically coddled me and helped nurture me, nurture me on the radio. And that's where, where I first started. Um, if I've forgotten any names as far as the Arizona Coyotes are concerned, like Rich Nairn, um, like everybody, the whole organization itself. Um, and then, of course, just family and friends and, and, and my girlfriend, Katie. Um, I just it's it's been like I said, I, I don't really know how to summarize what's happened in, in, in 2017 to now. Um, I guess if there's one last thing I could say when I mentioned the podcast, I also I, I, I include the fans in that. Because if it wasn't for the, our massive fan base, we wouldn't be able to do what we do as far as, uh, you know, whether it's the, the ball and roll hockey tournaments, whether it's all this fun golf stuff we do, and, and even the, just the podcast itself. So I guess when, when, if, when I'm up with, on the panel with TNT, like I'm, I'm representing all, all of what I just said like you guys, the fans and everything. And, and if it wasn't for all those people that I mentioned, there's not a chicken dick's chance in hell that I would even got the call to, to go and even get interviewed. So I hope I summarize that properly. And, and once again, thank you to all those people that I mentioned. I'm so fucking excited to get started. And uh, it's, it still seems very, very surreal. So I hope I sum, sum, summarize that. All right. Congrats, Biz. All right. Did he just win an Emmy? It's no, silly. but it's oh, yeah. hold on. Let no, me get that no, list no. on my pod. Listen, hey, we, Biz, we can. I we, got a couple requests before you go. I'm actually. <laughs> I was busting your balls. I'd like to know One. if Biz will be on the next season of Ted Lasso. <laughs> it needs to. It needs to say like when you're talking, like host of Spit and Chicklets podcast. Like, are they going to put that beneath you? Yeah, I, I oh, think. Okay. Yeah, get, yeah, get yeah. that, Jeff. Get that That's in the fair. contract now. <laughs> All right. I want twenty can points in the back end. What? With all the dinners we've had, all the discussions we've had, when you repeat yourself over and over, can you imagine Gretzky one night? Like, Biz, so that night I got 50 and 39 when I scored my fifth goal. The feeling that went through my, my heart. And Biz goes, what? 
<laughs> what? Would you say Wayne? <laughs> like Wayne fucking Gretzky better be ready to repeat himself 14 times talking to you. Are you going to be nervous as shit, dude? Are you going to be nervous? Okay, so so what I really enjoyed about it was the fact that it was laid back similar to this podcast where I, I believe the segments are about 12 minutes long. So it's not just like, boom, get out your thought and then yeah. move on. It's, it's, you get to articulate and it's more conversation driven. And um, I was there with Liam and, and Anson Carter for my, uh, for the tryout. And like I said, the, the 12 minute segments seem like they flew by, but That's because funny. it was conversational, it made it a lot easier in order to do like the, I guess the, the TV, mind you, we were not on live. I think my heart rate will be similar to when I had the puck on my stick um, on the power play. To road trips. Never had that. Uh, but actually, one thing I didn't mention when I was summarizing everything, and, and I, I get what you're saying. You chirped me for for thanking all these people, but I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious when I say none of that would have been possible without them. But the people I get to work with on, on the, the Turner side of it now, and you guys have seen the list of people, and it is just you know stud after stud. And we got uh, – uh, jonesy in between the benches i don't know if he's ever done yeah he's he's going to be there liam of course who has an insane motor uh anson carter rick talkett who i'm familiar with from his time with with the coyotes i'm looking forward to him i think that he's going to drag so many good stories out of wayno and i'm sure that's a big component as to why they brought him in and also the people who are going to be calling calling the games everybody eddie old check's going to be in analysis analysis for for uh I believe what is it in between periods when they just go to the booth? Or how no, does that yeah, work? Edzo's doing the uh, the the game color. I thought, I thought the he was doing the same oh, thing. Color guy. Yeah, okay, because yeah, because yeah, well, I, honestly, I'm, I don't know who's. I, there's so many names. I forget who's on what network, but I know Kenny Kenny Albert and like Brendan Burke. They're two of the main play by play guys. Brendan um, Burke, another guy who I was with uh, with the Wheeling Nailers. That's where he got his start in in pro wow. sports. Yeah. Oh, he's he was good. unreal Very back good. then. I'm like this guy. This guy has a, a, a unreal voice and he's got a good cadence. And now he's doing it with the Islanders, and of course has this job. He'll uh, continue to do the Islanders the way like. Yeah, like Edzo right. with yeah. the Blackhawks. Yeah, uh, Biz. The other thing I forgot. So you're thanking us. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily thank us quick though, because this is the most appointment viewing television for oh. me ever. Because I'm not gonna lie, any mistake you make, oh, I just Jesus. get to talk about it on the pod. I get to make videos on Twitter. It's like I'm the troll for my own good buddy i won't even be i told you i'm getting fucking wayne his towel and his bagels and his coffee i won't even be on there (laughs) i said i said i wrote a blog about the schedule coming out biz i'm like you know he might be a chucklehead on our show i'm like but when you're i mean i've watched you in arizona you're very good on tv you know you're gonna crush it bro you're gonna crush it exactly dude i wouldn't worry about it at all and and i'm sure it's gonna be more loosey-goosey i know tnt's gonna have a little more like looser style than espn as far as their approach to everything obviously they hired you but like i you're gonna kill it dude like what said yeah i mean this is what you do man like they're bringing i can't you talk, i won't make pissed. any fourzy jokes uh what else can't can make I any fours yeah. jokes uh I mean, you could still make london knights jokes you could still talk about yeah. london play paying paying guys that's not just, off limits just, hey, just text charles back i don't I think you could talk about drugs <laughs> no no weed's no. not drugs. i can do them just can't talk about <laughs> <laughs> no piss tests at, at, at turner <laughs> Uh, Pen- the higher- <laughs> hey guys, before I sign this, um, are there drug tests? Uh, no, uh, Darren, you're good. I okay. studied all night, but I still failed. <laughs> uh, Pe- uh, Darren Pang's in the mix too, so it's cool, man. I'm looking forward to it, and oh, I'm looking yeah, forward too. to you guys fucking chirp me every pot about all these names I'm butchering and and breaking down whatever's going on. It, well, what, do that, I mean, it, uh, what do you think about it, What do you think about it, G? G? I know what G thinks mm-hmm. about it. I'll tell you right now, memes is going to destroy you. Oh that kid is going to have a field okay. day with you every night. But one thing I am excited for, you mixing in maybe a little Pink Whitney in there, maybe a little Pink Whitney tie here or there. I don't know, pump some sales. That's what I want to see. Yeah. Money on the board for a Homer Simpson quote. <laughs> yeah. And when I said family, I, I should have specified and said my, my parents and my sister, Natalie. But uh, what was the – oh, you hey, so the, the, I, I don't want to get chirped by um, – uh avery i think i gotta get some new jibs and or get some massive whitening strips and i don't have any suits i have like two suits right now you need you need you need you need a new suit every you need you can't wear a suit more than two times this year because i was thinking of just going 30 times right i was just thinking of wearing my gray suit every single time every time time. yeah (laughs) yeah wear the same you could either go same outfit every time or you need like 30 suits or Canadian about, tuxedo, get the yeah. jean jacket and jeans. I don't want to be a spoiler, but what about the salad? You gonna 
that came goal, at okay, before. So that's the biggest question mark right now. Should I just keep the fro going? What's the long term plan, man. if any? See, I the, when I had my skullet going, that was just like pandemic related, and then I just fuck it. I think I, I think you should go. Uh, what's the kid in play? Is that the dude? Just like Thinking straight up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like the box top fucking. Yeah, thing. yeah. I don't was, know if you can have yeah. it on the sides like this. I mean, it's great. It's a great look. You could, could do go, like I could go Jerry curl mullet, you like shave the ponytail or something, back. couldn't you? With that, could that be a ponytail? So what about uh, cornrows? <laughs> <laughs> Eric will solve. maybe dreads. It's a little he sells boy. out each dread. He's got a fucking biz <laughs> ad on each one of his dreads. <laughs> I have, I have tough <laughs> hair, and I don't have sideburns either, so it's uh, it's tough to pull off some <laughs> hair looks. So, um, <laughs> any anybody uh, who who has an opinion on what I should do with my hair, or direct me in the into the direction of a good hairstylist, um, I, I'll, I'll take anybody's opinion at this point. Uh, either way, I can't wait. And like we said, Biz, you're going to be on TNT. And here was the big surprise. TNT and ESPN both dropped big press releases the other day announcing the respective schedules. The Edmonton Oilers and our buddy Connor are going to be on six times on TNT on just one of the channels in America. I know they're going to be on ESPN or ABC, ESPN+. Plus. It's, it, it, it does kind of get confusing to talk about. But if you're not familiar, guys, NHL TV, the whole, that doesn't exist anymore. Basically, ESPN Plus is going to air like thousands of out-of-market games in, in as well as Hulu. So if you don't have if you if you don't have that ESPN Plus Hulu Disney bundle yet, you should get it. It's like thirteen bucks a month. You get the three channels, but plus that's basically the equivalent of what the NHL TV used to be. So you're gonna get all these out of town games. So if you don't have it yet, definitely jump on it. Um, so what else? you won't be yeah. going to NHL.com to watch games anymore. You're saying you know you no. used to go up top and wow. yeah, no, that's it's it's gone. So you you basically I, I I don't know if every single game is going to be available like that was, I, and as far as the blackouts or whatever. But it seems like between Hulu, uh, ESPN Plus, like the major, vast majority of these games you, you're going to be able to see. I, I guess I'm pumped. I don't know. I'm pumped for those two opening games. So we're doing a back to back a double header. Yeah, uh, the the second one I believe is Colorado and Chicago. And then the first one being uh, this, I think Dana White might be dropping the puck for the first one in Washington, New York Rangers with uh, Revo on board. I would imagine there's going to be some fireworks for that one. That's oh, perfect. That's awesome. Dude. That's, uh, it, go ahead, I think that they know what they're doing, right? Like, let's get them right in the mix here. Like, let's let's figure it out. We, we get the new broadcast partners. Let's let's get some action that first night. The two networks, guys, who air all the NBA games. The it's uh, after football, the biggest sport on the planet. So it's like if you're gonna be in bed with two networks, who who better to be than ESPN and TNT right now? As far as growing the game, everybody has these channels on all the time, so it, it's ideal from that respect. I mean, really TNT's good. created probably the best panel to ever exist in sports with with Shaq yeah. and Barkley and, and all those guys. There's actually a documentary out on it and how it all Ernie? got formed and, and, and Ernie Is as it? well. What, what, what What's do you mean? that on? I, I, I don't know if it, it might be on HBO, but I just found it one night and I turned it on and it was fascinating. And, and, and uh, you know, learning how Shaq, when he first started, he was, he just like really didn't know how to act. And then finally he just kind of, it clicked and then uh, he became a natural. And, and I guess the rest is history. It's but, on Hulu, uh, by the way, Wit. Oh, Hulu. Okay. 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 That documentary. Have you watched it, uh, Grinelli? No, it's called The Inside Story. I just Googled it for you. Oh, there you go. That's being a producer right there. Yeah. Okay. Right, on your you. toes early in the season. This is our training camp episode. That's what Biz said. To me I'm actually surprised right. you never got the call with. I don't want to do that shit. Suck it, Turner. I appreciate the offer, though, Biz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's on HBO Max as well, too. Yeah, the inside story. Looks like uh, four or five episodes. And yeah. then uh, Chicago, which I would probably say, what, the most improved team this offseason? Just given the fact that they're getting I mean, Taves back, Kirby Doc was was injured most of the season last year. Now they got Seth Jones. They've added the Vesna Trophy winner. I mean, he's that's, in TV mode I mean, already. Uh, <laughs> well, no, I was just saying, like just, you know, Chicago yeah. went from last year, like ah, uh, yeah, you know, Stan yeah. Bowman's jobs on the line, and then all of a sudden, boom, they got they got. They, I mean, I, I would they say better be pro- good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're a team you'll turn on now. Well, last year you're like, yeah, eh, maybe not, but you know, Flurry Jones, Edmonton Kane, too, Taves like, back. Them being on six times is great on 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 TNT, but dude, if Edmonton is bad again this year, like I, I there could be just fireworks. I think it might be McDavid. I'm done. This might be it. They just got Hyman. If Hyman's not good, it, it, there's just so much going on in Edmonton now that if like this year it can't change, heads up. So I'm very excited to see that storyline and how it goes. 
He'll still get out of Edmonton faster than Eichel out of Buffalo. <laughs> What's oh, going dude, on? it's crazy. Oh. People I've have traded the franchise. For I've heard rumblings David. about L.A. right now. Is that? Uh, I've heard rumblings guys... about everything. But what sucks is we're probably not going to have him on Team USA the way it's looking. Yeah. I mean, right? I mean, like, I don't know. Like, he yeah, probably well, well, needs surgery before he plays. Well, so he has to get surgery before he even plays wherever well, he plays. He's going to check in for his physical with Buffalo. He's going to report for that. And then they're going to go oh, from there. And you How know, awkward I mean, would that I mean, be? Hey, guys. It's like, yeah, hey, Doc. <laughs> hey, Doc. Uh, uh, appreciate uh, yeah. uh, No hard feelings. Yeah. <laughs> you look at this freckle on my back. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, also, too, uh, we want to mention uh, our pal Booch, John Boochagross. He's going to have a new show on ESPN2 called The Point. It's going to be on oh, every nice. Thursday at 3 p.m. It's going to be, obviously, NHL-centric. Going to have a little bit more Thursday than Thursday at what stuff. time? Thursday at 3 p.m. on ESPN2. 3 okay. p.m. I'm sure it'll probably re-air as well, but... Nice. Uh, Booch is our buddy, so I want to give you a heads up. Especially, he's the you know, man. He's going to crush I, and, it. And look, he's, I know, you know, I've, I've shit on ESPN. We've all shit on ESPN for whatever reasons you have for it, whether it's content or otherwise. But this is, you know, this is a good thing for the league, man. This is a, a yeah. network that still matters. It's when you go to the barbershop or the 99 for a beer or wherever, it's the network that's always on. And now that the NHL's back in bed with them and that's who they pimp out, well, you know, we'll be their hope. <laughs> Bring back <laughs> the analogy book. Yeah. Bring back what is the glowing puck? This is like how much? <laughs> that was Fox, dude. <laughs> oh, was it Fox? Huh? Yeah. Uh, and also three three outdoor games this year: uh, St. Louis at Minnesota on New Year's uh, Day. Of course, don't want the classic that got bounced from last year. Tampa Bay at Nashville. Um, I'm not sure. <sighs> what go to that, that one, guys. Can That's the one. That I think, one? Yeah, I think we're leaning toward that one. And then Buffalo, Toronto at Hamilton, March 13th. And oh that, my goodness, the oh, hammer. Oh, Come buddy! How Hamilton. many people in the drunk tank that night in in in, in all of uh, the Nagar region? <laughs> I, think the I don't know if Hammers. Were... I I guess you would consider it the GTA, maybe. But oh my goodness, that is going to be one slop fest. And who's playing in that one? Toronto and uh, Buffalo. Toronto, Buffalo, and, and Hamilton. Yeah. And that, when yeah. is the um, Tampa at Nashville game? Uh, I throw it down. It's my I think late it's February. February. Yeah, actually, it's oh, February twenty sixth. Yeah. It's after oh, the uh, week after the Olympics. After the, after the Olympics. Yeah, because I mean, well, we've been we've been dying to get to Minnesota, but this year we got the the Boston, um What do you call a bowl game in Arizona? The Boston Bowl. So I I don't I don't know if we're going to be able to do both. I know you know they want all all the folks down there for the game, but what's what up channel here? will the Olympics be on? Probably NBC. NBC has the Olympics. Oh, shit. Though, I'm yeah. not even thinking that. Yeah, yeah I guess. Oh, but we'll be doing. I didn't even think of the broadcast. But the hockey jo- be on all NBC's channels, I guess, like all yeah. the other ones. The extended okay. family, yeah. I think we'll, we'll be doing MCG. some live streaming for the Olympics, right, Biz? I think we might be coming back out to Arizona to see you. Oh, uh, we're going to get we're gonna get right in the mix. Wherever. Well, Canada wherever, versus yeah. America, let's go. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, can't that's, wait. I would say this is probably one of the better United States teams that is, is going to be assembled in a, in a long time. It's... Yeah, we're a wagon now. Gonna be unreal. World Juniors last year. Yeah, led led by Austin Matthews, who ended up getting the cover of. Uh, did, were, were we around recording when he got the cover of the the, the EA? But people were losing it about this wit, and I thought, what? Well, first of all, everybody's talking about it. Uh, probably the most marketable player in the NHL right now, American born, going into an Olympic year, playing for the biggest Canadian franchise. Have you chatted with him? He said in some interviews his wrist is going to be fine. He's not worried about it, but he's still kind of recovering from that, huh? Yeah, I, I actually went with him. Uh, I was with him in L.A., and we did something together for that EA shoot. Uh, oh, really? when they ended, Yeah, when they ended up announcing it. But he, but he looked good. He's still training. He was talking about how he does all this band work for, for training now. The guys are moving away from the weights. So it's a lot yeah, of like I wish band- I knew that, dude. Uh, I'd have an ankle to stand on. I know all that. I was I was thing. cleaning. I was like trying to clean 265, dude. My back, my hips, my feet. Now these guys are like body weight stuff. They're quicker, they're faster and stronger. I, what a joke. Yeah, we got <laughs> fucked. We I got well, hosed. Biz, either way, congrats. We we look forward to it. I'm sure the extended Chicklets family and fans look forward to it as well because uh, you're a funny motherfucker. Thank you for um, the Emmy. Thank you for the Emmy. Yeah, give you a little I sh- drive. You guys should have started award. playing the music. The music would have started playing <laughs> yeah, like play 10 minutes into your speech there, and you would have got a hook. Some old person's cane would have I don't give a shit. I wanted to thank all the people I needed to thank, including the fans out there, Wit. So lick my dick. I'm a man of honor. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a little more Emmy talk a little later in the show. Uh, of course, the other big news was uh, uh, an offer sheet, but never mind offer sheets for a second. We have a sheets offer for you from our friends at OCB Rolling Papers. 
OCB is the largest roll and paper brand in the world and has been one with nature, crafted naturally since 1918. So you know they've perfected the process for me for a consistently great session time after time. OCB offers a full line of papers made from sustainable fibers, including flax, wood, organic hemp, bamboo, virgin, and they come in a variety of full line and sizes in both booklets and cones. There's no GMOs, no chlorine, and no dyes in OCB roll papers. Like you know, I've been using the bamboo ever since I got them. They rolled them out last year, no pun intended. I will not go back to my old sheets. They were good to me, but they weren't as good to me as the OCB bamboo. It's now my new second favorite plant. So make sure to ask for OCB Rome papers wherever you buy your papers and sample the entire line of products. In the meantime, OCB has an unreal deal for our listeners. Visit OCBUSA.com slash checklets to get four, one, two, three, four, Booklets of OCB rolling papers in a rolling tray for just four ninety nine. Like I said, it's a sheets off and not an office sheet. You can't beat this one. No one's gonna match it because it's too good. This bundle's worth twenty dollars. It's a limited time only. Follow OCB on Instagram at OCB USA to stay in touch with the natural wonder of OCB. It must be twenty one or older to buy the papers and follow the social accounts. But again, OCBUSA.com slash chicklets. Listen as, as a as a person who requires rolling papers you cannot go wrong with this deal even if you don't go back to them the rolling tray itself is worth it so much so again ocb check them out biz i was talking about office sheets we talk about them all the time in the show we say it's an underused utility gms don't go to well carolina said fuck that noise and they went with it they successfully office sheeted montreal canadian no more yes barry kotkin the emmy the 21 year old forward signed a one-year deal worth $6.1 million. He just finished his entry-level deal. Uh, of course, Montreal had off sheeted Sebastian Ajo two years ago. So Carolina, not only did they match, they had a little troll job going on too as well, Biz. They released a statement from the GM that was word for word with the Burger Van said a couple of years ago. They had a $20 signing bonus because Ajo's number is I'll 20. take it. <laughs> and then they used French on, the, on Twitter and they changed their fucking Twitter bio to French. I mean, I... Chef's kiss times a hundred to the Carolina for all this. And yeah, other my- than the fact that they got bent over and had to take it. I mean, I'm talking on a, on a PR oh, front. Shit, they didn't. Ma- they didn't match it. Fuck. Montreal, Montreal got a first and a third in 22 for uh, for their troubles, and it was the f- first successful offer sheet since Dustin Penner back in 07. Great stuff. I know people have been waiting to talk about it. It's been a while, but Biz, let's hear it. Okay, so I was talking to Wit before we hopped on. This I is thought- hilarious. Get ready for this one, boys. <laughs> I thought they were buddies, Waddell and, and Burger Van. And when he offer sheeted Aho, I thought he was doing that to help his buddy out to get him at a good number. Cause who in their right fucking mind didn't think that they were going to match eight and a half for Aho? I would, I, would you not put Aho, Aho top 15 centers in the league, maybe top 10? He's a point of game guy. He's nasty. He's he's absolutely filthy. So when he did when, when they like, did that, I don't that, think I'm, GMs are just like, yo, dude, I'm gonna help you out. I'm gonna chuck this guy seventy yeah, but it's million. The burger van, man. You're good. He was the burger van. They were probably fucking you know doing uh, weight training at the last GM meetings, and he's like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna toss you a bone here. Don and got that, him some wind straw. He's like, dude, I'll get you back. I'll get a fucking aho aho offer sheet you can sign. And then I thought maybe them offer uh, offer sheeting. Uh, 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 how do you say his name? Cost Cuck- Cuck- yes, Cuck- very Cuck- 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 Cock, hey boys, this is the training. You better pod. work on this shit, dude. Oh, Good luck, goodness. TNT. You're yeah. like, hey, Gretz, take this one for me. And then they ended up offering him this, what is it, just over six million at one year. And I'm like, oh, this must be them paying him back to give him a first and third round for the tummy stick action that he gave for the Aho offer sheet. And then, sure as shit, they fucking don't end up matching it. And then they end up taking it off and then flip the first and third. Mind you, they gave up a first and second to get Christian Dvorak, who I think is an upgrade at center. From from uh, Cop Cop Kaniemi, Cop Kaniemi, yeah, Cop Cop Kaniemi, Cop Kaniemi. So Cot, I'll Cot. throw it over to you, Wit. This is just a big fucking head scratcher. I have no clue what's going on. This is a very uncharacteristic move for Waddell, and I think that from what I'm hearing, it wasn't him. It was coming from the ownership group and telling yeah, him Tom to do Dundon. That. I think that the way they went about it probably was the owner like hey, and obviously the owner signs off on the social media on the team like making an absolute spectacle of it he it runs was awesome it. awesome for the sport though like i was just so entertained when that was all going down um yeah it's 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 weird like looking back i mean 
Montreal took him third overall in 18, right? Like fucking uh, Brady Kachuk went the next pick. I mean, if they could do that one over. And then Quinn Hughes was a little later, right? So I, you got to look now. It's coming up on four years and it's still so early, but he hasn't done that much, right? Like healthy scratch this year in the playoffs here and there. Um, so Bergevin was pretty honest and like, he's not a $6 million player. We were talking about paying him 2 million, like on a, on a couple year bridge deal. And so that doesn't work for us. And in the end, I think it could end up helping him. Now, granted, he had to give up the first and the third, first and the second, he got a first and the third. Now what sucks is Carolina's pick. Carolina's nasty. Like I don't see their pick being any better than like 24th, 25th overall. Sure. Right. They're an awesome team, but Dvorak is a better player right now. I think Dvorak's supremely underrated. I think if he wasn't on trash bag coyotes, no offense, Biz, then we'd know a lot more about him. He plays both sides of the puck. He's he's a point every other game player, right? So I saw a quote online saying if he was your third line center, you're competing for the Stanley Cup. If he's That's your second right, line yeah. center, you have a good team. So I think that in Montreal's case, like they lost this guy that was a really high pick that definitely hadn't panned out the way they'd hoped when they picked him. But they got a guy back who's better all the way around. And Cockneyemi's going to play wing, they said, in Carolina. They got a center, which is what they needed. So I don't think Montreal's a worse team. They're probably a better team. It was just about losing an asset like that and, and somebody who maybe the ceiling of his game is $6 million a year. But he certainly wasn't there yet. It was just great how the whole thing went down. In the end, it, it might have helped both teams because who knows what happens now that that kid, Cockney gets under Rod Brindamore. Like, I feel like his systems and the way he goes about things, he could truly change a guy's game. He could change the way he approaches the game on and off the ice. Maybe that's what that kid needs to hit that next level, that third overall potential. But Montreal getting Dvorak, yeah, he's, they got a better player than they lost for now. And recency bias, too. Cockney had a pretty good playoff. Like, he started lighting it up. I think he set a record for goals scored by a centerman under the age of 20 years old. Was he not uh, healthy scratched at one point in the playoffs? No, no he was. In he was the kind cup of a, finals. Yeah, it was a bit of a roller coaster ride. But Last he did, game, I think he was. Yeah. Was. It was a bit of a roller coaster ride in the playoffs. But but overall game, he, he just hasn't developed as, like, a I guess, turned into what he was drafted at third overall. <laughs> He's still only um, 21. I mean, he just turned 21. That, you know? That's the problem these days is usually people get a little bit impatient with those high-end picks, and, they, and, and you know, they're like, oh, well, he's a bust because he hasn't turned out. It's like Capo Caco. Everybody's writing him off because he hasn't had maybe the best success in New York in his first two seasons there. But, you know, there's you know, plenty, of, plenty of development to go on, and, and I'm sure Rob Brindamore will do a good job in, in getting through to him and, and a lot less responsibility in the, as a winger than in the middle of the ice. Like yeah. playing center at the National Hockey League level, you're, there's just so many responsibilities. And that's why I said Montreal gets better in this department. He is, I, I described Dvorak in, in his early career as, as kind of a, a poor man's couturier. He can kill penalties. He, you know, he, he can contribute offensively. He gets Maybe it done. Maybe not as fit. much offensively, but defensively no. as good. Yeah, probably defensively as reliable, kills yeah. penalties, really good in the faceoff circle. So I think this is a huge add. And in, in, in going back to uh, Suzuki, it seems as if though they think he's ready to step in and take on that number one center role. So he's nasty. Um, I, I think that's yeah, a pretty, was... pretty good one-two punch. And the, and the little icing on the cake, cherry on top, um, is the fact that they got the Vorak locked in at uh, I think just over four, four million for the four next year, four years. I got that biz. Four years sure. left at four point four five million. He's got a modified no trade for the last two, uh, and also they gave up. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned uh, uh, Montreal gave up a first and a se- uh, first. I'm sorry, a first and twenty two and a second in twenty four. So I mean uh, that's a very team friendly deal. When uh, Krejci left, and he's just lighting it up back home in check. Great to see. Uh, when he left, it was kind of like, all right, well, Boston's going to go out and get Dvorak. I mean, talk about some issues at center, the Bruins. I know that's a different discussion, but um, you heard right away like that Dvorak was going to be traded. It was just where, and Montreal said, all right, we, we lost Cockney Emmy. Let's go get him. So, yeah, interesting move, but I, offer sheets being signed is a good thing for the game. So w- one thing that sucks for Carolina, too, is like even moving forward, well, I guess they could offer him a longer term deal, but if they want to qualify him, you got to give him a little bit of a raise on the qualifier. So at it's already at six million, what he's going to be making this year, like they kind of put themselves between a rock and a hard place. Now, 
I'm sure Waddell, if it was not him at, at all involved in this move and it was, in fact, ownership group, you got to imagine there's a massive amount of frustration giving up a first and a third um, in, in order to acquire this guy that you're going to overpay. You don't know where he fits on your lineup. He's not going to be playing the position there where he was last year. And if he was playing center for that team, he'd probably be third or fourth on the depth chart. So just a, just a bizarro land move that ended up coming back to bite him in the ass. Just or at least, or at least for helping now. each other out, Biz. Just a little tummy yeah. stick action between yeah. the burger van and hey, buddy, I'll get you, brother man. out. Uh, look it up. Another future Hall of Fame was on the move. Jumbo Joe, after uh, some time in Toronto, guess doesn't he doesn't think that's the spot. He's gone to Florida. Florida Panthers. Jumbo Joe, one year, seven hundred and fifty k. Um, obviously, this guy's chasing a cup at this point in his career. It's, we can logically assume what, that he thinks Florida has a pretty fucking good chance at it. No, I think that I, I don't know, like how many cup contending teams like had room for him or wanted him. Right? That's yeah. I, true, there could have point. been a bunch, great, but I have no point. idea. And when you say he's he's chasing a cup, no doubt. I think he's so in love with the game of hockey, the boys in the locker room. He's more just like I'm not done playing. Like mm-hmm. he. I don't think next year he'll be done playing if a team will sign him. I don't know if yeah. he'll sign with a team that looks like, like it's going to be a real tough year. Like, Florida looks good, dude. They could win that division. But I more than anything think, along with chasing the cup, it's more about, like, I just keep – I don't want to leave this game. I don't want to leave leave yet. I, I I have more left to give, and I love the boys. <laughs> yeah, like Chelios in a lot of ways. You know, Chelios or or another guy five. who just got a big con- – or, or another one-year contract, excuse me. You got oh, it. Big oh, Big Z. Are you dude. teaming me up with team? I was, I was seg- <laughs> Perfect. No, it was an awesome segue, dude. And, and fucking with the Wit Dog Swipe and Big TNT Z. ready, bitches. Suck on that one. Back to the team that drafted him until they traded him for a fucking Yashin and fucking and Spezza. And they traded every him, year, like, Chara every year, Chara. Yashin, basically. Hey, every year, Chara plays Milbury just like, oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Big Z and ends up with the Islanders. Uh, obviously, you know, last year in Washington didn't pan out like he hoped, but I don't know. I, I, like you said, wait, you can't, it, there's no wrong move here adding a guy like that. If your roster can fit it, he, he brings so much to the room for such cheap value. I mean, the, the veteran minimum, I think 750 or 795 or whatever it is, it's money well spent. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Spezza was an Islander? No, no, no. I, I butchered that saying that no, the, the trade, when they traded Chara to Ottawa, um, they sent the first round pick along as well, and that oh, turned out. Oh, and then Spezza. they picked yeah. Spezza. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was just like a little. Yeah. And then they gave Yashin like half of the real estate in Long Island to pay him, and still. Pay okay, him. so this move. Sorry, I, I think it's awesome because Char looked great on Washington last year. I thought. I mean, their team was kind of a mess. End of the year it was bizarre, but if he doesn't play a ton of minutes, that was the whole issue, right? In Boston, he was playing too much, and the Islanders are deep at D, like. I don't see how he goes in there and doesn't help him. He's going to play like 15 minutes. He's going to PK. He's going to do the same. It's going to be the same player. And and they got the horses uh, to, to play the 25 minutes there, right? Like they don't really need that much help, but just to get a veteran like that, it's, it's Islander hockey, dude. Like, yeah. like, it's like, it makes so much sense. For sure. If there was one team he, he, uh, that he would fit right in with, it's probably them. I mean, Boston was a, a very structured team. And I mean, going to to the Islanders, who are probably the most structured team in the whole National Hockey League, where you don't get exposed as much. I mean, Washington, they tend to open things up a little bit more, and maybe he could be left on an island for, uh, every every here uh, here and there sometimes. But no, I think this is a solid move. And man, the Islanders, man, they, with getting Anders Lee back, with that veteran veteran leadership in the locker room, they're going to look very dangerous coming into this season. I'm almost willing. They look so good to me in the years that what's happened here. Like I'm almost willing to like maybe chuck out a truce. Like I haven't, I haven't decided yet. I don't know if they take me. I I don't want to continue this because I have a bad feeling of like where it's going. But yeah, I mean, dude, they're a good team. Getting Anders Lee's back huge. And I think like one of the signing of the, one of the best signings in the league was the Pellet contract. Yep. He's making like 5.2 or whatever, 5.57, whatever it is. Like, he's sick. So this team's nasty. Uh, I, I'm very I'm very worried. The only thing holding them back is this uh, road trip they got to take to start the season. And I think that they're all – Oh, just, before I, their building's ready? Yeah, like 15 to 20 games. So that's yeah, a tough way to start extensive. the year it's in a very difficult – It's 20 games? 
I thought it was th- 11 or 13, but it's, yeah, it's the longest that, ever. That yeah, Turner sport. 25 games. Let's yeah. just keep every time little I pap, tell a little story. Paprika around 34 around. games paprika. and they're coming back, but Frankie will be there. <laughs> hey, if you oh, could, hey, if you could start uh, the whole, uh, the half, first half of the season, 41 games on the road to get all the games over with, would you do it to play the last half of the season at home? Yeah, I'd probably be about 300 pounds though. And like, yeah, I would though. It'd be pretty sick. I mean, just get it out of the way. I also was thinking of me as a player with no kids and not married. Like, oh, yeah, take me on the road for that long. Then you just get home and you chill. Yeah. Be pretty sick. And and then you have kids and you're like, I'll play every game on the road. Yeah, just give me 82 (laughs) on the road, dude. (laughs) Hey, Wit, question for you. No, he can watch the TV. Grinelli, what do you got for us? Wit, if the Islanders win the Eastern Conference, will you serve tables at Borelli's? Oh, we're we're reintroducing it. No, what are you talking about, dude? I, I'm thinking about like becoming a fan, dude. I ain't fucking talking about Ooh. betting against them yet. Giving in so easy. I haven't he's given gonna, in that easy. He's going to buy you a box. Talk about giving in. I'll fucking show you giving in when I'm wearing an Islanders jersey to the fucking first game of the year. I'm, I've mentioned I'm thinking dude, about it. There's still like you could find 25, 30 to one odds on. Maybe not 30, but there, there's some pretty to good odds the out there for the Islanders. Yeah, I thought I heard. I thought I heard or read 23 or 25. They're the one favorites there. to yeah. win their division. I saw. Yeah, I maybe I. I saw that they were higher than I thought. I remember taking notice and making a mental note to, to check myself because anything over 15 to one with that team is pretty good fucking value. I'll tell you that. They lost I'm, Eberly, right? Like that's it. Yeah. Did ba- I mean, is Bailey I mean, still there? Uh, well, Josh Bailey is still there. Yeah. Well, so hey, I think they only I, lost Ebbs. Yeah. I, I, the, for all intents, they bring them back the same team. So yeah, if you can find again, anything over 30, even 13 to one, I'd say is good value on them. So all right. I saw on Twitter. You, you think the Kraken are going to make the playoffs, huh? I do in that division. Um, oh. I think what four teams in that division didn't even make the playoffs last year, and I know it was different rules and it was the Canadian Canadian division, all that. But uh, the three California teams kind of stink right now. Um, you know, Calgary had a rough season last year. Yeah, I, I think Seattle. Not on top of that, even if they, they're going to be competitive. I mean, <laughs> they're bringing in the, a Vesna finalist and, a, and Chris Dreja, who basically knocked out a guy from his number one role last year as a goalie. Uh, and they got a pretty decent roster. I know it doesn't jump out at you. It's an expansion franchise. But, yeah, this team, you know, they're not here to just to fucking pay an expansion fee by any stretch. I don't think the Kings will suck as bad as, as people think already this year. You said the three California well, teams? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, a little going off last year. I mean, I, I think that, yeah, they played better late in the year. Gee, I, I, I know they're not awful. But, you know, when you didn't make the playoffs last year, then that, that stinks going to carry over a little bit. So yeah, G. Uh, wait, I think I think Seattle makes the playoffs. I do. Right. I think I think they'll Ballsy be one pick. of the top four. So we'll see what happens. Well, hey, some players are still looking for a gig this season. But no matter what you do for a living, looking for a job is no picnic. It sucks. You get stress, strained eyes from looking at screens all day. You get ghosted. Zip Recruiter knows that the general experience of looking for a job is pretty sucky. That's why they figured out a way to make it unsucky. And when you sign up at ZipRecruiter.com slash easy, you can create a free profile. Then you get matched up to great jobs plus a lot more. ZipRecruiter will proactively pitch your profile to employers whose jobs match your experience. Unlike with other job sites, if an actual person from the company really likes what they see, they can personally invite you to apply to their job. And candidates who apply, oh, I'm sorry, candidates who are invited to apply on ZipRecruiter are nearly three times as likely to get hired. Plus, if you like the job, you can apply to it and many others with just one click. It's that easy. No wonder ZipRecruiter is the number one job rated site in the U.S. So sign up for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash easy today and experience the better way to find a job. Once again, Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash easy right now to sign up absolutely free and put ZipRecruiter to work for you. Um, we're not going to him right, right quite yet, but we haven't even mentioned our guest yet. And he's actually a returning guest. Scott Gomez, we had on a couple of years ago, uh, all time. I mean, I think he took 45 minutes just talking about Claude Lemieux alone. And we've been talking about, you know, getting him back for part two. So when we were doing the live streams in New York a couple months back, he flew in from Alaska, joined us for a, f- a couple of days. Absolute character Scott is. But again, we're not going to him quite yet, but I just want to mention we do have him coming up. 
Yeah, he's a piece of He's work. like talking to a Goosebumps choose your own ending. He just goes into these spider webs. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll start telling a story, go off to one, bring it back, go to the other he way. He gives you room. options to, to yeah. ask where he wants it to go from. That's yeah. fucking perfect that description of him. But um, restricted free agents, they've been kind of the big news. There's still some big names out there who haven't signed yet. Uh, Kirill Kaprizov in Minnesota, uh, Rasmus Dahlin in Buffalo, uh, Grinelli's twin Quinn Hughes and uh, Elias Pedersen out in Vancouver. Uh, Brady Kachuk up in Ottawa. Uh, a bunch of uh, R- RFAs have signed, but uh, before we get to those, there was a shitload of big extensions. A lot of guys getting locked up for the long-term future. I'd Philly say big, was busy. What's that? Philly was busy. Took, took the words right out of my mouth. Wow. Philly extended 28-year-old center Sean Couturier, a.k.a. Coots. Eight years, 62 mil. Uh, average annual value was 7.75 mil. His deal will kick in after this season. He's in the last year of a six-year, $26 million deal. Uh, Philly cool. also extended 22-year-old forward Joel Farabee, six years, 30 mil. That starts next year as well. Like you said, Biz, Philly loading up. These are some great deals, I think, going forward for him. Um, if you want me to elaborate, Couturier, I mean, best, one of the best two-way centers in the league. I mean, no-brainer locking him up. Um, as far as Farabee's concerned, I don't know a ton about him. I, I don't know, really know his game much. I'll throw that one over to Wit. Every guy I talk to, though, on Philly says he's fucking unbelievable. He's sick. He played at BU. He's got swagger, too. He was actually that same draft. He was late. He was 2018 that we were talking about the Kachuk draft where they, the Canadians could add him. I think he was around 15th, 20th, middle of the first round, but a stud. Like, you could tell in college he had so much game. He's going to hop right into the NHL and... I mean, he looks he looks great the times I've seen him play at the at the highest level. So that signing makes a lot of sense. Where if he turns into the player they're probably seeing in a year or two, yeah. it's a nice little bargain for a few years. Yeah, catch him on the upswing. Oh, like they caught me in Pittsburgh, right, Biz? <laughs> right on the upswing. <laughs> Only greatness to come. Yeah, they got you locked in at a fair number so they could the deal you. Two days. What? I said they got you locked in at a fair number so they could deal you. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> But Biss, we'll catch I mean, you on the upswing. Shonk. Katoria at that number. I mean, he's a premier two-way center in the game, a, a perennial Selkie favorite at this point. That's a that's a, a, a great sign if you're a Philly fan, Biz, no? Well, yeah, I mean, like just like a, a guy you can rely on in any situation. I mean, you know, if you, if, you, if you need him to kill a penalty, you need him to block a shot, you need, you need him to win a face-off, you need him to score a goal, he does it all. And he's got a bit of bite to his game, too, and fuck does he ever look funny out there with no jibs. Oh, yeah. Hilarious. He's missing the full top, girl. <laughs> so uh, they uh, – Listen, we, we, we've talked about this Philly team and their window to win. We saw the moves they made in the offseason as well, bringing in some D to bolster up the back end. Caught a hat, getting locked into a, a nice deal as well. So um, they, are, they are looking pretty right now. I, I'm gonna, I, they're definitely making playoffs and a bounce back year after missing it last year. And uh, I know last year I picked them to come out of the East. I might, uh, I might have to pick them again. I might double down on my pick. Yeah, you mentioned Carter Hart. He was a restricted free agent, uh, signed for three years, just under $12 million a year. Uh, AAV comes out to just under four. And also defenseman uh, Travis Sandheim, two years, 9.35 mil. So, yeah, Philly locking up key components of their future uh, going forward. A couple other extensions we also want to mention. St. Louis extended 28-year-old defenseman Colton Pareko, eight years, 52 mil. Comes out to six and a half million a year. Uh, like all of these guys, the deal kicks in uh, after this season. St. Louis also signed forward Tyler Bozak, one year, seven hundred and fifty k. Bonuses can take that up to two million. Uh, what What do you think on Pareko? I think he needs to get back to where he was kind of heading when they, when they got rid of Petrangelo and what they maybe thought they had. It was a little bit of a rough year. I know he battled a bunch of injuries. I think there's tons of game there left. But I think if he'd had a, a, a different type of season, he's looking at a bigger payday. Now, still, right? He's set for life. He's fucking, he's golden. It's, it's, it's a great deal, I think, for the player and the team. But I think if you were to talk to Doug Armstrong and the coaching staff there, it's like, all right, we're going to need a little bit more. Um, I, I do expect St. Louis will bounce back. Funny enough, I read that, uh, that after, requesting the tra- after requesting the trade, What's his name? I'm blanking out. Fucking Russian. What's Tarasenko. Fuck? Tarasenko is looking phenomenal right now. He's buzzing around. So I yeah, guess no hard trick. feelings. He's willing to be there and play as hard as he can. Maybe he still wants out. Maybe he figures if he dominates, it'll be easier for them to trade him. But Pareko was going to get locked up. It was, it, was, it was only a matter of time. I think in the end, though, they're going to need him to become that number one guy that you saw coming up when they won the Stanley Cup and a few years prior to that. So... 
If it, and if anything, if you're Armstrong, you're probably excited he have a, had his off year when it was his contract year. I know. So then he you fired get up a, at a bit of a bargain. I think six and a half is a very fair number mm-hmm. based on how he played last year and what you alluded to it. Like there were the struggles were were very transparent. Were real. Yeah, and 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 I didn't realize he was battling injuries. So guys, I mean, after bringing a cup to that city and being a big component to that uh, that team when they won it. I mean, I think this is a, a guy you want around for a long time. Great guy in the locker room, very respected. Ivan Drago, and they and and they probably got one of the, probably the best top four decors in the league. I would say that they who uh, who they get over from Carolina, Falk, Falk. Uh, yep. Tory Krug. Krug. They got Perenko, and then who's the other guy? I'm forgetting. I don't know if they're top. They're, they're, I don't know. Oh, if it's Bo Meester. <laughs> 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 Grinelli, you gotta you gotta TNT. make sure too when he talks about his predictions like you gotta be oh, like no, uh, no, uh, dude uh, you gotta write him down because he'll go on turner he'll come here and be like philly's <laughs> winning the cup and on turner he'll be like I'll cover all my Alex, cup winners like you know he's gonna fuck up these predictions yeah 100 percent. no i was Not actually McK- mckinnis was the one i was thinking of uh <laughs> pronger too he's fucking money the for the blues twig. last year well, another big extension to report. Chicago extended 28-year-old defenseman Connor Murphy, four years, uh, 17.6 mil, 4.4 uh, AAV. His deal kicks in next year. He's in the last year of a six-year, $23 million deal. Uh, and like I said, I mentioned the RFAs. I don't know if you caught the quote from uh, Matty Kachuk talking about Brady. Of course, Brady, you know, he's coming off his entry-level deal. He's obviously the future of uh, Ottawa, probably going to be named the captain. Uh, Matt said, quote, he might be pulling a classic Kachuk right now. Dad held out, Matthew held out, and Brady looks like he's on his way right now. So hopefully it can get figured out from here. My dad and I are definitely involved. Brady needs us to help him out with that stuff. He wasn't as cutthroat as we were during it, but he's starting to become more of a kachuk the later this goes. So Wow. I mean, you know, I, I didn't – If obviously when you hear it, it's a little more, you know, audio context to it. But, yeah, I mean, these guys uh, know what their value is, and they're going to stand up for it and, and get, get what they think they're paid. And, you know, we got no issue with, with that at Spit and Check, that's for sure. I think he holds all the cards right now. I think Brady Kachuk is the heartbeat of that team. I think everybody in that locker room is following him, and he brings it in every facet of the game. And if he has to fucking fight the toughest guy on the other team while doing it and putting the puck in the net, he's going to do it. And if you're the Ottawa Senators and you've been having the struggles you've been having over the past few years, if not a little bit longer than that, you might want to just slide over a blank sheet of paper and say, what's your number, pal? So what would you give him, Biz? I Considering he is restricted and he's coming out of his entry-level contract, I think that an eight-year deal at around seven to eight million. Oh, dude, fair. I think he wants more than that. Dude, that's funny because I just wrote eight times seven and a half as you would. Well, you guys don't think they're offering him that? Well, keep in mind. So you're 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 looking at a coming out of COVID. The fact that we're on a flat cap situation. I mean, I would imagine he's not going to get much signing bonus because Melnick's Melnick's a cheap fuck. So maybe yeah, boost up that number. I think I think eight times eight would be a great score. I think that would be a, a very good number if Brady could get that, and and I think that he's I think that he's worth it considering what he's provided that team. Every, yeah, I, I, I agree. I just yeah. wonder. I bet you he's probably saying like, if you don't hit the number that I want, just give me a bridge deal, right? Like that's the argument where it's like I'm not signing an eight year deal for for a number that I'm not comfortable with. In that case, give me something two three years, figure it out. But in the end, I'm sure Otto was like, dude, we got to get this guy locked up. I'm with you. Yeah. True leader, and he's not a kachuk if he doesn't hold out. Brady, yeah. Matt held out, Keith held out. He's got to hold out. I mean, he's it's, he's little big Walt. It, it, yeah. It's hard to ask me because, like, I was never confident in my abilities to the point that these elite NHLers are. So, if you said, "Hey, you know, eight times, eight, eight, eight times a hundred grand, <laughs> eight years, eight hundred grand," Biz is like, "Give me a pen." <laughs> Give me two of them. Yeah, there weren't there wasn't much negotiating going on when I was doing my deals, guys. It was kind of like, hey, this is a, a little bit of a raise sign here. But yeah, like I mean, if if he wants to hold out for 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 an even bigger number than even if it was eight higher than eight times eight, then then all the power to him. I'm not the one that's playing 20 minutes a night, having to carry that organization and and lead the way as as you know as far as it, it, on the ice and in the locker room. So I don't. What what would you put his number at, Wit? I think eight by eight, I think player and team are happy, but I also maybe could see a point where he wants nine. Yeah. 
I mean, so, it, it's it's hard because the, the, the COVID has messed with the salary so much in a sense like you just kind of got fucked if you're if you're not fucked. Right. These people are these guys are signing for 60, 70 million. Yeah. But in the end, it's it's really changed the money in, in looking at like where the cap is and where it's going to be going. The, the yeah. TV deal is going to help a ton. Though. I think I want to say that Matthew Kachuk got a, a, a deal in the seven million range. I don't know what he signed for. Can you look yeah. that up, Grinelli? Um, but he, he, he could be a reasonable comp for, for a player who uh, did sign his restricted deal, or was restricted and signed, uh, Carolina forward Andrei Svechnikov. This was a monster deal. Eight years, $62 million, 7.75 mil. Biz, about the range we were just talking about for Brady. That's uh, more than fair. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't. Brady's got 45 points in 71 games, 20 goals. The next year, 21 goals. 44 points last year, 56 games, 17 goals, 36 points. So, yeah, if you were to get eight times eight, I mean, his numbers are not at all who he is, right? Like, he adds so much more, but, you know, he he hasn't really even come close to point per game, right? So it's hard to be asking for eight, nine million, like we're saying. Uh, Matthew's deal was three years, uh, 21 million for a cap seven hit of se- se- seven yeah. mil per, se- oh, per well, year. No, okay. And that was okay. essentially a bridge deal. Yeah, I think I fucking hit that right on the nose, guys. So a yeah, little, that's why little, that's why you're the guy. Little dude. shout out to remembering something. Uh, but yeah, Svechnikov. I mean, seven point seven five mil. I mean, I, I would say. I mean, that, not that they have similar styles, but you know, they're they're both young guys who produce. They're key members of the current squads right now. So I think there there is some co- uh, comparability there. Is that a word? Comparability. Yeah. I think. Yeah, is, we'll take it. Now. I'll let oh, you yeah. even I mean, his, create that. It's a great word. If I just think that's a nice one. It. No. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, like I said, there was a shitload of restricted free agents who did get signed. I'll, I'll rattle through some of the major ones here. Um, Rangers goalie Igor Shesterkin, four years, 22.6 mil. Uh, Nashville, that one's nice. If he yeah. turns out what everyone says he's going to be, yeah. he's making – what is it? What is the hit? Uh, five and a half-ish. I, yeah, I, I mean, dude, yeah. like if, he, if he's that true number one that they're hoping he's going to be, fuck, you're not paying him eight, nine. That's yeah. huge. Um, Nashville pretty busy. Had three three restricted free agents in house. Uh, Kevin Fiala did a one year deal, five point one mil. Uh, the key to their future goal, UC Saros uh, signed a four year, twenty million dollar deal, very team friendly deal. This guy's one of the best goalies in the league right now, uh, and also forward Ely Tolvin in three years, four point three five mil. Uh, Detroit cleaning house a little bit. Uh, Jacob Brana they gave him three years, fifteen point seven five mil. Uh, Adam Earn Ernie Earn. Ernie Burton, Ernie, two years, 4.2 mil. Uh, and defenseman uh, Philip uh, Ron- Ronick, three years, th- 13.2 mil. He's a big part of that blue line in Detroit. Obviously, Stevie Y gave him some dough. Uh, Winnipeg had a shell out some dough with defenseman Neil Pionk. I remember he got traded there. A lot of people weren't too like big on him, keen on him. Well, he signed a four-year deal in Winnipeg worth $23.5 million. He's obviously a pretty solid player up there. And our buddy Andrew Klopp, one year, Three point six four million dollars, not too bad for a minor leaguer. Not pretty too good. Bad. Highest three salary in subs. the AHL biz. Yeah, no, he's uh, yeah, he's going to be buzzing in Manitoba with the moose. We're going to be paying for everyone's chicken parm subs with the money in the cup before the game. We appreciate you signing that huge deal. Um, in the going mindies. back to going back to Pionk, that was part of the Truba deal, was it not? Yeah, yeah. and he was yeah. undrafted. Yeah. Awesome player. Awesome. He's like better player. than Truba. <laughs> Yeah, well, Especially that's what I'm saying. It was like, you know, shitting on Winnipeg at the time. And, you know, a guy turned out to be a, oh, what do you know, a pretty good defense for himself. Uh, let's see, moving right along. The Islanders, goalie Ilya Sorokin, uh, three years, 12 mil. Anthony Beauvillier, three years, 12.45 mil. Uh, Buffalo, uh, buddy Casey Middlestat, he, who, by the way, I don't know if you saw his numbers underneath um, Don Granado last year. Totally different player uh, playing underneath the coach that, you know, Buffalo brought in late in the year. And obviously they, they like what they saw. I know he had some trouble starting off, but nice to see Casey three years, 7.5 mil. Uh, defenseman Henry Joker Haju, three years, same deal, 7.5 mil. Calgary gave defenseman uh, Nikita Zadorov one year, 3.75 mil. Washington goalie Ilya Samsonov, one year, two mil. Florida forward Sam Reinhardt, three years, 19.5 mil. Oh, uh, okay. that's yeah, a great off- deal for Reinhardt. Yes. Yeah. Buffalo never wanted to commit there. to him long term. They kept giving him these like one year deals or whatever. So I that, that's another sneaky ad for that Florida Panthers team. And I, yeah. I agree with you, Win. I could I could see them winning that division for sure. And I think is- that there's a couple guys for Tampa who are going to start the year on the IR, are they not? And they got 10 million going to their number two goalie. That's the craziest part. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, Ottawa uh, forward Drake ba- uh, Batherson, six years, just under 30 mil, 34 points in uh, 56 games last year. And Jason Dickinson, uh, Vancouver signed him three years, uh, just under eight mil. And oh, Vegas, this one just came in today. I believe uh, Vegas signed forward Nolan Patrick, two years, 2.4 mil. Of course, they picked him up from Philly in a trade. Hopefully he could stay healthy. I think he went to Nashville first. And and man, like yeah, second a- overall, dude, he's battled these concussions. Three-way and- deal. He could go to Vegas and play on a really good team and be healthy, hopefully knock on wood for his sake, and and really take off, right? So I like that. That's an interesting one to watch because I remember uh, Kevin Hayes telling me how good he was at times too, like before all the injuries, like this kid's a player. So I want to see where that one goes. Basically had a full year off with those. So many storylines going into this year. Jesus Christ, what a job we have. Okay. We just uh, don't know who's in what league. All right, a couple more here before we send it over to Scott Gomez, part de. A uh, couple free agent signings. Seattle signed. I'm sorry. Yeah, Seattle signed for our local kid Ryan Donato to a one year deal uh, worth 750 grand. Calgary signed defenseman Eric Goodbranson one year, just under two mil. And a couple PTOs for uh, friends of the family or other uh, noteworthy. The Bizwin special. Yeah, PTOs. Brian Boyle signed one with Pittsburgh. Uh, Jimmy Vesey signed PTO at New Jersey. James Neal with St. Louis and Jack Johnson with Colorado. Um, so those are pretty much all the transactions, the major transactions to get everybody up to speed. Um, any other final comments, boys, before we get ready to send it over to Mr. Gomez? Oh, How I fun would a- it be, Biz, to get a PTO and just go to camp next week, me and you again? Wouldn't uh, last. You think a team would do it now? Yeah, like even, maybe, like, maybe if the Danbury Trash could cover it? Danbury right? Trashes can put you on the payroll <laughs> for a week. <laughs> I honestly don't think I'd make it through fitness testing right now. That's how out of shape I am. Dude, I what's, couldn't tie my skates. What's fit? What's fitness testing? <laughs> oh, I did a three day juice cleanse during the break too. I didn't oh, tell you okay. about that. Didn't eat a bite of food in three days. Lost like eight oh. pounds. Put it right back on. God bless you. All right, gang. This interview is brought to you by Ernest. Ernest offers a low rate student loan refinance, and, and you can check your rate risk free in just two minutes. With Ernest, you get radically flexible payments, and you can pick your loan term. By refinancing, you can reduce your loan term, save money, or combine multiple loans into one simply monthly payment. Simple monthly payment. And if you have questions, you can even talk to a real live human at Ernest for help. Isn't it time you stop feeling overwhelmed by your student debt? Ernest is offering our listeners a $100 cash bonus Refinance your student loan at earnest.com slash chicklets. Terms and conditions do apply. Once again, visit earnest.com slash chicklets for more details. Terms and conditions will apply. Earnest student loan refinance and made by Earnest Operations, LLC, NMLS number 1204917. California Finance and Law License number 6054788. 535 Mission Street, San Francisco, California, 94105. Visit earnest.com slash licenses for a full list of licenses. And now, our friend, Scott Gomez. Well, it's been over a year and a half since we've had this wildly popular guest on. He won two cups with the Devils and a Calder Trophy in his 16-year NHL career and is now lighting it up on Instagram with the show, Scotty Goes, brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka as well. It's great to have you back on the Spit and Chicklets podcast, Scotty Gomez. What's new, Goma? Nothing. Thanks for having me. It's our I, pleasure, man. Would you take the red eye in from Alaska? All right. So just for you guys, I took the red eye. I got the call, the bullpen, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I took the red eye and I got in. And then Biz told me to be here at two, and, and I'm it's like, four. What the fuck, two. I'm like, dude, I got the, the Xanax was still in me, and so thank God Biz said, Biz said, dude, you can do, don't worry about it. There's no rush. And I was like, all right, thanks. So. I, I got here. Just don't s- sleep through the stream. Yeah, right now. We got it. So, so that, the pink Whitney uh, and me. Have you been filming a lot of that stuff? Uh, Scotty goes in Alaska. Like, where, where did you bounce around to film all that? So what happened was is that uh, when I went to you and we did those shows, it was uh, Scotty's house, and then the NHL came through and they uh, they wanted to try something out, so they bought five episodes of it. They switched to Scotty goes, and then yeah, that's uh, you know we, I had a list of guys, and of course you know how the NHL works. This guy can't do it. This guy because he said something bad or whatever. So yeah. finally, you know, um, hey, guys, yeah. I need to do somebody. Oh well, yeah, I mean, you pick the guys then, and then. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, we got it. Uh, you know, five episodes, four already uh, have gone, and uh, the last one's with um, with Ken Danico. So uh, it went pretty good. I mean, do you, do you think that because um, one of the 
most commonly said things after you came on was your memory. Like, do you think your memory and being able to remember so many parts of your career in life really helps you do this post playing career you have going now? I think with you hockey, don't forget anything. I think with hockey, like. I think people forget that, like, yeah, I, was a, I was a solid C student because I couldn't remember <laughs> Dick. And, uh, yeah, I mean, when it came to stuff that happened in our lives in hockey and the locker I mean, I'd be a straight-A student if that was the case. But, no, I, it, and I just, I don't know. I guess I was always one of those guys because we had our 20 reunion with, uh, with the Devils. And, I mean, guys, you know, just... How do you remember that? I'm like, well, how could I not? I mean, it was time of my life. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, there's something. But, it's like the minute alcohol hits yeah, your, hits I mean, your but, memory skyrockets. Exactly. But then there was other guys that like, you know, it's fun. It's better when, you know, the stories I'm telling you, that it's all happened. But it's so much better when the guys are around to give their side of it. Like, I wish, you know, because me and Claude Lemieux just die. Like, because his side of it's even funnier. And then there's, there's, other, there's other stuff. But, uh, and we were together. I mean, there were so many other, other things that I forgot that, like, yeah. guys brought up. And, I mean, yeah, we, we definitely had some fun there. That weekend. Yeah, because we first had you on. I mean, I think three quarters of the episode was you telling stories about Pepe. Clo- yeah. Clo- Clo- <laughs> you, we, I mean, they were hilarious. But I don't we, think we got past your first three years of playing no. in New Jersey. <laughs> well, I think we also had some drinks, too. And, uh, yeah, we were having a good time. But, yeah, people were, you know, people were asking, well, why didn't you get into this? I'm like, because we're still in the rookie year. I mean, that was, uh, you know, it is your rookie year. That's, I still think that's the, the best time. It's all yeah, new. Oh, me too. It's all new. You're just, you don't know, especially back then. I mean, it was fun to not get shit on, but just... Hey, this is what you're the young kid. I mean, this is all this is going to be an experience that it's only going to happen once, and it did happen for the next two or three years until Gio got there because I still was the youngest. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so no, those a um, lot of characters, a lot of good times. And the thing is, when we all get together, the Devils teams, everyone thought because of Lou and, and the way the organization was run that we were, you know, we were a boring team. And we kind of take offense to that because we just had to do stuff a little more. Uh, you had to hide uh, it. Yeah, hide it even more. I mean, there's yeah. some stuff. Why are we hiding this? But that's just the way it was. But uh, you throw any team up there, we, uh, we, show up, uh, we show up partying with the best of them. That's for sure. Yeah, three out of your first four seasons, you went to the Cup, won two of them. One guy we didn't talk about before, Patrick Eliash. Is yeah. this a guy who should be in the Hall of Fame, no? I think, uh, I mean, he's got all the credentials, but who knows? I mean, there's other guys that you kind of question, like, why aren't they in there? Like, Alexander McGillney, I cannot believe is that, not That's the one, one that I sh- always come up it's with. It's a shame. It's, it's just, uh, so who knows what it is, not taking anything away from the Hall of Fame. But I do remember me and Jay Pandolfo those years, and Patty had a great career. I mean, he was probably the best line mate I've ever had. But um, at one point, I remember me and Jay sitting on the bench, and it was, it might have been the second playoff run, but we were literally like, Dude, this guy's top, top five, mid top three in the league right now. Like we're talking. Well, he was well, he, he led your team in scoring oh, your yeah, first five always, years. Well, he always came back and beat me. That, but yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but Patty, uh, not passing to him on. No, purpose. no, no. He was on the A line. He was on the A line, and and um, but yeah, Patty would always come through and, and get me. But I never forget. I don't think people realized because we weren't publicized. We weren't you know out there. But Patrick Elias at one point was nasty. I yes. mean, the stuff he was doing. Have you ever watched? Not that you guys would, but if you ever watch those finals runs and you see that uh, the A line, you'll see Patty Elias. I mean, he's just he's running it. I mean, it was just it was basically sit back and let's watch the show. He was that good at that time. Uh, one thing we didn't talk about is your second year. You guys ended up losing the final, so you could have went back to back in yeah. your first two years. You probably played against one of the most iconic teams of all time in in the Colorado Avalanche when they got Bork. Of course, they had Patty Waugh. I don't know how many Hall of Famers they have, but it's probably rivals the team that they had in New uh, in Detroit the one year. See, that's. <laughs> I was just, it's funny because, you know, we all could have, should have, would have. And that's the – if if we win that year, you look at the, our lineup, and, I mean, it goes down as, like, you know, back-to-back, beaten – I mean, it like goes – Like a legendary I mean, team. you look at that lineup. You really look at that lineup. And the only you know, guy we were missing was, was, was Pep because, you know, he signed with Phoenix. But um, you look at that lineup, I mean, it was just – we were stacked. And I think, you know, I, I keep bringing up that, you know, we lost. It, it's – you know how did we do that we had him in game six and you know bobby halik made a good point he said you don't realize people don't realize how much hockey you've played oh. how much hockey you played and what killed us is we had carolina down three nothing in the first round and you know we already knew that we were going to go back it's just, just call it hockey call it we our no one was beating us out of the east and we ended up going game six just with two the, extra and, games, just, and we had an older team, and those just two, you know, it just, you know, how it is. You got it, especially. It's not like you're going back to like Boston or a good city. You're going back to no offense, but you're going back to Carolina, Raleigh. Like, yeah, you know, so and the you flight, don't golf. You know, the flight's even longer. Yeah, exactly. The flight's <laughs> even longer. So, but there's and then people forget. I mean, give Colorado. I mean, um, 
you know, Peter Forsberg was out. He was out in the finals. And the guy that we lost that was our motor going, there's always a guy that, that seems to have a run like that was, uh, was Randy McKay. He was he so was hot. On a, yeah, and he breaks his hand. Uh, he breaks his fingers or hands. Um, game two, game one after game one or game two, I think we won. We're staying tonight. Yeah, I think it was game two we won. And Randy's out, and we're all in the room, and everyone's you know drinking, everyone's just whatever, just loosen up. And guys are playing cards, and Randy McKay's, you know, his hand's like this. He's sitting there. The big boys are playing cards. The rest of us are just, everyone's hanging out together. And the trainer has to come in and tell Randy that, He's, broken. he's done. Oh, like, geez. he's done. So Randy's sitting there, and he's got his cat, and he's telling everyone, you know, we all do, I'll be back, you know. It's, you know and the trainer has to come and tell him, you know, hey, hey Randy, the, the images came back. It's, you're done. And, you know, we're all sitting there, like, seeing a ghost, and Randy starts crying. He's bawling up. And then the best part about it was he's bawling up, and then he's like, he wins the hand with like a flush. He like, throws it down, like collects the money, and then and we're all like, we're all like with the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, he's he's he's, he's crying like all this, you know, we're that close, and who knows, you know, you're wired up in the playoffs, so a lot of guys yeah. are teared up too because you know our leader's like, oh man, and, you know, he's he's done, but I'll never forget that he wins the pot and just like, well, boys. Sometimes it ain't always bad news or something. Only Randy. He's like, I gotta go. Yeah. I gotta go call my wife yeah, now. He's got all your winnings. Yeah. So, so that series, uh, people who don't remember, you guys, you were up three two, and you're back in Jersey. What do you remember about Game Six? The only thing I remember is Bork scoring off that face off. Obviously, a legendary goal in the finals for him, but. The celebration planning, I'm guessing with how professional your team one was, was wasn't even worried about. But it had to be crazy knowing we can get this done in the building tonight. We uh, we won Game Five, and Bob Corkum had I think a goal and an assist. I think we won two to one. Some Cork, uh, Jason Arnott was out of the lineup. Bob Corkum comes in, has a huge game. So we're you know we win that huge game. I think we probably stayed a night there. Whatever. We're coming back, and we got confidence. So it's like What's we've done it? this. We've done it. You know. Uh, we're all over them, coming back in our, our rink. And maybe you don't think too ahead. I mean, there was no thinking of party or anything. I mean, at that point, we just didn't have that kind of group. And we're thinking uh, more like, and it's kind of cool to win at home. Just to see yeah, because you'd won both on the road, right? Yeah, well, well, yeah, one. I mean, I won one on the uh, on the road in Dallas. And so we come back, and I mean, I if you go back and look at the first period, I think we outshot them 20 to 2. I scored a goal. I basically kicked it in. And I didn't even care because I was going to get another one. That's how on we were. Like it was like because it was like right there in front. I couldn't do it. So crowds going anyway. We, so it was one nothing. No, no, because it doesn't count. But we are all over them. And oh. I think what happens, I remember we got a five on three. Oh and no! People don't realize, and you guys have been there. If you guys are gambling men or betting men, whoever seems to get that first goal in those clinching games, it just because of both sides. If you then score, you need two. You if need you, two. Yeah. If you score. And you're at home, it's just the relief on the bench, especially at home. It's just like, okay, not going to happen. And if you get scored on against, especially on the road, it's like oh. all, the, all, the, you know, all the bad thoughts are just coming in now. So we go, I think we had a five on three, we almost, almost score, whatever. They kill it. And I think Adam Oates, or um, Adam Foote, I think he scores from like the red line. Like he dumped it in and kind of hit with bounced. And that just was like, what the fuck? What? Like, huh? and then, I mean, Patrick Watt just completely stole that game. And then, all right, we peppered him again. And then next thing you know, I don't know if that's when Drew scored that highlight real goal. That was ridiculous. It was one of those goals. We were all over him. And maybe it was two to one. It was, but when Drew scored that, it was three, it, you know, it wasn't, we weren't. And then just to get on that flight, just to get back. Okay. We still, still were confident, but it still wasn't something was like, we just knew we, we really, really ruined an opportunity to take this. And now we got to go back to Colorado and deal with all that. And, and, and I mean, Tange, the Tange and, yeah, show. And Tang, I mean, Tange had a great game and, and, you know, we end up losing and we just, you know, can't believe it. I mean, you go all that way back to back. And then Ugh. I think and then especially before the game, you know, guys, uh, guys that hadn't won it, they got up and spoke. And it was just everyone's emotional. Everyone's. And, yeah, after you lose, you're just sitting there and and, and you're crying. You're you, you went know. all the way to the finals. Yeah, game and, and, seven. You had it. You had it right up your grasp. And, and luckily for you, you win it the year before. But as you said, oh, you're more it like it worse. It made it worse. It made it just it just disgusting. And then. You realize like how hard it. I mean, for me, it was like, man, this is easy. Well, you know, probably come back. But <laughs> I'm gonna then, win four. But then when you lose, you some some fear goes in you. Like I might never get back here. Like what they what they're talking about. Like like and worst part was too. We we're, were getting on the bus 
and I mean, you know, the party is just going on in the rink. I mean, you got to pass everything. You're seeing guys, oh. you're congratulating them. It just, you know, it takes forever to get you. You got to go see your family because David Lou flew everyone down. And um, we get on the bus and then we get, uh, we got trapped in traffic, right? You know, go leave in the arena right there. We got, and then it, it takes a little bit for fans to realize. It's the devil. So the bus is rocking. People are just, we couldn't get oh, out Colin White's like, where's uh, the beer? Uh, yeah, and so I do remember I sat across from McGillney. I, I don't even know. At this point, I probably about 10 vodkas in me because Randy had a Copenhagen. I put a Copenhagen in, and I just remember pa- uh, waking up in Newark with a big wad of chew in my mouth. Just pa- yeah, it was. It was uh, Drink your sorrows away. Oh, man. And then we didn't rebound. I mean, we, uh, the next year, I mean, just. T- took so much out of us like especially going back to Colorado I mean it was it was painful every time we saw Colorado anything to do with Colorado and the only thing that was good that you know took a year would, once we beat uh, Anaheim it kind of washed yes the Colorado series away I mean it always hurt it always, we got another one yeah, though and it just kind of alright we're done with that like that can finally go and, and but yeah that was and especially you know I mean he's an idol of all of ours you know Ray Bork and I mean but that the storyline was just like was we, s- we wanted to shit on that so bad and then for him to have that, I mean, great for Ray, but it was still at the same time, like, just add that on. And now they always show, you know, the Ray Bork Cup. But that's just, you know, change the channel. I can't even watch it. It's just uh, still painful. Did it feel like the whole hockey world was rooting against you guys because of that? Because the Bork angle? Oh, for sure. But and it, they'd won it the year before. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. For sure. And, and it was, but I think we, we, we thrived on that. Yeah, like, you we, we, we loved We off. loved, like, being that devil, the, the non-sexy team that, like, yeah. But it was funny because um, a buddy of mine calls me. And he says, hey, you know, you're getting the phone calls, whatever, and a friend back home, and he says, huge Ray Bork fan since we were kids. And he's like, you know, Gomer, it's, it's kind of nice, but, um, you know, it sucks, but, yeah, it, it's kind of nice for, you know, Ray, you know, Ray Bork, whatever. And I'm just like, shut the fuck, fuck you. <laughs> so I remember that. Anyway, you're my friend. Years, yeah, years <laughs> later, he, uh, th- you know, I don't know, he played for Maine. They, they lost the national championship to, I think it was Minnesota. Was it Barrett Heiston? It was one of the Heiston. Chris, it was the older one. Chris. And he's a great friend of mine, but I remember, and I called, uh, they, I was watching the game. You know, obviously I wanted them to win. I think Minnesota, they might have gone back to back, whatever. And no team has done that for whatever. So I called Heiston and I'm like, hey man, I'm so sorry you lost, but God, you know, it's so good to see Minnesota go back to it. He's like, fuck you, go over. Like, he knew it. We were, we were joking about that. Yeah, but it was. So I got, I got payback on that, but it was. Uh, yeah. I'm a big Thomas like, fan. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, he's yeah, 18 yeah, years yeah, old. He yeah. did great for Minnesota. Yeah. So um, I don't know if there's any other Jersey guys we have. Oh, we, well, we, 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 I don't think we talked about Scott Stevens. Now, yeah. I, I don't know if there's a lot to talk about with him because he's a pretty, seems like a pretty qu- quiet guy. Yeah. Scotty was. Uh, there's, you know, there's three banners up there. Stanley Cups, and it starts with Scotty Stevens. It really does. I mean, obviously, Marty Brodeur is, I think, the greatest, but it's, it's Scotty. So when you get in there, I remember Bobby Hulik and Scott Niedermeyer. Scott Niedermeyer didn't talk much, but at pregame at, at his house. You know, and they told me right away, they were like, watch this guy. Watch this Everything. guy. Everything. This is, this, is this is how it's done. This is what sets the tone of our practices. Our practices, you go back in the day, I mean, they were sick. I mean, it was the games were easy. I mean, we fought more on the bench because we just had, you know, it was, we were just competing against each other. That how good those teams were. But Scotty set the tone, and and he was 36 at the time, and I mean, he's the hardest working guy ever. And I remember my first, uh, one of my first, I make the team. Um, we used to do this warm up drill that you go one on one with the guy, and you uh, you know play keep away, and you know I made the team, so maybe I. Uh, had a night of celebration with a couple of the guys. So, you know. Yeah, well, you know. Um, well, maybe not at my best, but anyway, you're 19. Hey, shit, you're, you're invincible. It's no biggie. But I remember Robbie puts me against Scotty, and I'm just like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> really? And then, I mean, you know, and I'm going against Dad. I mean, nickname was Dad. And and he's, like, basically telling me, like, let's go more, more, like, cross-check me in the back. Give me, like, the guy's an animal. And and on the ice, off the ice, he, just, he was our hardest-working guy, and everyone just fell, uh, fell in the line. But, I mean... As far as, like, all the rest of our buddies that played, I didn't know what it was like to go against us and have that fear. Because guys would be like, Gomer, you'll never understand you what, it's like, it. what, what it's like to have that guy across. The only thing closest, I'd say, was when, um, when Kasparitis was still healthy. When that guy was on the ice, he, you, he was scary. You had to know where that guy was at because this guy was rocky. And then um, I remember the closest thing to that, Damon Lankow told us, he came back uh, in Junior's Tri-Cities, was skating with us, and he said, I think this is when Lindros was in his prime, 
He said when he puts his foot over the boards, the whole building feels that this guy's on the ice. And, I mean, he, he can hurt you. And that's how Scotty was. I mean, he just uh, – but, he, you know, he was Scotty. And people don't realize how good a player this guy was. That's what I was going to ask like, you. In the 80s and not early 90s, I mean, he had some 70-point years. So yeah. when you're with him and it's Rafalski, Niedermeyer running the offensive uh, part of production from the D – he still must have made plays that you're like, holy fuck, people don't know how good offensively he is. Dude, he can put it on a dime like that anywhere. The guy, I mean, he, he's one of those guys, if, if someone was missing, he's automatic in the power play. And it, wasn't okay. even, it wasn't even like, oh. It wasn't the biggest it was, loss. You know, because there's certain guys that get back there and like, oh, shit. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. If, if I went off the Pittsburgh first power play, it was no thing. If Goncho went off, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, so, but yeah, so, but, but um, just his intensity, just his, uh, his work ethic. I mean, he didn't have to talk. He didn't have to say. We had other guys for that. We had Randy McKay. We had Bobby League. We had the guys. But, but Scotty just, uh, just. I mean, I mean, an animal. I mean, I, I can't even. You know, yeah. We used to play the game where I don't know if I brought it up last time. Where, um, you know, if you had to go to like war, Vietnam, who are you picking? And I'm like, fuck off. No one's picking me. Like you know, I'm like, you know, and <laughs> so, team like a team building exercise. Yeah, well, no, it wasn't even that. It's just something we'd always fuck around with. Like it wasn't even team, hypothetical. We, we you know, we didn't even do any of that team building shit. Like like. We were just a t- team building was go to the bar, get to know a guy. Team building is on, on the ice, go to practice. Not taking away anything, but, you know, we, we did certain stuff that it's like, we're hockey players. This does, this not, this does not lead to anything that, you know. But so Scotty and Jay Pandolfo were always the two that, and probably call them you, that three were that, like, you're taking that guy. I'm, go- I'm following that guy. Like, you know, where do I go? Where do you I know, go? He's a foxhole buddy. Yeah, yeah. Guy. I mean, you know, just tell me what to do. So those three guys. And then I got picked. Uh, if you had to go to practice completely drunk and you can do it, <laughs> you're taking Gomer. Because, hey, man, I mean, like I said, Scotty's over there. And, uh, you know, you didn't want to be the guy that, that, that stuck out. That's for sure. When he hit Lindros in the uh, 2000 semis there, did you see that happen live? Were you on the ice, the bench? Uh, I was on the bench. And what happened was is that, so game six, we got to win. Uh, Claude Lemieux steps it up he backed it up i mean because after we went down three to one you know we've all had guys that got up and said you know first larry raw, came in raw raw yeah they, like they, you they know, don't bring it. larry comes in and you know the greatest human being there is and larry comes in and absolutely just just rips us you bunch of you know this you guys i mean you're giving something up this because we could have beat philly in four if you go back in those games they're just what the hell is going on here like how are we down three yeah it was one of those like and it does happen it's just like so after they leave claude lemieux stands up and he's basically like you know basically motherfucks every guy it's kind of like with that jordan thing when that uh, coup coach said that you know jordan stood up and was like you better bring it tomorrow get he just something about it when he said it and then he goes out and scores the game winner in game six but lindros had just come back yes and you know a guy hadn't played in a year you could tell he's fresh and the worst thing that could have happened was Lindros scores to make it two to one, but he had so many chances. He had so many, like, so he scores that goal. Now it's like, this guy, shit, this He's guy's back. This guy could be warmed up for game. This is the last thing we need. This guy being, and, and I, he had a couple of good shifts. I, I don't know how many shifts it was. I think he, and man, he came in the middle and, cause I remember Pando gets laid out. Jay gets laid out right there. And, and just to see a big guy like that, just go down. And I mean, I like know. a sack of bricks. Yes, I mean, you're like, you know, people don't realize how huge that man was. And then after it happened, though, Scotty, he was he was rattled. He didn't want, you know, everyone thinks Scotty just, no. I mean, Scotty, he was not like that. He didn't want to kill a guy. I mean, right. deep down, I think he did. But but <laughs> but no, but but Larry, Scotty was like in the hallway right there. And Larry had to go like grab him and, and like, hey, you know. To talk like baby, he just needed insurance because hey, yeah, stay like, in this, yeah, because yeah, like, I mean, not, not that he, he was gonna anyway, but it still was like he was real. I mean, you yeah. know, nobody, you want to injure guys, my, 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 yeah. Being, yeah. Know? my yeah. memory of that that hit is crazy. My my dad and I went to watch it at this local golf course, Widow's Walk. I don't know why we went there, but all of a sudden we're watching the game and that hit happened. He said, Oh my god, I was going nuts, I was like 16, 17, and and he said, he goes, that that could be the end of Eric Lindros' career. And it kind, it kind of was. He played again, but that was the one. And, and the funny thing about Stevens knocking over Pando on that hit is it was the same way when he knocked out, out yeah. Kozlov in 95. One devil got crushed in that, too, because yeah. he was coming. It didn't matter who was there. And, and the, the thing about him is, like, guys that knew, it's like, it's an art. Guys that knew how to hip check. Right, you think you got a guy that you're going against the wall? Like I got this guy, and all of a sudden, you're boom! Over and overhead. I mean, they just you know, it's like a linebacker. Scotty played linebacker growing up, but like in practice, I'd cut through the middle, and he'd come and like right there, he'd be like, 
I got you. I could have had you. I got you. you. And I'm like, no, you didn't. My head's up, motherfucker. Like, I, like, <laughs> like, you know, like, and so that's how competitive Scotty was. Like, this, uh, I mean, in practice, it was even, it was. Hey, were like, you serious when you actually played linebacker in uh, Oh, yeah, in yeah. School? Scotty played football. Uh, yeah, that's what, because I, I remember asking him. The least him, surprising him, thing I've ever yeah, heard. Yeah, and I remember asking him, I was like, did you? And he was like, oh, yeah, I played, uh, played linebacker in football. And I was like, he's like, you think, you know, you probably, you're so humble in this, but I'm like, God, what were those hits like? He's just kind of, yeah, yeah. Like he didn't say much, but yeah, he's uh, he's a guy you definitely. Uh, I got two rings because of that guy. And so he, um, when when you guys would go up for pops all the time, was was he usually a guy that was always there? And if he was, was he just kind of hanging back, letting everybody else be the jesters? And, and no, I mean it was uh, Scotty would have his beers. He'd come. He wouldn't. He wouldn't hang out long. He just uh, you know it was just and, and no one no one cared as long as uh, you know guys would show up. But a guy like that. With his credentials and everything he's done and the way he worked, he don't have to show. I mean, it's Scotty. Like he, there's you know, everyone, you know, if you had to show up, have a beer, yeah. But he wasn't. Uh, no, Scotty was. Look, he's a great wine guy, great wine wine connoisseur. Scotty Stevens knows his wine. If you ever get to go to dinner with this guy, you don't even you let Perfect. him take the get wine. The expensive I mean, bottle. Oh yeah, no, he, take he, off know, to the bathroom. But he's when the, the guy. Comes. Yeah, but he's the guy that uh, you know actually knows. We're, we're starting with this white. We're starting. You're just like okay, yeah, I yeah, know, and. Um, but yeah, he was uh, he was the man. I mean, he's a uh, you know he's a hunter. Everything like it was, it was, it was Scotty man. Uh, we were talking actually right before the, we started recording uh, 2003 Eastern Conference Finals versus Ottawa, Game Seven in Ottawa. You guys, you what you say? Your bus broke down. You had to go to the rink in a school bus. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'll give you this one, but I'll give you the fine Scotty Stevens. Okay. Just because no, no, I love yeah, this yeah, shit. No, 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 no because well, one of the, you you've been one of the best guys to come on the podcast and describe individuals. That's what I love. I love hearing about these legends and what they were like, and and you you just stare at them in awe your whole career. So here's here's Scotty's defining, and you know, we're playing against Tampa, and I think we go, we win the first two games, and Tampa was up on the rise. They were up and coming, and were they ready to beat us? Probably not, but they're right there. You know, they're you know, Vinny and all of them are still kind of young, but. Um, so we we win. Let's see, first two games we win. Tampa wins game three. We're playing game. No, this was game three or four. Ah, shit, I don't remember. But no, here's okay. what happens. You can, you can, you can restart. Here's what happens. Yeah. We're up two to one, or maybe two nothing. And Cabina, remember that guy? Pablo he had a Cabina, shot. Yeah. Pablo Cabina had a shot. He's at the red line, and he's going to dump the puck in. And I remember because I was right by the blue line. I think I'm right there. And he takes a slap shot, and instead of dumping it in, I think he tried to fake like he's going to shoot it on net. Like Johnny Boychuk was a master at that. Like, but he had a good. So he shoots it, and it goes, and it smokes Scotty right in the ear. So like, Lin, you know, the Lindros swing went down, but Scotty Stevens goes down, and it's like you're basically like you know, like basically like <laughs> kicking him. Like, hey man, you're going to get up? Like, dude, Scotty Stevens don't go down. It's like seeing like, Superman. Yeah, man. like whoa, what are you doing? Like, hey. Like and Scotty's down, and next you notice guys are taking him off. And, it, and I, when he left the bench in Tampa, right there, our whole bench just kind of went like, "What? Where's our, what where's fuck, our leader going? What, what, what's going on here? Where's William Wallace going? Yeah, where, yeah. Why is William Wallace getting carried out? And then Tampa comes back and bang, bang, bang. They beat us three to two, four to two. So the next game, it might have been game five. Yeah, it was game five. It was game five. We don't know if uh, we don't know if Scotty's uh, playing. And it was just kind of like... You're like, wait, what? Yeah, and I remember he finally comes in because he was always on the later bus with me. He comes in, he sits down in the room you know, where all the, the food's at and everyone... Guys have already left and Scotty sits down and everyone just kind of leaves him alone. And I just remember like going up to him, sitting next to him and being like, you're going to play, right? Like, dude, like... <laughs> hey, stop like, fucking yeah, with no, us, like, man. You know what I mean? Scotty just kind of broke the... Like, I, I, I had that relationship with him, kind of just like, just kind of messed... And then he... Uh, yeah, he goes on the ice, and I think I got an assist, and Scotty scores the first goal, and it just kind of like, and then we went on to win the series, but that just shows you the the magnitude of this guy. Like, when he went down, it was like, what the, f- well, you're not supposed to do that. Like, get up. Like, yeah. it, it was shock. It was shock. And then, and then uh, but yeah, he, uh, yeah, I mean, the guy was just a gamer. He was, um, but going back to the game seven. So, we're up on Ottawa 3-1, and as cocky as it sounds, I'm not taking anything from Anaheim. Both teams felt it. Whoever wins this is going to win the cup. It was just that was kind of the finals. Like and it's taking nothing away from Anaheim, but the big boys lost: Detroit, Dallas, Colorado. I mean, you got to take advantage. Feels of this. like this year's Lightning Island. Yeah, it was exactly we talked about it before. It was kind of like you know, not to you never know in Montreal, but yep. I mean, hey, this is you got that feeling, that sense. 
So we're up 3-1. And game, um, they win, so we're up at game six. It's 3-2 to now. We go into double overtime, and I think Haas scores. Haas scores, so now we got to go back to Anaheim. Where don't forget, a lot of us... Ottawa, sorry. Ottawa, 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 sorry. A lot of us have that feeling still in us that this is like we're going back to Colorado. Like, we had these guys. Not only that, we had them two, two games. And then, so this is where Pat Burns, the late great Pat Burns, was just at his best. Like, there was just no, you know, he just there didn't no give a fuck. Like, certain coaches you can see at this time, maybe they're nervous. But no, he was just... So now we're all ready. Let's go. Game seven. Here we go, boys. The trainers leave early. Rumor has it that they got in a, the cab driver got in a wreck. So our trainers are on the side of the highway <laughs> waiting for a car to pick them up. Tough start to game seven. Tough start to game seven. So the first group leaves. Now the second group... You know, it's probably about 10 of us or whatever it is. We're going, and the bus breaks down. The Go bus on. breaks down. And for people that don't know how hockey players work, we're probably all athletes. Oh, we're so superstitious. Regimented. This is, like, regimented. We just lost. Yes. Yes. It's over. We just, yeah, it's, it's over. Play. It's over. This is a sign. We shouldn't <laughs> yeah. even go. Like, well, what the hell is going on here? And um, You didn't even know about the trainers yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we're waiting on the side, and we're just thinking another bus comes. And I remember Turner Stevenson reminded us, we got picked up by a school bus. No. So we're in a school bus. Go, you know, we're all listening to your music, your tunes. You're getting pumped up. And we're in a fucking school bus. Like the booster club. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, the booster club. <laughs> it's a short bus, like, too. Yeah, yeah, right? And uh, probably the guys that were probably there could have been. But we literally on a bus. And I, I don't even know what the security let us in. They're like, what the hell is a school bus doing here? So we get in there. And now everyone's talking. It's kind of taking over. Like, is this a bad sign? And, and I think um, Pat Burns came in. And just said something like, Turner would know bad, but he said in regards of like, this is why we'll have the last laugh or something like, this is why it's supposed, this is the way it's supposed to go. Why make it easy? Or he said something so cool that it was like, fuck yeah, like here we go. And then, uh, yeah, what a game. And then Freeze came through at the end. And, yeah, uh, and I mean, that was, that was probably one of the best victories. And I mean, the, cause we were going back to the finals, we, we had confidence, but, uh, that Ottawa team, I mean, they, they were stacked. They were that team all year long. They were just completely stacked. And for us to, to stick with the plan, and uh, here we go. But it, and I'm, I'm sorry, but Anaheim gave you a battle too, though. That went seven, man. So, Should, yeah. We, uh, it's like the it kind of reminds me of the first game. We, we, we beat them bad, uh, game one. Game two. You guys them. had home ice, right? Yeah. So, game two, we beat them 2 nothing, something like that. All right, we're feeling good. We go out to Anaheim, and we just had that confidence, like, cause, hey, why not get three? Like, you know, you know I'm still young, man. I'm back in my head. This could be a sweep, you know. <laughs> and, um, the first uh, game three, it goes into overtime, and the first shot they they took, they scored. So we're kind of like, ah, watch that one out. Hey, I guess we'll, we'll win it at home. Like meaning that that doesn't really count. We didn't even get a chance. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you know, the first shift of the game. I mean, all right, okay, we'll take. You know, you're just thinking of positive stuff. Hey, they're, like, they're gonna have to win one. You know, next game two, I think it goes into overtime. Kind of same thing. They they go. Oh get, really? Both yeah, I think so. Did they go, did they go no? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Three or so four. that's yeah. now it's like. Okay, all right, well, we gotta, we're, they're not going to beat us at home. Go back home, beat them. Now it's like they've had their little... They've they had, had their, their two wins. They've had their fun. Now it's time it's to... It's in Cali. Yeah, why not? And we're staying tonight. Rumor has it we're staying tonight. All right. So, and it's, They planned it that way. And it's, yeah. Yeah. They let this one in. Let's have a little fun in Cali. And it's one of those games where, like, we're ready. I mean, like, you know, and I think... I, I don't know if Joe that Neuendijk... That was the game, right? Joe Neuendijk gets hurt right away, and... It was okay. We've all been there. Here we go. And it's one of those games that, like, dude, it's like three nothing after like ten minutes or something like that. You're like, are you fucking kidding me? We're gonna have to go to game. Set. So let's make a run. We can do this. We we'll make a run. We don't want. And then I don't know what the final was. It was like five whatever. Five two. Yeah. Five two. And that. So not ass only kicking. that, got an ass kicking. Places. Korea gets up after he gets rocked that by was Scotty. The game. Okay. He gets rocked by Scotty. I'm right there on the ice. He gets. I mean, everyone says it was late. I mean, it's. Finals. Back then it wasn't. Finals. There ain't no yeah, late. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but the, nice wor- <laughs> the worst part was is 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 Paul. Or he gets up and he snipes that up top shelf goal. And now, I mean, it just was like. So now we got to stay at night. Now we're all like, all you want to do is get, get home, get in. So now we got to stay at night, and now it's Colorado all over again. We still got to fly back. And we still got to fly back. It's a long flight. We're everyone's trying to be positive, but the guys that have been there, that's all we're thinking. Like. Is this going to happen again? Because you just never know. Game yeah. seven. I mean, you just are you guys you know, ta- are you guys thinking it? Or are you guys having conversations amongst each other? It's pretty quiet. It's quiet. Everyone's just kind of you know they're 
no one's it's you know not a death yet it's not but it's like it's just you're it's, thinking it it's thinking it it's in back of your human it's thinking in the back of your mind like here here are you kidding me like here we go like this is this can't happen almost like, like we're so much better than this team how are we going to seven it, exactly and I mean that's Anna they were they were great Jagir and everything and then um, I just remember just before just guys were like I think it happened twice but that's the uh, Eminem song um, lose yourself and you know how the music gets cut off. When you know there's like ten minutes to go, music gets cut off, and that game it was like fuck no. Leave we went, on. we we left it. We like right when we're getting ready to go out, that song's going on, and it was just like fuck it, here we go, like this. And once we got that first one, it, just like I said, you get the first one in the finals. Any any, it was like this uh, not tonight, boys. And then yep. they got the second one, and then free. I mean, Rupper had a Rupper, yeah. Rupper had a hell of a oh, game. Too, and yeah, we were I mean, we were all over. And then but uh, yeah, to and. It's kind of like that Gretzky says when you know they lost to the Islanders and he's he's walking by and you know the Islander guys are all just just it kind of was that feeling that like it's over man like you the Colorado left. the Colorado thing everything's over like this is you know like we did it we you know it's two I mean having it's just it was a good feeling and then we get in the locker room and you know there's probably there's probably more alcohol on this table than we had in the room and it was like you know so we literally have no booze. There's like five bottles of champagne. There's Lose like, like it's a big year next year, boys. Yeah, yeah. So I think and give and, and we all joke about it now, but I think like in Lou's uh, defense was like that's the last thing he was thinking. Where it's like, well, who was thinking it then? Wasn't there someone up? But it's gonna you know, be some intern. So <laughs> me, me, Jamie Langenbrenner, uh, we went left. Whitey. Turner Stevenson and Dick Jim McKenzie, they went right, and then they ended up. Go- so literally, we found like coolers and stuff there that beer, and we're like we had a big bucket or you know one of the laundry buckets we're filling up booze after fucking, winning the cup after winning the cup and uh and um and we're, we're in whitey you know, so we all come back with, with booze and now it gets even worse and you know so it's like two or it's after the game we all go to dinner right there and now mike's uh, the bar we hang out at in in west orange you know, Mike Citarella's bar is was home. We're going to go there. And the streets, I mean, the cops cut off the streets and everything's packed. I get there and, you know, it's just jam packed. And, and now, it's, you know, we're going. It's like, where, where's the cup? Like, you know, where's the cup? Where's the, where's the cup? So Turner Stevenson, that asshole, comes in with Jim McKenzie. And Turner's that dick that left all his gear on. Like, you know, like oh, some guys do just that. take yeah, the like, skates off. Just, of yeah, he's like, all right, man. Like, okay. So T's, like, you know, he's got his gear on and everything. And he comes That's in. That's what Podine like, did yeah, after the Colorado yeah. and one. And a bunch of guys have done it. but it, And um, and Turner comes in and he's like, um, he's uh, he's like, yep, yeah, nope. And then Scotty comes in and Scotty was pretty pit. Like, yeah, Lou, uh, Lou we didn't, we we're probably the only team ever to win the Stanley Cup. You didn't have it that, that night. night. We didn't have it that night. <laughs> Lou was snuggling it. He was, <laughs> who knows what was going on with it, but. Uh, he was spooning so it. Now, now, now the owner of the bar has got to get up and make the announcement like, yeah, um, uh, Stanley Cup won't be coming tonight. Oh, oh dude, God. it was just like, yeah, like we didn't. That's so uh, devil. And, and that, in that point, no, you didn't care. I mean, like I said, guys probably would have reacted different if, if, but, you know, for most of us, it was our second one. Yeah. The thing was just. Don't really give a fuck. It's, yeah. it's we want. Hey, no we'll, we'll, we'll make up yeah. for it. We'll definitely make up for it. But yeah, I mean that's uh, that's a trivia uh, question we always joke about. Like, what's the one team that probably didn't party with the Stanley Cup that <laughs> night? Is it was the 2003 Devils. Um, to transition, thank you for all those memories, man. Those you have an unreal memory. Uh, going back to Alaska, did you get to bring the cup back there a few times? Yeah. So um, the first time you get it for 24 hours, and the the most humbling thing was was. I'm living in New York. I'm living in Jersey. I'm in New York City. I'm at clubs. I'm in bars. We're in Alaska. If you're not 21, you're not getting in a bar. Oh, there's so very, and, uh, oh, oh, it's beyond strict. And it's and all everyone knows there. everyone. And that's all booze hounds <laughs> there. And like, and we're talking. You try to get in a fake ID. Most places, though, this place like everyone want to go. They're the you know they handcuff you in front of the place till the cops come. So Jeez. everyone's walking oh, in. Man. Everyone wow. knows it's a lot. so Tough crowd. Yeah. So I win the cup, and now I go back home and. I'm still like now my buddies are all 21 and you know everyone wants to go to the bar and I'm like hey let's have a house party like you know anyway so the cup's coming and the guy from the cup calls me and he says hey Gomer uh, got a surprise for you I'm supposed to get it Friday morning he goes because of the scheduling because of how far Alaska is um, you get it uh, you're gonna get it Thursday night and I'm like you're shitting me right and, and I was nights. out yeah and I was out and so I'm like call my dad right away because we had something set up like Randy McKay really helped out for this, and um, so we 
we get the cup. I, I, a couple of my buddies that are older, we go to the bar. The dream was always to get into Chuku Charlie's. That's the bar. You know, we all got to play. What was the place in Boston? Dad's. Right? Dad, yeah. It's, it's, there's one place Dad's. that when you're finally 21, you're getting in. And yeah. so, so we go there Wednesday night and come out and we say, hey, um, listen, the Stanley Cup will be here. You know, Scott's in the raid. Can we? And they were like, absolutely. We'll make, you know, my old coach is a, co- a lieutenant cop. So anyway, we get there, do the places beyond pack. I've never been in there. So I'm like, you know, and they, they assign a lady with me. They assign this lady to be my chaperone. Okay, whatever. I got a posse of about 10, you know, 12 Mexicans that are going to, you know, they'll be fine. My uncles and all this shit. And so anyway, the lady, this is the, so now all of a sudden the lady's really all over me. Like, like anything I'm drinking, she's, she's grabbing it. Like there's no booze in that. I'm like, are you, get the, yeah, of course. I'm like looking at her like, like I'm the most now, regular guy here. But, but not even that. I'm like, what do you think? I'm like, what? Uh, I'm not going to, so she is just all over it. Like, and it's now it's not getting fun for me. I'm like, who the fuck is this lady? Like my mom wants to whip her ass. Cause my mom's like, <laughs> knows I like, I'm like, and it just was like, this ain't fun. So finally, all right, let's go. Um, let's get everyone, you know, it's time for everyone to drink. So we get on the scene, you know, people, are just, you know, everyone wants to drink from the cup. So she goes out and she brings back three, you know, two or three cases of Oduls. Oh my God. And I'm like, hell what are you doing? no. And you know how we think, I don't care if, if, if whatever it is, but there is no fucking chance I'm going back to that locker room and guys find out that I was pouring old duels, uh, old duels in the cup. So now I'm just thinking that. I'm thinking of the boys. I, I, I could care less about what's going on. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking way ahead. So I said to her, I said to the owner, I said, okay, you got two options here. One, non, our, uh, non-alcoholic beer is not going in the cup. And I go, two, you got a choice. Either she stays or the cup goes. Like, I ain't dealing with this shit anymore. Like, she, or yeah. she goes or the cup she, goes. She, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and so they... Get the, you know, she got booted out. We had fun, and then uh, I mean that night, I mean the partying and stuff that would just the shenanigans that would go on. It, it was just, like it's, Studio Fifty Four. It's, it's it's crazy. I mean, we had it just. And then, you know, I don't know if the Cup guys. Uh, I don't think it was Mikey, or whatever. But he might have passed out a little earlier. I and mean, that's when really the shenanigans. <laughs> but the whole event start. Um, they started seven in the morning. I mean, I literally haven't gone to bed. My dad comes, you know, comes to my house. They cut the street off where I live for all the neighbors, which is them to have it. And uh, and you always get that one guy right away. The, the news interviews the one guy that bit moved in like two years ago. I've lived in the same neighborhood my whole life. I bought my parents' house. They moved somewhere else. And this guy's in, on TV saying like, "Yeah, I remember when Scotty was just a little kid running down." And so all the neighbors <laughs> want to beat this guy's ass. Like what? Like <laughs> so then we Why'd go. Why'd you interview him? Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. so then we go. Uh, the first stop was we took it to the elderly home, and you know. It, we got in there and it's if it wasn't 98 degrees it was 100 and I mean I'm like dad what the and like people are just you know so hungry. They it's don't cold even, in here they don't, they don't I mean <laughs> you know they don't even know like half the people are just scootering by it like what the fuck's this like it just kind of, we took it to hospitals and we took it and then um, we had it out the out in the in the park kind of like downtown and we had it there for like five hours and I I had a, they had a motorhome set up for me. I mean, I passed out. So everyone got to like we wanted it for the town. Take took it to the local bar, bar, and then we had our uh, we had our uh, our party. But the best advice I ever got from that was uh, Randy McKay because I went up to Randy and I said, "Hey, what do I do?" And he's like, "Okay, here's what you want to do. You know, you want it for the people. You want it for." But he goes, "Once you get to your private party, he goes, you put the Stanley Cup on that corner, and then you make sure you're." on the other side of it because at that point you're just you're done you're with, done it with people want pictures yeah. people want like it's like hey it's there for there and that was some of the greatest advice and and he gave pan jay pan off of the same advice and of course jay that idiot he didn't listen so he's after also I, so nice yeah too. so after i talked to jay i'm like how was your party he's like fuck i didn't listen to randy and i'm like what and he's like i was i took pictures all night i just got stuck in the corner there and it was yeah so you know but uh it was neat by the time that thing left it was you know that's yeah, what I heard. Yeah, I, heard yeah. I heard guys, your yeah. hands are sore too oh, from carrying dude, it around yeah. the whole time. And that's the thing. And I was one of those guys, like, you know, let someone else carry it in. Let, let, like, I don't need to carry it in. Like, you know, people were shocked on that. Like, hey, you carry it in. What are you? And here's another thing where you really, there's one guy. So this was at the after party the second night. And I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm outside and I'm, and I'm smoking a dart. And I'm looking and I'm talking to someone and I see one this this guy and he's just all walking serious. And he's like really upset. And I'm like, Hey, what's what what's wrong? You okay? And he turns to me and he goes, All the blood and sweat and tears that goes into winning Lord Stanley Cup. 
people are disrespecting it. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, I'm like, buddy. Like, I want yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I'm, like, I'm like, oh, that sucks. Like, man, I'm not going to tell you to come back in. Like, what the fuck? Like, that, that's the whole point, man. Like, and so, so he does that. And then the best part is you get guy, people still this day. You're like, you know, hey, you know, grab the cup. Have a sip. No, 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 no. Why not? I, you know, the only people that win it are allowed to grab it. Well, unless you really, really uh, pick up your game, I don't think you're ever going to have a chance. Like you're 48 yeah, 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 and on the yeah, third line yeah, in the yeah, men's yeah, league team, yeah. dude. Pick the fucking thing up, like, dude. You're not like that's for players, man. That ain't for fans. And I mean, yeah, it was. Uh, people cheer at me because, like, uh, when the Bruins won, I lifted up. Like, that's disrespectful. You didn't win. I'm like, yeah. what am I going to fucking say no exactly, to lifting the fucking exactly, cup like, up? Mm, fucking squid. Um, and- sticking with Alaska, um, during the walkout, you ended up going play for the Alaska Aces back home in the ECHL. That must have been an absolute blast just home games so i think about it now to, like, yeah talk to us about the whole how so here's what happened down. okay we all knew we all knew there was gonna be a lockout yep. you were in right and there was it was you know and you know we all were told no way we're taking a cap i mean we were that wasn't bred in us i, mean, I don't know how many interviews no cap. yeah yeah i don't know how many yeah. interviews i'm oh, there yeah. like never we will never like the palmero thing like and then uh, imagine the deal they would have yeah. got if you just took it right <laughs> yeah, away yeah, yeah. <laughs> palmero <laughs> <laughs> so, so he goes uh, all right so what happens is that Igor Larionov goes um, Iggy goes became close to Igor Larionov and if anyone ever gets to talk with this guy or be around this guy he is magic the professor, this, the professor. Yeah. he's a genius this guy Legit. and not even the stories of sense. so I finally get my own seat on the bus and I'm fuck all you motherfucker. Like I'm finally, hey, the G Love is here at my seat. I'm in the back, and I'm you know I'm talking the shit because I finally got my my own seat. And here comes the professor, and he's walking on, and it's kind of like the Forrest Gump thing, like seats taken, but it's not. No one say that. <laughs> no, to you're him. good. Yeah, yeah, but he's he's coming back, and I'm like, motherfucker, he's gonna pick me. So I moved to the you know I moved to the front, and, you know this side, and I'm just acting like I'm on something. He's like. Hey, get up, move over. I'm like, fuck. So there goes that. I don't have my own seat. But she loves dead. It was the greatest experience ever to become close with Igor Leonov and the stories and, and just what really happened. And, I mean, just incredible. And he's just so, I mean, so as we get closer, he says, he goes, hey, you know, there's going to be a lockout. going to be a lockout next year. And he goes, I'm having my retirement game. You, Pando, I think Marty was invited. Like, it's going to be in Russia. And we'll get to that. And so he knows there's going to be a lockout. And I'm like, so as the year goes on, Iggy goes, hey, um, do you want to play? I want you to play for my hometown in Russia. And I can't even say Vada scores. I don't even know. I, I don't want to butcher it up. But so, and I think the money was like, I think it was like 350 cash, whatever. Like, I was like, oh, okay. And so I go out to Russia to go. Uh, and at this point, the Aces guys are already coming in. So I've already been skating with them. And there's already, there's six Alaskans on the team. And so a I'm lot skating. of guys that were your type player weren't playing that year. Yeah. Man. yeah. It was younger guys who would play. So, um, and no one knew about how Russia was. Everyone's just seeing the money, right? So I go out to Moscow, I take a flight. I go out to Moscow. Me and Barry Smith, the the the, the coach, he was going to coach there. So thank God he was there. So what what's going to happen is I'm going to go with the team for two weeks. So I get into Moscow, and you know when you go with uh, Igor Larionov, Slav Fetisov, it's like probably Michael Jordan on steroids. Royalty, like you're yeah. with Roll. I mean you are with Roll. I can't even explain. It. So I'm with the G. I'm I'm in places in Moscow that I'm like, where the fuck do I Who's sign this up? Mexican guy. Yeah, I mean it was, but it was like, where the fuck am I signing? I'll sign right. Like this is going to be, you know, I'm yeah. already I'm already telling the the president that we'll make the playoff. You know, I'm guaranteeing <laughs> shit. I'm like, this is going to be great. So then, I'm with Igor for two days with Iggy, and then Iggy leaves. I'm going to meet him later on the road. So now I go with uh, this, this Russian agent. Um, so Boris, little, little chubby, chubby guy, big, ch- I, great guy. We can friends with me, Barry Smith. So now they're gonna give me the tour where I'm gonna live, and now we're leaving, kind of Moscow, and I'm you know kind of in the rear mirror, mirror like <laughs> I thought I was living in there. What the fuck? So I'm like, it's considered Moscow, but it's like an hour away. Yeah. I see the town. All right. So now I go and um, I go with the team. We get on this train. I'm meeting the team. So we get on this train. It's like a third world country train. I'm on this train. All right. We're on this train for like four hours. We get out. I got my hockey gear, and we watch the team play. And I'll never forget this day. I, I put my bag down in front of the bus, thinking that you know, fuck pro. So who you know who puts it in there? So how the bus is waiting, and we're all on the bus, and and they're all speaking Russian. And Kozlov was on the team, and he's kind of like stay, he's just quiet. And Kozlov, like next thing you know, I see him get off the bus, and like grabs my gear, 
you know, not not a why not am a, I doing not this? a gentle, not a gentle. It's like a, you know, like <laughs> basically throws it in this and that. I'm sitting there like, shit, was I supposed to get that? Like, you know. So anyway, he comes back and he kind of, I'm like, hey, am I supposed to get? He's like, it's not the NHL or something like that. I'm like, all right, man, chill out. Like, fuck, I didn't know, you know. So Kamensky's on Val Kamensky's on a team legend, and so we start traveling around with these guys, and it's like. What the fuck, man? Oh, yeah. what, like what? Like was it with the Super League still? Yeah, oh, yeah. It just it just started. I think. Um, so we go to uh, I think Kazakhstan where Vinny the Cavalier was playing. I see Vinny at this hotel. I see him in the morning, and he's like, like I was like, well, hey, how is it? And he's like, do you need the money? And I'm like, no. And he's like, well, fucking come here, man. He's like, come. On. He's like, don't, don't. He could like, dude, they they were like living in they were living in uh, they were they were, they were living they were living in like. Uh, you know, bunkers, uh, pregame skates were like practices. Pre- and it's funny because like the Russians come here and they're the best. I mean, you get ever get to play the Russians, it's the best because they're just, they, you know, most of them. It's so easy compared to yeah. where they came from. And, and, but when they go back, it's like they don't care. It's just that's what, that's what they do. Like it's like, you know, like and, and so anyway, we're seeing that, got to meet other guys. And at that point, I got on, you know, we flew on one of the planes and, uh, you know, thing dropped about. I don't, it was just, it, you know, it was just, what happened was, was I already started skating back home. I'd already started playing for the Aces. I'd already been with the guys, and I'm like, you know what, I, I, I man, I really want to do, you know. So I go back. I didn't want to take a guy's spot, and they said they were like, hey, we're gonna keep a spot open because rumor got it, like, hey, Scott might want to play. And yeah, I ended up finally. Was signing. it hard to break it to Iggy to say, hey, man, this is just not for me? Uh, you, you, I feel like you kind of. I was more worried about. Uh, I was more worried about not getting invited to the retirement party that was going to happen <laughs> later on. So I was, I was like Iggy, like Iggy, like I probably still want in for that. Yeah, party, I'm like Iggy, listen, man, you know my family needs me. Like this is an opportunity for me to give back to the town. Iggy's awesome. He didn't. Iggy, he, he, wait, the friend, he don't. There was nothing like that. Iggy understood. He was like, yeah, he's like, Iggy, I want, I want to stay home. I want to play at home. So now, now I play in the coast, and um, you know uh, Ryan Bast, famous legend, the beast, one of my closest friends. So. My first game, or my first practice, whatever, I'm in front of the net, and this guy is just cross-checking me, like giving it to me. He's one of those Canadian hockey players, only knows one speed, you know, like, it's a, and he's giving it to me, and I'm kind of like, is, you know, they didn't get the uh, memo, like, like, don't touch me, like, like, uh, like I, get this, I get this enough, I get this enough in the Devils, I thought this was going to be like, so, so finally, we're in front of the net, and he, you know, or we're going to the boards, and I'm waiting for him, and we used to joke, call it the G-Love special, the other one, I just waited for him, and I just, bang give it to him and i'm now i'm thinking that the whole rink just kind of stops because he's an animal like they're probably thinking oh my god beast is gonna you know and i'm even kind of thinking like shit shit, like well i got it you know i had it and and he looked at me he's like yep like it like that like the intensity like it i was like (laughs) oh fuck this is gonna be good so now we play the first game is we play three and three and it's uh it's san diego play the first game and i think i got like a point i'm like man this this may be a little harder than i thought because it's just it's it's just kind of scrambling. It's scrambling. So the first East Coast game now, um, I'm on the bench. The game's about to start, and Mike Lee is a massive fighter, and Lee's he just you he know a wrench one of my, on my oh list. yeah it's, it's a bat, and uh, he you know one of my closest friends. Uh, but the game's about to start, and the benches are separated with this plexiglass, and Lee just stands up and starts. Hitting the plexiglass like, who wants some of this motherfucker? He's going. And I'm, this is my first East Coast game, and I'm like, Mike, no, Mike, stop it! Like, Mike, what the fuck are you doing? And then everyone on the bench is like, everyone on the bench is like, no, nah, just, he just does that every game. Like, like you know, <laughs> so, so we play the second night, and whatever, now we have a third game. And I remember the head coach told me, he said, I'm going to make you play um, all three games. You're like, no, 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 no. no. I'm just like, and, and, you know, I didn't want. Is the last guy? I didn't want anyone thinking that you know. Being a uh, now, or something. now back. I look at. I should have said no. I'm gonna play two. You know, whatever. So I was like, yeah, of course. The next game's at like noon. It's a noon game. Uh, there's a hall. It's Halloween. Whatever. Uh, there's a Halloween party. I don't leave till like you know. Anyway, I'm thinking, get through the game. Get through the weekend. I'm like, all right. It was a big deal. You know, get through it. But now the flight's at seven in the morning. We fly to Seattle. Seattle to L. A. Then we wait for the bus for about two hours. We get on the bus. We go to Bakersfield. Oh my! We play God. the next night, right? And this and then Bakersfield had a tough team. Like there, you know, we play the next night. Then we get back on the bus, go to San Diego, go back to San Diego, play there the next night, and then get on the bus and go to Fresno. 
That's the only moment where I was like, what "Oh my doing? god, I can't back do this. to Russia!" I can, yeah, yeah, back to <laughs> Russia. <laughs> Igor, so Igor, yeah. I got, so, I made a mistake. So now we okay. So now we're not talking. Now we get on the flights, and I always notice the, the All Star Jack, Jack Michaels. He's the radio. He's the TV guy for the Edmonton Oilers, but he's there, and I always notice he's in first class, and the coach, whatever, which is fine. But I'm like, "How the fuck is this guy always in first class? Why are we leaving so early?" And then later on, I became good friends with him because. Every flight we took was like the worst flights ever because that's the flight Cheaper. he. No, that's the flight he and the coach would get first class. First class. <laughs> 100%. So that's so, so fucking slimy. Yeah. So that yeah, is so, so slimy. Jack. We didn't, so, good guy. I had him in everything. The best, the best. So now we get on the plane and now my seat's in the middle. And I'm like, oh, God damn. Like, and I'm trying to be like, not act like a diva, but I'm like, oh my God, that middle seat. And there's a guy right there, or Lizzy, I think, right there. And I was like, hey. I'll give you 50 bucks if you uh, switch seats. And he's, I mean, <laughs> jumps out of the seat, gets in. Joe Talbert, great kid, comes up to me and goes, Gomer, you're in the coast. I was like, yeah. And he goes, you would have done it for five bucks. And I was like, <laughs> okay, yeah. But, but you talk about, you talk about like, because when we grew up, UAA, it was, it was, they were great. They had a great hockey team. And that's why a lot of, most of us were great hockey players because of that era. That, I mean, they always lost to Lake Superior in the quarterfinals. That just shows you how far they got. I mean, they, um, but, the town used to rock. I mean, it was scalping tickets. There was 6,000. Did it you was that there? crazy? Crazy. There? Crazy. I missed the trip yeah, up so you there. Missed, okay, so yeah. So by then it was, but I mean, we're talking, you're scalping a ticket. Like you are like, I mean, it was, you know, it was the Friday Hottest ticket in town. Oh, for, in like Minnesota, Wisconsin, any of the big teams, St. Cloud were coming in. We're talking Monday through whatever. I mean, it was, it was happening. So it's been a while, but the Aces, you know, Alaska loves winners. So the Aces started winning. So now they take over. And now there's booze there. UA is struggling, but now our team comes into effect, and You're I mean, there. It, was, it was rock and roll, guys. Like I mean, That's it was sick. So now I've been with the Devils the whole time, and this is the first time I don't have rules. Oh my and god! I'm just not even kidding you. You're not even in the A. I'm not yeah, and and I mean, you cannot put six Alaskans on a team plus the other guys. I mean, I never partied that hard. Like literally, like the the the, the shenanigans that went on. Like it was. It was incredible to think back. And here's the worst part. Um, when the league, we were, we were in Peoria, I remember, because Gretzky and Lemieux got involved. Like, the league's going to happen. They're saying it's going to happen. So my, my business guy drives out to, from Chicago, probably take a flight back from Chicago. And I'm probably one of the only guys that I'm like, oh, shit, man. I, I, I don't want this to well, start. No, no, not even that. I'm 225. <laughs> I'm 200 and fucking 25 pounds. I'm in the shower one time and this guy looks, and not that I was ever some specimen, let's get that straight, but I'm in the shower one time and this guy looks at me and he just starts laughing. He's like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, this is what, it, and so the more I started looking at myself in the mirror, I'm like, oh my God. Like, cause I didn't have, and I'm like, I would have been in shit in trouble. I'm like, 100%, oh, dude, no cap, yeah. no cap, lead no. the charge. A We're not the, playing that. Here's a Springsteen ticket. Yeah, your ass yeah I mean, cause yeah. that's like, uh, remember to Chuck and some of those guys got oh, suspended yeah. for oh, not, yeah. I mean, I would have definitely been on that list, but, uh, but um, one of the defining moments was, I mean, okay, so we're in Boise, Idaho, and I played with uh, a kid, uh, Daryl Hay, and we go out. Boise, what a sleeper. What a good oh, talent. I played yeah, the All-Star yeah, yeah, game yeah. there. Not a big deal. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you in probably, the, yeah. In, the, in the coast. Yeah. I actually, I think I think that Daryl Hay was playing maybe even for the Boise yeah, team yeah. When, the, yeah, that, when that all went down. Yeah. So we go out and, uh, and um, we have a curfew. And I'm like, a curfew? What's that? Like, and so I don't, you know, a bunch of us don't make it in a curfew. And... I, uh, Keith McCambridge, one of the best leaders I've played with, you know, this is in the coast. He's the captain of the team. He comes up to me and he's like, and I have so much respect for this guy. He's like, and he's like, Hey, uh, Gomer, um, painter wants to see you in the room. And now I'm like, shit, man, someone die. Like we're going to go in there. My parents dead or what's going on? So I go in the room and the coach is just there with the stick and he's just like, so I'm walking in now. I'm like, shit, what happened? You know, Hey, you, and he's like, he's like, what time did, um, what time did you get home last night? I'm like thinking in my head, are you fucking kidding? Me? I'm gonna deal with this, hey, dude. I got 80 points. Well, and this is well, this is in the, this is in the beginning. And he says, um, I go, uh, what time is curfew? And he's like, curfew was at 12. And I was like, or whatever it was that night. And I was like, yeah, I got home at like 12:05. And he goes, nope. No, 12:07. Nope. 
The twelve oh nine. I just kept going by two. <laughs> it's like it's like that. Uh, what's that? Uh, uh, Goodwill Hunting. What he's counting the fucking seconds. I, I got one more because I'm like, dude, I'm not dealing with. I had to deal with Lou enough. Like, fuck this. So I'm like, I think we get down to like twelve thirty one or whatever. Like, <laughs> she's like, I made my last call at one thirty in the morning. One more two, whatever it was. And I'm like, why? And he's like, and he goes, what would happen if you were with the Devils and Lou Lamarillo? And I was like, well, let me first tell you, uh, the rule was with the Devils was if you're going to miss curfew, you miss curfew. That is passed down to you by the older guys. Like, hey, yeah. kid, show up to pregame skate. We're in hey, if you're going to get a penalty, show up the pregame skate. Not even that. Play it's a road like, game, play, show up the pregame skate. It's not even that. It's more like, you know, I remember because Vancouver, I got the green light finally. And Chris Terrier and a couple guys were like, hey, you can go out. You can miss it. We don't have a game the next day, but we had practice. And he's like, yeah. And he goes, all of them are like, do not be a fucking idiot. That comes home. Curfew's at 11. Do not come home at like 11, 30, 12. And I'm like, what time do I come home? They're like, 1.30 on the safe side, too. Like, because that's a Lou. I mean, you know, yeah, he'll be up by then. Yeah, but yeah, probably. So Upstairs, I mean. So then I, I said to him, I go, well, I give him that story. I'm like, well, this is how it works. And I'm like, hey, listen, have I not, you know, have I not been working hard? I mean, you don't have a problem with me. I'm like, the team's drinking for free now. Like, every, like, like, like what the fuck, man? What's You're the, handing out the per diem packs. Yeah, like, what's the issue here? Like, come on. Like, what, yeah. you know, he was just mad because I think other guys went. So now he's like, well, you're not paying their fine. I was like, whatever. So then this, this kid walks in. I don't really want to get the name, but he still, he still had a couple, you know. And he walks in, and the coach yells at him, what time did you get home? And he goes, man, I'm not even going to lie to you. He's like, I took home the hottest girl <laughs> last night. It's my duty to please the booty. It's my duty to please the booty. <laughs> and I'm, through the coach, and I'm sitting there like, like, does that work? And he's like, get the fuck out of here. Like, you're paying the fine. He's like, all right. And he just leaves. And I'm like, is that happening in the coast? What the fuck? Like, I'm getting yelled at? Yeah. It's my duty to please the booty. <laughs> you know. Ironically enough, the next year when the NHL got back in, you had the best year of your career. Yeah, well, I mean – it, that line, I mean, we just, you know, when you know how it is, you get in a groove. That's when me, Patty, and, uh, and what happened was is that I never got off to a good start. That's why, like, that first year when I made the awesome thing, I, I was one of those guys. And then we had so many new coaches, and it always took the new coach, like, you know, to get my personality. Like, just because I didn't fucking sit here and crunch a stick before a game, I mean, I couldn't, like, yeah. But, Doesn't hey, mean I'm not ready. We get on the ice, I'm, you know, so it always took that half a year. And I remember it was because it was my second time going to arbitration. And I'm like, fuck, dude, the way the numbers are going, like, I'm going to be signing for two. Like, I might just have to take whatever and lose. And Bernsey, you know, that guy was the hardest guy ever on me. He's scared. Like, and for some odd reason, he tried me, Geo. And Patty, it didn't the egg work. Line. It didn't work. He put us back together, and at that point, Patty, me and Patty, got so much shit. Like we we'd be because we'd be benched. Let's say because once the score got two, once we scored two goals, guys like us were like, "Fuck!" Like here we go, Matt and them are gonna play. But I mean, we'd literally be in a game hoping that the other team would be up by two because then we got to play. So that's but how like, you get ice time. And then, but Burnsy would be the guy that he's such a prick. He's the best. Burnsy would be the guy that like, because, you know, me and Patty be on the bench pissed. And then afterwards in front of everyone, he'd be like, those two fucking selfish guys. See that? They're not there for their teammates. We're like, we didn't even play, man. What the, like, you know, <laughs> that was just Burnsy. And then finally it got to the point where, you know, Burnsy puts it together, shit happens. And now I'm coming back to the bench and I'm like, fuck you. Give me back on the ice. He's like, ooh. Little prick's got a little spunk today. I like it. Like, he just knew how to fucking, get, you know. He get, wanted to fire. He, yeah, he wanted, but he, but he also didn't need it. But that's when, yeah, I finished the year. And it went from arbitration going to two. Like, back in the fives. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. here we go, baby. Like, like, so, no, that was, it, that was a fun year. I mean, it was, it was great. We ended up, uh, you know, not going as far. But, uh, yeah, the East Coast, it was, uh, it, was something, it was something else. It must so, have been special playing back home in front of everyone and, and, and just. I'm glad I did it. I look back and just not only that, for the town, for, I mean, I met some great friends still this day. That are, and, and, yeah, it was, um, it was, we just had a character team. Like, we, no one understands what it's like to go on a road trip. I mean, you would, but like, we're in Vegas for seven days. Oh my like, god! Like, are you kidding me? With, I mean, it's just like and you had it, money. It was yeah, but I mean, and no one else does though. Yeah, so it's exactly. like, that's even more <laughs> like it's like yeah, it's yeah. like hey, you know. But I mean, but it was but, you know that was the number one goal. Hey man, I, I'm you guys say whatever you want, but when you all leave here, Gomer did his part. Like I wasn't cheap, but but I mean, we're in Vegas for seven fucking days. Like I mean, it was just incredible. I mean, just just some of the 
the the stories and the you know I mean you really do find out that guys love the game. I mean they don't yeah. want it to end. I mean it's just this is what they play. I mean this is, but it was it was a special time for the town. It ended it ended crazy. Um, so what happened was we played Bakersfield and it was a tough team. It was it was weird. We play them and I don't know for some reason I was kind of like this team's good enough. Like our team can win. Like I don't really like. You know, I don't kind of – either way, it's a, if we win it or go further, I'm going to get too much credit. I didn't kind of want – not that I wanted to bail out, but I was also starting to get like, man, this is a lot. Like, good playoffs. And we play Bakersfield and Anchorage, and we fly back with the team, with Bakersfield. Like, there's like two different planes. And so I'm sitting next to the guy that's going to hit me from behind. And we yeah. talked the whole time. So then the next day at the game – Right at the door, the door opens, and I'm standing. It's their visiting team. And I'm just standing there like, I don't know where the puck's at. And, dude, Buddy rocks me. The same guy. The same guy that I fucking was on the plane with the whole time rocks me. I hit the gate. I hit the latch. And, you know, we maybe it comes into effect with uh, – you know, my acting chops, but you know, you know how it is. You got to play it off. You like, play oh, it. like I'm dying. I'm dying. Like, so anyway, I'm thinking, fuck man. This is so I'm, I'm played it up so much that it's like, I hope there's something wrong with me. Cause this is going to be like, you know, like anyway, we go get x-rays. I'm on a thing. And my pubis is cracked and it's probably like not even the size of that. And I'm like, shit, like, can I still play? And the doctor's like, yeah, of course, you know, whatever. I turn around and the re- the reporter is right there in the fucking, in the fucking room. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck are you doing here? He's like, nothing, just writing shit. Like, so then, weirdest thing, man. About five minutes later, the coach comes in and I'm, you know, I'm acting like I'm dying. And the coach comes in, hands me the phone, and I'm like, I think it's my parent or whatever. And it's Scotty, you okay? Oh my! And this is God. like, so this has got to be like three in the morning, East Coast time, whatever. And he's like, I'm like, yeah. And he's like, "What happened?" And I just was like, "No." I said, "Lou, if if this was uh, if this was playoffs, you know, I'd be playing next game." He's like, "Okay, you're done. You're done there." And I'm like, "Can you uh, can you make that official?" He's like, "It is." And I was like, "Okay, thanks." Thank you. So then, the Godfather. So then, calls the, yeah. So now now the boys now the the kid can't fly back to Alaska because the town threats all to the. You know, it was a big deal. Whatever. But the worst part was is like, I got you know I don't know why they get I I got the MVP award, but I had to walk out and receive it. And I'm walking, and like the boys are like, Gomer, you're limping on the wrong. F- oh. You're limping on the wrong. I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, Gomer, it's the right side. You've been doing. It. I was like, really? No, no. And then, and then it's like one of those things. Like I got to get on the ice to think of who it is. And like, no, we're just fucking with you. I'm like, which limp is it? Is it the right or the left? Like, yeah. So it was a great group of guys, and uh, yeah, they won. Actually, went out won it the next year. So it was. It was yeah, my was buddy awesome. uh, Justin Myers was on the team. They won it. One of my best buddies, but. It's, so, you know, we've gone over this amazing career that you began in, in New Jersey, and then the summer of 07 comes. It's finally your turn to be UFA. You've had every single year, you know, you're 60-point, 70-point, 80-point guy. Take me through the UFA to sign in with the Rangers, with Drury, and how all that went down. Because I remember seeing that you both went to there, and we were in the same division. I'm like, what? They got both of them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I kind of... Did you want to stay in No, Jersey? I kind of was... I was, you know, I got fortunate to play in the Olympics and the World Cup and I got to see kind of like how know, different it can be different it can be and I was just hey like it, it, we just won so much that it was I think it was getting taken for granted like excuse me it wasn't it, it just wasn't being fun whatever I, and maybe I wanted a new, a new yeah something new I hate like not many guys leave there and the the year I had and, and people don't forget it's, it's usually the it's the playoffs that I had that's where I kind of got paid like it was more like play like and what happened was that well, the, were doing both, the right? number the number just went up, so people forget that. And, I, and Lou was like, he offered in Christmas time because we said I was in arbitration with him again, and we said, thank God they they moved the arbitration because it used to be like an hour and a half in the room just hearing how bad a player you are. Yeah, and they, they just go, carve you but, apart. But it's like, but it's a business. Like I never understood that guys that like guys took get that, that mad. Yeah, about like it. I'm like it's like what are they supposed to say? But you're in there. But I mean, it's it's an hour forty five, and um, the uh, Lou and all his lawyers are there. And they're just bashing you, and then the PA gives you a lawyer, and you know, so you don't know. All right, here we go, and this guy's all pumped up. It's straight from my cousin Vinny. It's like a public. When that guy, when the guy starts talking, he's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." I'm, oh, well, Scott's numbers are. Wait, hold on. And I'm just like, I'm looking like I'm looking at the fucking guy, and I'm looking at Lou and them, and Lou's just like got a smirk on his face, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" So now he I picked them. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah. Them. So, so now I'm, you know, I'm. So now that happens. 
But if you go to arbitration against Lou, usually you'd be shipped out. Because if you look at all the guys that did it, I, I stayed so we go the next time. And this time they cut it shorter for like a half an hour or whatever. And before we went in there, said, Lou, I'll give up a year of free agency. You know, I want five, five, six, whatever. And I'll give you up one year just to put in. He was like, no, no, no. So, hey, it's like, no, all fine. We go in there. And he knew there was going to be a lockout, whatever. We go in there. And afterwards, he's like, yeah, no, I hate doing that, that kind of stuff, Scott. I'm like, yeah, whatever. And he's like, we're in the bathroom taking a piss. He's like, how are you getting home? And I'm like, shit, my flight's tomorrow. I was like, well, it's tomorrow. Customs and all that, even Toronto. And he's like, I got the plane if you want to go right now. And I'm like, ooh, I could be in the city by, by 11. Yeah, so I, Big night. I flew home with, yeah, I was like, call Pando. I'm like, hey, yeah, I'm getting a Tito Bro. I'll, I'll meet you in there, whatever. But yeah, that just shows you the business part of it. Like, I flew home with Lou yeah, after that. After, no hard feelings. Yeah, no hard feelings. Yeah. So he taught us the business part. So now when the free agency was coming, it was between Montreal, Philly, LA, and, um, and New York. And it was between like Bur- uh, Breer, Drury, and me. And it was like, who's going to sign it was first? three, I remember. Yeah, and they... so it came down to like L.A., Montreal, and uh, you know those teams. And for some odd reason, man, I just you know I loved playing in the Garden. I wanted I wanted to see. I wanted to play in the too. city. I just it was it was everything about it. Like they were, and I thought they were they were up and coming. You know, they had a good year the year before. And yeah, I mean they. You know, you meet with people and just it's a little different, man. The way they, uh, the way they recruit, you know, the way they it's just the way they want. I mean, it was it was something. That, hey, they I want to try this. I want to try this. I want to, you know, and it's it's it it is business. I mean, and you know, I signed, and then they were asking about Drew, and I'm like, yeah. And then here's the thing, though, and the only regret I do have is that because uh, you know I was uh, they already had 23. But I was so like, I want to, you know, I want to get away from Lou. I want to show Lou because Lou gave me that number. I want to show that I could, you know. So Drew was talking about it. And he, he wanted 23 because of Don Manley. And and we're talking about it on the phone. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, what other number would you want? And I'm like, well, number 11. He's like, why didn't you, why can't you be number 11? And I'm like, dumb fuck. Do you know where we just signed? <laughs> like, like, do you know who number 11 it's was? Yeah, yeah, message, yeah, I mean, yeah. So no, so that, and then, yeah, we didn't flip or anything. I was like, Drew, you take 23. I'll take 19 because, you know whatever so but uh yeah it was you know it was it was crazy i mean you don't realize it until things are starting to happen and i remember going up to jimmy dowd and i'm like um hey man i haven't been the new kid in school for a while like what uh you know what's that like again and he's laughing he goes hey the cool people find the cool people and i'm like fuck off jimmy like what does that mean he's like all right he's like who do you hang out with and he starts naming guys on the, on the team. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, do you hang out with those guys? I was like, no. Goes, well, are those guys cool? I'm like, yeah. He goes, are they cool? And I'm like, no. It's like, cool people find cool people, man. It's just the way it's going to work. Yeah, so, so yeah, but going in there, it was, uh, it was a great experience. I mean, what an organization. I mean, the way they take care of it. I mean, it was, it was incredible. I mean, it was almost maybe too much country club, but it was, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was, you played Madison Square Garden every night. It was, it was pretty cool. How- and it pissed off a lot of, pissed off, I mean, a lot of people and, you know, people are going over it, but. The thing that I didn't understand was, uh, you know, some guys were that I grew up with, with the Devils. I mean, they took it personally. Like, really? Yeah, and that was shocked me. And you know, a couple wow. guys, yeah, and that shocked me the most because I'm like, like you, hold yeah, on. yeah, this is yeah. business, man. This is money. Yeah, like, like, hey, I'm going to fucking yeah, play like, well, you, you know what I mean? Like, I'll send you the arbitration tape. You know, you can listen to what they thought. Yeah, of being I mean, there. it's just like, what, like you know, <laughs> like anywhere but there. It's like this is business. Like, what, what you know, come on. Like, and, and there was other guys that didn't care, but uh, that was the most shocking. Was, who was, who the, was the most mad? Other than Lou, was Lou mad? I don't know. Did you have to call Lou and say sorry? I'm I think I'd say sorry. I could call Lou and I said, "Hey, I'm signing yeah. with you know." I just I had to call a couple of people. Um, I think. Well, I was just out with Whitey about a month ago, whatever, in Jersey, and yeah, he was like, "Yeah, you know, I was, oh, I was pissed at you. I was so mad at you." And I'm like, "Why?" And he goes, "I don't know. I just, well, you know, I just felt you let us down." And I think <laughs> you left uh, the cult, the rival. Yeah, it yeah, the I mean, rivalry. And it, 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 but. Uh, um, I think I'm sure Marty, a couple guys, they were they were they were upset. I mean, but you know the other guys were hey they were happy. I mean you're happy for guys that hey this is what it's about. You get you know you're supposed to go for your ticket, man. Listen, were so, you what was? Oh sorry. sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say, were you happy with the way you performed in New York? Because you know I don't know if the trade took you by surprise, but based on numbers, it looked all right. Yeah, no. Even in your first year in Montreal, they you know yeah. they went down a little bit, but we're, it's it's a thing that I get to New York and right away I'm like. Oh shit! Like you know, you know it, it, anyone that says you don't uh, you sign a contract like that, it's not gonna you know get in your mind. You're like, oh okay, you know, you They're feel lying. a little pressure, man. Seven yeah, sheets, man. Like, <laughs> so, you know, Jared and that, Cole and right that, now and the, the Yankees, dude. You're feeling it. And the worst part was was that you know, 
I got my money up front. Like I want it up front because you never know what's gonna happen. So we're in the we're in the uh, PA meeting, and you know they show the guys, you know, and my numbers at ten, and I'm the highest paid guy that year. Or for, and I just remember like, oh please take that down, please take that. Like <laughs> yeah. I'm seeing like sacking those guys. I'm like, oh come on. Like and I remember Chelio just turns to me, and Chelly turns to me, and God, I was like. Fuck yeah, Gomer. Fuck yeah. And I'm, like, I'm like, no, get that down. I'm like, get that. I'm like, get that down. So then, so what happens? And yeah, I'm a little nervous because I, you know, I, what are they expecting? What, are, what, what, you know, are they expecting me to score 50 goals now? And like, and I didn't score for like three or four games and pressure whatever. And I, Bobby Holy, uh, talked to him because he did the same thing with the Rangers. And Bobby's line was the best. Was he said, if you guys. If you guys are signing me to be the first line center, we do not win the Stanley Cup. But if I'm second or third, we win the Stanley. We have, you know, like and so. But Bobby made it always a point. He's like, don't forget, you're not going to change as a player. People are going to have a hard time with that. They're going to think because you signed this money now, you're just going to be a completely different player. He's like, no, you're not. He's like, you just keep your games, and that helped a lot. And yeah, I mean, I was an All Star that year. I uh, I had the same numbers. We did good in the playoffs, and then same thing. I had people forget that because of that one year in Montreal. I know. Like, it's just funny. It's like, and I'm not going to be the guy that's like, "Well, hey, look at them." No, it's the same. I had the, basically the same numbers. It was the same. We had, a, you know, we came short. That's your. You guys beat us. Yeah. Uh, you guys beat Second us. Second round. Uh, yeah. And uh, but no, I look back. I never, you know, I I never uh, take it back. I mean, it was it was something that, you know, it was. I got to play for the garden or in the garden. It was what, great. What was Jagger like? Yeah, actually, you know, because like, you're playing with a guy who was not the style of player you'd played with in Jersey, right? It's yeah. just like so different for you, I'm so, guessing. Yeah, right away comes in, and here's the only thing where Yags came into camp like 240. I don't know what he weighed, but he was out of shape. Like it was out, and you know, I being there, I wasn't used to that. Like the top dog, you know, Scotty, all the boys. So anyway, it, it took Yags like I don't know half a year. To get, and then once that happened, he you saw the Army Yager. Like, we played together, and actually we played again in Jersey. But the thing about me and him playing together, it was more just keep away. We're like, and it's like, hey, man, you can do that. I can only keep it away for so long. Yeah. And then I got, I mean, you're you're a beast out there. Like, so we, we didn't really click. I mean, on, on the PowerPoint stuff, that was fine. But, uh, you know, my, my game... It was like with Patty and, and Elias, anyone that I got to know where you're going to throw it. Give and goes. Uh, give like, and goes. Like if you're in trouble, I know you're going to throw it there where Yager can hold on to the puck for, he can hold on to the puck for four minutes and you don't know where to go. Like, yeah. am I, am I, so, but uh, yeah, we, 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 we came together. I mean, it was a, uh, it was a good run. I mean, he's uh, you know, a little different. He was different spiritual. And I in mean, practice, he'd just go like on yeah, his own, right? He would go, he wouldn't, his intensity wasn't that great in practice. And then, you know, but then at the end he would he would stay after for like an hour and work on that. Just for, do it then. But but then like guys like me, it's like, dude, like what the fuck? Like yeah, you can't. You know, you're you're gonna work hard with us, but you're gonna. But you know, yeah, he was a nice guy, great. I mean, you know, he, he was, he's a little different. I mean, just with the you know what he believes is spiritual stuff and yeah, and I mean yeah, but uh, I mean yeah, I mean look at the guy still playing hockey. I mean I that's I I know I wouldn't want to be. No, I mean, it's just, uh, he just so, loves it. How, um, oh, go ahead. All right. How, how fight up were you when your agent called and said, all right, yep, we got 70 years, 51, five from the Rangers. How many backflips? Oh. We were, uh, we were, we were based in Chicago. So I flew out and the worst part was, it was my high school 10 year reunion. So I was hoping the contract would come out before it, but anyway, no. So I had to leave the reunion. <laughs> Hook up with that girl. You no, 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 no. <laughs> no, but I had to, no, no, but it was just. Get so the prom I, queen. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was junior prom king. But, uh, fuck the prom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wasn't there in my senior year, but uh, no. Uh, <laughs> oh, what at the year early. So, uh, no, so we're based out of Chicago and people, the numbers were all the same. Okay. It was all the same. It was the same from the, the LA. It actually probably took less from, or it was all the same. It was every, it was all lined up like that. So then. Like I said, it basically at the end came down to L.A. and uh, L.A. and uh, New York, and then I talked to Luke Robitaille, and you know I just, I, yeah, I I went with it, and then it wasn't uh, it wasn't the money because I, you know, I wasn't born with it, wasn't raised with it. Only thing I do remember is one time I was with the trainer and we were watching uh, Montreal play whoever, and Kovalev was on on the ice. I don't know if it was Pittsburgh or Montreal, and. And they announced, you know, on TV they announced Kovalev's salary. He was making eight million or something like that. And I remember going to the trainer. I'm like, "Fuck, man, imagine that." And he looked at me. He's like, "You know, you're going to be making that." And I was like, "Like, I didn't, you know, I didn't." It, so it wasn't like the That's money. That's how you thing. were, dude. It was, you yeah, were... It, it wasn't like the money thing. It was just like, oh, wow. And then, you know, you sat back and you looked, and then, 
and then uh, and then you start thinking, shit, maybe did I do the right thing? Like I'm signing with the ring, but you know, there's no looking back. It was uh, this is what it is. Hey, let's 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 go for it. And we um, we just talked to Georgia Rock, and he he ended up signing there as a free agent. And he said it was about a month after he signed that he regretted it. When you moved over there, did you? Did you feel the same as you did maybe in New Jersey or New York, or did you have the feel the an, an, an exponential weight of the world on your shoulders, given you were in Montreal all of a sudden? Oh, when I got traded to Montreal. Yeah. Oh, okay. So no. So what happens is is that yeah, in the did you summer, have an, no move clause. No, no. Yeah, I had uh, I had like seven, eight teams, and the thing was okay. was. You know, I'll call whatever team don't want you. Fuck off! I'll yeah, see you exactly. later. Like, I'm not yeah. gonna sit here. What, what, I, I mean, don't want to be here. Yeah, what are, yeah, you don't want me here. I don't want. To, so I'm in the summer, and uh, and Mary Alexander McGillney always said he goes, "You're gonna get traded once, and you, you know your career." And he goes, "Just hope it's in the summer." So anyway, I'm sitting there, and I, I'm I get a call. It's in the morning, and it's Steve Valaket, one of my best friends, and he's like, "Fuck, can't believe this is ending." I'm like, "What are you talking about?" And he's like. Oh shit, man! You don't know, and I'm like, oh. I'm like, no, what? And he goes, "Fuck, Omar, I think you got traded." And I'm like, "Really?" And I'm like, "Where?" To Montreal, you know, whatever. And so I get traded to, to Montreal, and I'm like, you know, it's like, Shocking, okay, I'm going to Montreal, man. but I'm like, man, I'm gonna miss like living in the city, being every, the, the 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 group. Every, you know, you're gonna, I'm gonna miss that. Hey, they don't want your team. That's fine. And um, yeah, I remember. And then you got to get the fake calls. From the like, like I get you know, Slash saying he was great to me, but I get a call from him and he's basically like, um, he goes, um, you know, like there's nothing to say. Just yeah. I don't need to say hey, we're not going to be buddies anymore or whatever. Just and then you know I get a I get a call from uh, from Torts and he's like, you know, it gives me the ultimate like, you know, I'm going to be watching. I'm going to be watching you and just make sure you know to see how you're doing. I'm like, why, why, why do you guys got to say that? Like, yeah, no, you're not. Like, yeah, you, you're really going to watch me. Like, yeah, your team's here. Hey, Gomer, uh, that shift you should have like, like it's like the number one thing when like just no, man, he's yelling at you for not blocking yeah, a shot yeah, from yeah, Montreal. Right? Like, text, like, yeah, text so, all caps. Yeah, yeah so and torts. So then, so guys start calling, and, and that's another thing. You find out. You really find out, and you tell like you find out like who not it's your buddy, not whatever, but you find out who calls. And it's always an important thing to like, whether you like the guy or not, you make a call. Hey, sorry to hear what happened. Sorry, because because there's nothing worse when you see them later on. They're like, hey, I, I was meaning to call you. I was so upset. Like, shut the fuck no, up. No, yeah, no, like, no, dude, no. I, you know, save it, save it. So now right away, I'm in Montreal. I was actually going fishing that weekend. And uh, we're driving out and phone's kind of spotty. And then, you know, get the Montreal media. And now that's and it so happened. I was going to my business manager's bachelor party in Montreal a week later with like a hall of fame group like like a hall of fame group like that and so now i'm like, i'm gonna get now right. yeah. now i'm a hab though and we all love montreal we all love this but it takes it about a thousand times up when you're a hab oh yeah so this bachelor party went from to it's like crazy it, it was crazy like it was like it was it was absolute nuts and you know the only thing um the only thing was was that there was a bunch of new guys on the team so it was me, Gio, uh, Brian Gianta, Mike Camilleri, Yoros Batchek, um, from Miss Hal Gill. Uh, so it was kind of we're all in this together. We're new. And you find out right away in Montreal, like, first of all, the fans have a say. And I come from places where they don't have a say. That's just, this is our, like, you know, when, they, when I still like don't. Like Lou gives a fuck I about I still the think f- that they shouldn't. Have, I mean, yeah, they have a say, everything you want, but it should not have anything to do with what happens in decisions. Yeah. So Max LaPerriere and Mike Camilleri are going to fight in the room. This is like one of our first, uh, our first, um, you know, practices, whatever. Because they're just, heated? They just rubbed each other the wrong way. But it's one of those, like, you know, they're just face to face. Like, no, there ain't going to be a swing. And, and you know, great guy, Lappy and, and Cam, great friends. But it was just funny. They're like, it's like, you're almost like someone throw a punch. Like, do someone do something. Like, <laughs> this is just too, too good. But they're going, going at it. Just then the PR guy comes in and he he's going to the door across the locker room and we're like yo where are you going he's like we gotta let the media in oh my you can't, god you can't let the media wait they, they, they get they you know their timing they get uh you can't let them wait and spot check and me were like yo whoa that's not happening like like uh you know that's not happening like hey this is in-house and he's like so that just that was a wake-up call in montreal like wow like our guy's more worried about if the media is going to wait because there's going to be a fight in the room. I mean, yeah, they're going to see that. Like, they were just, you know, scared of that. But I'll give you a – you guys can edit this. My first Ranger road trip. No one knows this. 
So, it was Stahl's rookie year. So, I don't know if it's my first year in New York or second. I think it's my first. So, yeah. So, we go to Tampa. We're, we're 6-0. and And we're at a – we go out. We all go out, go to this one club, whatever. And I'm with, uh, I'm with my boy, Brandon Dubinsky, and I'm sitting with him the whole time teaching him how to be a pro. This and that. Like, hey, man, you just, you know. And I'm also in shock that it's the first time I'm on the road where I'm not wearing a suit. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm in actual clothes. And that was, like, a big, like, wow. Like, human. Yeah, like, so, so anyway, we um, tell him, do we, or, we're, like, the last to leave. We're walking out, and there's just commotion outside. There's commotion. And I walk out, and I'm like, what the fuck, you know. And, you know, or is he ho- there's this group of guys, and there's a bunch of muscle heads around. Something, something happened. Whatever, something, something went down. And finally, I'm coming out, and it gets calmed down. And then there's this girl in the corner that will not stop. Stop. Like, I don't know what happened. Someone, like, but she's just, she's throwing gas in the fire. Everything's calmed down. And finally, one of the boys turns to her and is like, shut the fuck up. You said something. And it just started mayhem. So It was one of the Muscleheads girls. Yeah. So now, I don't know what happens. I'm out there. And before you know it, no one knows this before, it, the girl that's yelling, she fucking smokes me. I turn around, I get full punched in the face, and I'm no. like, I see red. And I've never, you know, I've never touched a girl, never, it's number one really never would, you can't. I mean, I got fucking rocked, and I'm like, what the fuck, I can't do anything. <laughs> and just then, I think, I think maybe one of her boyfriends thought I did something, because just then, I turn, and this fucking guy just, pow, cranks me. I go down, I hit my face on the ground, and I'm wearing a suit. Or no, I actually did have my suit on because it was after a game. Yeah. And I hit the ground, and I jump right back up, but I didn't want to get my suit bloody. So I'm doing the lean over, and I'm thinking, I'm like, you didn't fucking knock me out. You didn't knock me out. And meanwhile, Stalls, he's a rookie. He's right next to me, and his face is just like... <laughs> I'm like Stalzy, let's go get the fucking cat. Like, like there's nothing. I'm like, get, cause yeah. hey, get out. There's no, it's already guys are. It's not like there's a brawl where it's, it's just like, hey, get, we we, we can't need be. This to end. We can, we need this to end right now. But I'm I'm leaking on the ground. So me and Stalzy getting the getting the cat finally. I got the suit all over me, and now I'm just like, oh my god, like what happened? So get back to the room. Guys are bringing ice now. You know how it is. Word leaks out that Gomer got. You know, I was in a fight. Beat which up are, by a girl. Yeah, well, not no. No <laughs> one saw. But that's the thing. Oh. No one saw the girl hit me. They saw the guy hit me. But I was more pissed that like, dude, this girl rocked me. Like, like she got one in. Like, you know. And uh, so now I'm in the room, and I'll never forget. I mean. Aves comes in and he's just dying laughing. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, I have ice in my but my face is mangled. So, uh, you know, I thinking about the devil's days and stuff like that. It's like. Just everyone keeping in house. No, yeah. nothing happened. And so the next day, when one of the assistant coaches comes up to me, and you know, I got the, I got the, the look. The eyes are kind of black, and, and he comes up to me and he's like, "What happened?" I'm like, oh, "I got hit with the stick yesterday." He's like, "You did? When?" I'm like, "I don't know. Second period? Third? I don't know." <laughs> like, fuck off. So I didn't say that, but I'm thinking. So he comes back again. Um, I, I I watched all video. I don't remember you getting that. Oh, yeah, Christ yeah. It happened when the video. It happened this before. It happened in the corner. You didn't see it. Yeah. Well, look at my face, and then just wouldn't drop it. We're man up and just fucking ask. And yeah. I'll tell you because you know because you, you know that you know, you I didn't know, get yeah, hit. You know you know I fucking so so what happens is is that um uh anyway I get called in the slats room and slats is like what happened and I'm like you know this is what happened. He's like who who did it who who, who started I'm like you know I ain't giving a name like. I ain't, Wrong hey, guy, dude. Hey, just whatever happened. And the coolest thing about that was Slats was like, the only thing he was mad at me about was like, hey, you know, I want to know first, like, like, and I did. I was like, yeah, you're probably right. Like, I should have let right, him know that night. just to get because that's probably would have done the same with Lou. But I just, dude, that was my first road trip, and I couldn't. After, after the yeah, big yeah, and, yeah and then you know how that goes, like. Oh, you know, hey, yeah, my person, my pre, yeah. Oh, we got one of these guys. Well, I never been in a fight. Yeah, it was just, I just walked out. I was like, oh, what, what's going on here? Like, and then you know, like, Ronda Rousey yeah, suckered me, yeah, dude. Yeah. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Fuck. So when you get traded to Macho, were you, like, were you pissed off? Were you like relieved? What was your your reaction? Um, no, just literally, man. I'm gonna miss. I'm gonna miss the whole setup I had. I'm gonna miss playing in the guard. I'm gonna miss the, you know, it's. And it also, hey, they don't want you. I was excited to go to Macho. Hey, yeah. There's only so many times you get to play it. Uh, Original six, uh, I remember saying, 
I was just in the microwave. Now I'm going to go straight to the stove or like, and it was, I mean, these people would, it was, we had a great first year. I mean, it's the Eastern Conference Finals. It was, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was different. I mean, but it was at the same time. I mean, you're playing in the Bell Center. You're playing, I mean, you don't realize it until like, Every I mean, game it's, is like it's a religion. It's a religion. And, but, and this is what saved me. And, and a lot of people don't know that was my years with the devils at the end. You know, I'm reading about myself. Love you know, and Joe Newendike, which is probably one of the greatest leaders ever. Joe Newendike, I probably brought it up last time. Joe Newendike said to me, "Hey, hey kid, don't read that." He goes, "Don't read that shit." And the way he knew he's just he's just a stud, and he's like, he's like, "Hey, one of these days you're gonna be in a spot where you know it's gonna like it ain't, for, it ain't gonna be for good. some odd reason." I just it cl- and Pat Burns, hey, I know she you know don't you know, Burns. He just kind of stuck into my head too, and for some odd reason, and I don't listen much, but. I listened to those two guys and I just kind of stopped. And that also saved me in Montreal because, I mean, I'd get in the elevator when that bad year happened. I'd, I'd get in the elevator and, uh, you know, my neighbors and stuff would just be like, yeah, like, like, like dude. dude, they're like, are you like, you okay? And I'm like, yeah, why? Like, you know, and you and, passed the puck on that two on one. But, but, okay? but I mean, but they were like, cause, <laughs> no, because what's being said about me and what's oh, being yeah. like, like what's oh. being around. I don't yeah, know. It's gross. I don't so, know. And, and then like, I, I was talking to the reporter one time and like two guys grabbed me and another guy grabbed me and they're like, Dude, why the fuck are you talking to that guy? And I'm like, why? Who is that? And they're like, that's the guy that rips you every day, has a special thing. And I'm like, don't even know who he is, man. Don't don't, care. I don't even give a fuck. Well, like, yeah. well, let me ask you, because for such a positive guy and everyone who's ever met you, the energy you give off is just like, I'm having a good time. I enjoy my life. But no matter what, it must have been hard, right? And like, I know you weren't reading the stuff, but for all the success you had, you know, it ends up being different that second year in Montreal. One, like, how did things change? And two, were there ever days that even a guy like you, you were really down? Yeah, when he oh. asked Joe to break his arm. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Off the it face got, off. It got, uh... <laughs> no, and, and for me to sit here and say, oh, You're no. I'm a dude, positive guy. Well, I'm not really. I'm an asshole all day. You guys see me yeah, socially. I, so, I know yeah. what you mean. But. Yeah, but it was more like this. I didn't, like, I didn't want people feeling sorry for me. And a lot of my friends, and they were feeling sorry. And I'm like, what are you talking? Like, you know... And the whole point was, I every day has been a Saturday since I've come in this league. Every day I go to work, it's a Saturday. Like, holy fuck, man, I know what it's like to go to work on Monday now. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. Like, And it's just for some odd reason, I cannot explain what happened. Like, guys ask, I'm like, I, you know, the game, I, I can't explain how I look back. Because I do remember always sitting there, we're playing playoffs against Philly and Ken Manderville. And, you know, we all go through the sheets. And I'm looking at his stat, and he didn't score in 100 games. And I remember saying, how, how the possible? fuck is that even? I it couldn't even, could, and I always remembered, you know, when I was there, it was like, holy fuck. Like, like, and it also, it also really, you know, I, people don't understand, like, Randy McKay, Jim McKenzie, Bobby Holik, Jay Pandolfo, Ken Danico, Turner Stevenson, they would call me, not to talk hockey, to see how I'm doing. Hey, kid, like, then just to have reinsurance, so like, like, hey, hey, like, you know, you that that went a lot, like, Mark, like, Steve Valaket, he like, was in Russia, true like, friends, true, like, like, so it really, almost became a job where, like, they were more worried about you than you were maybe, worried but, about I, but just to hear, like, just to hear me talk to them and them say, like, like, get, you know, because, yeah, I mean, and let's not face it, or let's face it, we weren't doing good as a team, yeah, other guys were having a little success, and so the pressure was. The pressure was all off everyone. Like I was, like I was the joke, which is fine. Hey, I'm a big boy. Hey, I, you know, I'm still getting paid. But it became like, I mean, I'm sitting there at the rink, and I'm looking. I mean, like, there's people, you know, dressed up in sombreros, and there's having celebrations, and, and this and that. I'm thinking, mother, I've just come to this. Yeah. Like, wow. Like, you know, it, it was literally like, and for some odd reason, it was just a a life lesson that like, I there's not one thing in this game that. Anyone I could I have it over anyone that I can ever say is that I've been here. You've experienced and I've been everything. here. And I'll tell you one thing: like when you're down here, no one. It's like the plague. No one wants to catch whatever you got. Like they just kind of. And I learned that later on. Like when I went to Florida, I didn't. I was like Costanza. I didn't. I didn't have to show. I was oh, like, should, I, should, I, should I even show up? It was this like, guy was but so but it was still like it still was like that's a slap into all those guys' face. That the older guys had taught me, like, hey, you still have responsibility. Like, when PK would get out of line, I'd have to grab him. Like, hey, like, and you know, the media was all over it. How dare, you know, how dare Scott Gomez yell at PK? Where I'm like, kid, you know, it's a great friend. I'm like, no, you're not going to do this. Like, you, you know, it's just there's a right, a right and a wrong way. But yeah, man, there was. Uh, if I would have read the media and I would have done, I would have, 
I probably would have uh, jumped off some bridge, but uh, the worst part was, and dude, I had fucking one tenth the career that you did. But I just know going through that in Edmonton. Like you said, the worst part is when guys are like, hey, you all right, man? It's like... You don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, dude, you're like... Oh, every, it makes it even worse yeah. that like, all the guys in the team are like, stick with it. You're like, fuck, man. It's just... And then the whole Jovo thing and all that was like a couple of guys. It was more of a but joke. Like they were like... But they were like, Gomer, how are you doing? I'm like... I'll fucking pay you to break my fucking arm <laughs> yeah, right now, man. Like, give me some yeah, yeah. sense of yeah, humor. Like, yeah, it was just like, what, you know, what, it, it was, but yeah, and then it, it was funny because, yeah, I mean, you just sit there and like, I mean, wow. And then you see, you know, you see guys feeding off it. You know, guys loved it. Guy, there was guys that were like, hey, and, hey, that's fine. That's fine. As long as, as long as you're a good teammate, as long as you truly know, I mean, that was the one goal that you got to have. I mean, you can't change that, that regard. And the last thing I'll say about that is just, and, and I'm sure you'd agree, is, for any player who's listening that in the NHL you're highly paid, you're not doing well, and you're kind of the butt of some jokes, how about now when it's like, I don't give a fuck. Pro- everyone listening, you will be rich and retired, and you will not care that you went through and, it. And that's the whole point. It's like, there's, there's, you know, how did you leave? How, hey, it's money. <laughs> it's money. This is a business. This is a business. Well, the first time I held the Stanley Cup, uh, Randy McKay, Bobby Holik. Okay, you got that out of the way. Now for the rest of your career, it's this money because we all think we come in this is a family or no, money dude. yeah it's it's money so that's and then you do kind of find yourself saying some lines like i remember when martin lapointe signed that huge contract five million uh five 25 yeah five. yeah i remember that and i remember i remember guys chirping him overrated the snap and lapointe would turn to the bench to say some i remember guys chirping him and i remember it was it mcgillany or mckay and they're like we're a bunch of idiots hockey players and i'm like what do you mean he's like we should all be bowing to that guy because that guy just made everyone more money. And guys like that, I learned that like right away. Like it's about that. So when you're getting chirped on the ice by certain guys, and they're chirping you, I mean, the one line you could go to is like, "Dude, I'm rich, man." Yeah. Like I, don't, I didn't want to say it, but you're like, you know, you gotta like, hopefully, I mean, you gotta come up with something. Well, that's what I say when you're yeah. retired. You yeah, look yeah, back, yeah, it's yeah. like, dude, I, what the fuck? I don't. And you won cups. It's like I didn't even win a cup. I don't yeah. care. I got made fun of for league minimum for <laughs> fucking Christ's yeah. sake. I'm, putting, yeah. I'm fucking losing it over here. <laughs> But hey, this hey, this is yeah, great. I think this we has could, been unreal. So we on. didn't cover the the back uh, or the the last one third. So I guess we got to make a trilogy. But this is gone. Yeah, we're gonna do. We're, well, we're gonna do some um, you know to video with him today. and and uh, do some <laughs> different stuff in terms of like getting this guy off the ice. So Scotty goes. That's awesome. The NHL's realized how talented you are, and to no surprise, the, the type of guy you are, you're making content now. And so I'm really happy for you, and we appreciate you coming on. Hey, just trying to follow you guys' lead. You guys yeah. set the, you guys <laughs> set the bar on the standard, and so uh, yeah, shows. Uh, Maybe we'll add a teammate. I don't know what he's going to cost us in free agency, but uh, we'll see. Here. Yeah, but it all we make up. We rich. make up for because he pays for everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Goldman. Like, hey, so where's the company card? Strip, oh, it's way. Scotty's oh, here. Yeah. Good stuff. Thank you. Huge thanks to Goma for not only coming in to join us, but he flew all the way in from Alaska to hang out with us for the weekend. Uh, he's an absolute specimen, Gomez. Every time he comes to New York, it's an adventure. But uh, last time you talked to him, I, I think we spent 45 minutes on Claude Lemieux stories alone. So it was great to get him back in for part two. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. We do want to let you know that that interview was also brought to you by our friends at Simply Safe. There's big news from our favorite home security company. Simply Safe just launched their new wireless outdoor security camera. That's right. Simply Safe, the system that U.S. News and World Report names the best home security system of 2021, just got even better. The brand new outdoor security camera is engineered with all the advanced tech and security features that you want and need to help keep you and your family safe. Like I've said before, I'm a simpleton when it comes to tools. If I can set this thing up, You can set this thing up. It's that easy. It has an ultra-wide 140-degree field of vision, so you can keep watch over your entire yard. It has 1080p HD resolution with an 8 times zoom. That means you can zoom in and clearly see things like faces and license plates to capture critical evidence. It also has a built-in spotlight with color night vision, so you can keep an eye on what's going on day and night. It's super super simple to set up, and it usually takes just a few minutes. Must be cool to see some wild animals prance around, like maybe a squirrel or two. It also has an easy-to-remove rechargeable battery, so it doesn't need an outlet and can go anywhere on your property. This camera has it all, and it integrates with your Simply Safe home security system very easily. And also, it extends its protection to the outside. Together, it means every door, window, and room are protected, and now your property will be too. 
To learn more about the exciting new Simply Safe wireless outdoor security camera, visit simplysafe.com slash chicklets. What's more, Simply Safe is celebrating this new camera by offering 20% off your entire new system in your first month of monitoring service free when you enroll in interactive monitoring. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash chicklets. Ray, if you would have had that, you would have caught the neighbor who was leaving their, his dog's deuces on your front uh, porch. Uh, I, yeah, that was a, years ago. Actually, dude, the squirrels have been kind of crazy. I don't know if you've been following my Instagram lately. The squirrels are probably listening to the podcast. Yeah, maybe. Maybe they hear me, but they've been wilding out there. I don't know if it's like mating season and shit, but like it's funny because the trees are all rustling like like Jurassic Park. I think there's a T-Rex underneath there. And then a little squirrel pops out, tra- chasing another squirrel, asking where the fucking clam chatter is. Then you, before you know it's mayhem out here, biz. Holy <laughs> shit. Speaking of good days, uh, if you're Buffalo's number one overall pick in the draft last year, Owen Powell, you're going to have some good days. He's going back to Michigan for his sophomore year. That team is Smart stacked. Man. They're better than the Sabres. Oh, stacked yeah, they'd right wax now. him. Um, so, yeah, he's no, no surprise there. I think everybody, everybody expected him to go back to uh, Michigan, so that's what he's going to do. Uh, our buddy Sid. Sidney Crosby, in case you're not sure, he's going to miss the start of the season. He had to get wrist surgery. Uh, I guess something was nagging him a little bit, and they want to see how it kind of hashed out the first few weeks of him skating, get back to the, uh, the, the what is it, the rhythm of things, I guess you'd say. And they realized that, wait a minute, this ain't going to work. So they had to get him some surgery. His wrist is going to be out for a little, uh, Damn, little bit of time. Here. A couple stars out with wrist injuries. Well, I yeah. mean, Matthews is back. I, I, you know, what Did they say what was wrong with it? Like what part of it? I don't know if they said the exact specificity of it. I mean, I I saw wrist. That's how I wrote down. I don't know if it was tendons or whatever, but they they basically were gonna try it out and said, okay, if, if he can play for the rest of the year, he will. But I think when training camp, well, not training camp, when he started skating, they realized he's in more pain than they expected. That's why he got the surgery this late because people are saying, oh shit, if he was hurt, why didn't he get the surgery? You know, back then and. I think they figured they were going to give it a whirl and see how it played out. That must be the most annoying thing to a fan. It's like, yes, we're going into the season. It's like, now they decided to have surgery. It's like, fuck! You guys see Tampa Bay, stash him. He'll help. Like, Um, I think, you know what I mean? There's so many times when it's like, all right, you got to give it six weeks and no, of no... Well, that's you know, usage, see if it works, and then you need the surgery. It just sucks. He's going to miss part of the year. I wonder if he used Dr. Booterbaugh. He was the guy who helped me out when that guy stepped on my wrist. Buddha ball Remember? helped me out too with my wrist. No way. One Remember of the his best fingernails were kind of weird too. I was like, oh man, he weird fingernails, but he's a hell doctor. of a surgeon. I think I think it's because their hands get so dry because they have to wash their hands constantly. Oh man. I think that's right. a that's a thing for, for most surgeons because they have to be clean when they're going in for it. But um I, I think I've told the story in the podcast before when I was in the American Hockey League the year I was an up and down between the NHL and AHL. When we were playing the Hershey Bears in playoffs, I got hit ass over tea kettle. Like one guy got me high, one guy got me low. And one of the guys, as he was stepping through the hit, when I when I got when I was ass over tea kettles, like basically when like my head was by the ice, I laid my my hand down and he and he stepped right on my wrist already. Ugh. And it cut the tendons to, to my finger. So I had to get rushed out. And uh, luckily he was able to to tie a ball back up and I'll never forget. Oh, I went to the hospital Jesus that night Christ. in Wilkes-Barre, and the and the doc the doctor there was like, "Ah, oh, suck it up. You'll be back playing next game." <laughs> Six to eight months later, after Holy tying shit, my really? tennis. Oh yeah, medical would, school did he go to? I, I'll never forget. He's like, "Ah, oh, you'll be back playing next game. Stop being a wuss." And I was kind of like, "Okay, well that's Wilkes-Barre good." Wilkes-Barre doctor at school. <laughs> he's, he's like, "Hey, Doc Butterball, don't even worry about it. Biz kid and stick handle before this happens. So just make sure he doesn't die under the operating table." That's oh that's God. where I blame my hands went. After that, I couldn't throw a saucer pass. I couldn't feel really? the bottom. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't really feel my bottom hand. Yeah, my doctor, Doctor Vinny Boombots. Uh, Carolina defenseman Jake Gatton, he's likely to miss the season due to uh, hip and back surgery. He's going to be going on LTIR. Yeah, he was pretty dinged up, and uh, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to play this year, Biz. He looks stunned. Well, yeah, I mean, that's a – yeah, that's like all of a sudden, boom, back and – you said back and hip surgery? Back and hip surgeries. They didn't – I don't know if he had them yet because the article I read, they didn't disclose whether he had had the surgeries yet. So if he hadn't had them yet, he's due for hip oh, and back. But either way, it's going to – pretty much torpedo his season. So he'll be on LTIR uh, for Carolina. Um, this is another little story that popped up. There's going to be small ads on uh, NHL Jersey start next season. Love it. Uh, the ads must fit a rectangle three by three and a half inches. 
Um, they're going to be slightly bigger than what the patches the NBA currently uses. It, they said it said that the NBA's revenue boosted by an estimated one hundred and fifty million dollars when they did it. So I don't know what the uh, so even if it's bump, half, even if it's exactly. half, or it, it could it, be hey, fifty it, seventy five million. It, the it thing is, I said I love it. I don't love it, right? Like. I look at Montreal's home jerseys, Chicago's home jerseys. Yeah, like, I don't want to see an ad on those. But to make that much money for the players in the league is a good thing. That's yeah. what I love about it. It's, it's a no-brainer. This is point. like, uh, I have four more inches in the back here if you want to put yeah. one from uh, Avis. Actually, oh, actually I don't even need the braids. name bar. He already sold his I braids. I don't need the <laughs> name bar. Just put an herbal active ad read on there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, and our buddy, well, I, I don't know you guys know. My buddy, Greg Wyshynski, he said the placement of the ads was going to be left up to the individual teams because obviously some teams like the Rangers with the diagonal and, you know, teams got cap and so so they'll leave it up to the teams, but you can assume it's going to be probably, you know, above the heart or opposite the heart, depending on what team you root for. Uh, let's see. Auto or extended general manager, uh, Pierre Dorian through 2025. He's like, um, what do I have to do to get fired? <laughs> <laughs> Getting an Uber. <laughs> uh, uh, we got some congratulations in order. A couple of guys retired from the uh, National Hockey League. First one, uh, David Backus. 15 NHL seasons split between St. Louis, mostly uh, played with Boston, obviously for a bit and then finished up with Anaheim. Well, until he went back to St. Louis and he signed a one day contract to retire as a St. Louis blue 965 games played and another 82 in the playoffs. Uh, just a consummate professional wit. Uh, uh, I mean, tough as nails, his, his nature off the ice was kind of the opposite of how he was on the ice. He was a fierce two way competitor, great center, uh, could score goals, beat you up, do everything. Just a fantastic player, great legacy. It's unfortunate he couldn't get a Stanley Cup, but uh, I think when players who play with David Backers think of him, they'll think what a great fucking teammate. Big time. Yeah, he just he he really did do it all. There was a few years there. I mean, he's looking thirty goals. He's fighting. He's hitting. He's killing penalties. He was just a power forward who, dude, he saved like he was taking dogs back from the Russian Olympics in Sochi. He's got a heart of gold. <laughs> Yeah. He guys cares for animals, right? He's a good human being who, unfortunately, fuck. I mean, concussions. His, man. his, te- oh. his team that he that he he retired as a blue, like he went to Boston. They lost the Stanley Cup final to him. You know, forever. That'll be the the tough part of his career. But if that's the worst thing that happened to him, what a run he had. He played in the league a long time. Uh, U.S. guy, college guy. What did he play? Mankato, I believe. Do you have it down there already? Uh, I, I didn't have his cause, no, no, but I can certainly pull it up for you. I, think I thought you were going I thought when, when you were going towards the dip, dis, uh, disappointed uh, voice in your mouth. Wait, I thought yeah. you were going to mention the concussions. I'm happy to see him retire and not sustain anymore. I mean, if there's yeah. one guy, it felt like every year he'd get one, and you know, as they pile up, you you you, you can you have concern about the guy's health. So I'm happy he was able to to hang him up, and 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 in doing so, had an unreal career. Yo, at Mankato is where he played three seasons. Yeah, so, um, yeah, represented his country a bunch of different times. Yeah, one of those hits. Remember Seabrook got him that one, Biz? That was one of the worst ones. He did battle a lot of head injuries where it was almost, uh, you're right, like looking at it, it's like probably time, right? Like yeah. He's played a long yeah. time. He's put his body through a lot. So hopefully he's good now. Um, I saw him in the distance at Jimmy Hayes' funeral. I didn't get to talk to him, but I saw he was there. No surprise, he showed up for that. And just a good guy who I think uh, probably got a lot more out of his career than than some people thought when he was 18, 19 years old, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was uh, a great Bruin, too. I mean, I thought he had, statistically, maybe not, but the guy, he got a lot of bad luck here. Remember, he got that gash yep. in his leg. He cut his leg. He had a concussion. I think he had a really, a really lot of tough luck as a Bruin, but... You know, he gave everything he had while he's here. And as a fan, man, that's all you can really ask for from a guy, you know? Yeah. The other all guy right. uh, who who ended up retiring, Travis Zajac. Probably yep. the sneakiest thousand games ever. Yeah, that Steady guy. Steady Eddie. Steady Eddie, like such a Lamarillo player, right? In, in Jersey all those years. And then they brought him over to the Islanders. I think he had every game except for 14, 15 games as, as, as a devil. So he retired as a devil. He's going to stay on and work with them. But he played at North Dakota, and then it, him and Parisi were in New Jersey together, who was also North Dakota, uh, fighting Sue. And I think looking back, like, Zajac was another guy. The reason you last this long in the league is you, you can play both sides of the puck. I mean, unless you're one of those dudes who's just straight-up 40-goal guy every year, you got to be able to be good defensively. That's why he played so long, because he was able to, like, shut down the opposing 
team's top players while also providing offense himself. Jersey had a couple really good years when he was there. He got to go to the Stanley Cup final. What year was that? Did they lose? They lost to L.A. In yeah, I was the thousand. Let's do the twelve or fourteen. It was either twelve or fourteen because those but, were the two years Ellie won. Biz, it's true. I saw how many games. I, I would have oh, yeah, guessed eight hundred. I thought he had eight hundred, eight fifty games, like over a thousand. Stayed healthy most of his career, and uh, a guy who I'm wondering um, if he couldn't get another contract. I think he might have been able to, or it was more just say hey, I, I don't. When you know, you know, right? Maybe it was just... Yeah, he didn't play many time. games last year. I think he played 13. H- hadn't played a ton over the last yeah, two true. years, but just a, just steady Eddie. Know exactly what to expect night in and night out. And you mentioned the, the Lou Lamarillo special. I, he played two AHL games and then right up to the NHL and never looked back um, in uh, an unbelievable career. So I'm sure he's... You said he's getting into what? Player development with the organization? He's doing a bunch of stuff, player development on and off the ice. And then I also read he's going to work with developing the New Jersey Devils like youth hockey program. So he's probably going to do a lot of off-ice stuff with younger kids, which is pretty cool that he's going to be doing that and trying to grow the game in the Jersey area. I don't know. Fucking right. Yeah. Looking up his career earnings, please, yeah. what's your guess? I would say I would say over 50. I'd say fifty-five million. How nice would that be? Make it fifty-five sheets. Yeah, I played, uh, uh, just to give all of his numbers: fifteen seasons, one thousand thirty-seven games played, all but thirteen of them with New Jersey. Uh, he's one of just four players with five hundred points with the New Jersey Devils, and yeah, he's going to be doing player development and consult with the team as well. Uh, and also, one other retirement we want to give a shout out to Zach 65, Smith. Sixty-five, I think. Oh. Sixty-five sheets. Sixty-five million. Yeah. Wow, good for him. Uh, like I was saying, uh, forward Zach Smith, he retired after 662 games played, 12 NHL seasons, 11 with Ottawa, one with Chicago. Uh, he was hurt back in February of uh, 2020, had some back surgery, and you know probably realized by the time he got back from it, he might not be in playing condition anymore. So we want to give uh, a congratulations to those three guys on behalf of us, uh, Zach Smith, Travis Zajac, and David Back. He was a guys, tough bastard. Guys gave a lot to the game, gave the heart and soul to the game, to the league. And, uh, you know, we always like to acknowledge them here on Spit and Chicklet. So enjoy retirement, guys. Uh, hopefully we'll get one or two or three is on soon. Um, speaking of retired guys in St. Louis, Chris Prong is number 44, is going to re- be retired January 17th of 2022. Uh, if you're in St. Louis, even though he's a, in their top four, st- still they're gonna yeah, retire it, yeah, <laughs> while uh, he's playing. It's cool, first time I've ever seen that. Fuck, um, he, could, he could probably still squeeze into that top four. They gotta be wearing those old, uh, are they doing the reverse retros again this season? I don't think they're doing the reverse retros. I don't know what I don't know what they're doing as far as third jerseys. Because, uh, oh, speak, it's funny you said that, Biz. Hilarious, your team is bringing back to Kachina. Yes, as their full time jersey. But the reason I asked if they were doing the reverse retros, if they're doing pronger night, they got to go back to the ones that they used last season, with uh, the, the, the blue with the with the white and yellow at the bottom, or not white and yellow, red and yellow. Excuse me. Yes, yes. I thought those were some of the the sneakiest best reverse retros. Now I know I don't know if if Adidas was just doing that for the first year, and then now they're going back to to the way it was. But I like that concept. It, at least, at least do it every couple of years where they got to get people devi- designing these new types of jerseys. I I think that the Coyotes had to do it though; they had to. It's like the one thing people like want from them is that jersey, right? Like I I, I read a lot about they're trying to get like more popular with younger people, and they think that that jersey will help. I, I agree with them. So they're going to have them in white too now, which I actually really like. If you go look at the old photos of like Rick Tockett and, and Ronick and, and all these guys, the white one was the one that stuck out the most to me. They used to have the real thick neck on them though. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is striking. Sometimes I'm, I usually like the, the road. Well, I shouldn't say the road Jersey. It was a road Jersey when I grew up, but like the DACA version, I like those better, but with the Arizona uh, biz, I like that. The Kachina on white, something about it. Very striking. It just pop, the crest pops yeah, a pops little out. bit more. Exactly. Uh, all right. Buzzing right along here. Uh, Rangers general manager, Chris Drury, he said it's a priority to name a captain this season, preferably early in the season, but he wants a uh, new head coach, Gerard, Gerard Gallant, to have a little time to assess. But interestingly, uh, uh, Tammy Panarin basically flat out said, I don't want to do it. Uh, he come out and, you know, said it's not a job that, you know, he doesn't speak English great. He just knows he's not suited to be a captain. And he, it was just unusual, I guess, to read quotes so far about a guy like saying, no, I don't want to be captain. But you certainly understand it. He made his point. 
but they haven't been a captain for the hasn't been a captain for the Rangers since Ryan McDonough uh, back in let's see February 26 of 2018. So three and a half years. The what about Adam Fox? Yeah, I was I thinking mean, that. I mean, you know, he came out of college, so he's not like super young. But that might be a lot to put on his plate now after, you know, he just won, won the Norris Trophy. Yeah. Uh, let him focus on his game. But you got to also look at candidates who are going to be there a while, and he's one of those guys. Um, Zabenajad would probably be, a, a, a you know, a good pick. But once again, he's up for uh, he's up for a contract after this season. So, yeah. Because Kreider's been there a while. It could be Kreider. Yeah. Yeah. He's it actually the longest Kreider. 10 degrees right now. Yeah. when guys are fucking flying <laughs> into the zone. It can't be Kreider. Yeah. Maybe the seal will weigh him down, so he'll actually slow down and won't be offside. Um, <laughs> but yeah, th- when when um, when Donor ended up retiring, they they took a year off with not having one. I think same with Detroit, where they finally eventually named Larkin. Now, what's the longest a team's ever gone without having a C? That's a great question, Paul. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but I would assume I like mean, two. Remember maybe? when they made Luongo Actually, the, the captain in Vancouver, it, <laughs> and he had the C on, on the jersey. Yeah. Minnesota, yeah, that did was he have brutal. it on his chin of his helmet? Yeah, he did. He did. Did it not go on the jersey? Went on his fucking Wait. bucket. You're right. Yeah, he had it right in the right on his fucking chin nightmare. on the on the helmet, which is fucking awesome. I don't I, know the Rangers. I, I, it's yeah, funny Minnesota that, did that no captain thing for like. The first two years of their existence, I think, or the rotation. And they had assistance. two different captains, I thought, with Koivu at one point. Yeah, that's Maybe a good question. That up. Like, to have no C either way. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the clip. Uh, Jonathan drew in. He talked about, remember he stepped away from the game back yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, several months ago. And he, you know, he, he talked about it openly. He cited his anxiety, insomnia, sleeping conditions, but either way, he looked good. He sounded good. And, you know, we obviously root for any guy in the league to get back to the, their healthy status. And, you know, it was nice to see him at least out there talking about the, the difficulties he's had and, you know, Anxiety sucks, man. I mean, I I still get it doing these shows. That's why I have a few beers before we start recording. Sometimes I get it. I can't I get imagine the same thing at that or a full level. few nosebleed vodka. You don't think I had it when I was talking about TNT earlier? It's like, <laughs> hey, um, um, I actually watched it. Uh, so the show Untold about um, crime and punishment with AJ and Wingfield. Mm-hmm. They have a bunch of different of those documentaries, and one of them's on Marty Fish. Who, if you don't know who that is, tennis incredible guy. tennis player. He grew up with Andy Roddick, and what a wild story! One of the first athletes to like make it big and talking about his mental health. This is such a good watch. I recommend it to anyone. Also, I respect the hell out of Marty Fish. He's an absolute stick. Would dummy me on the golf course. So uh, check that one out. It's really good, and it, it and it involves anxiety uh, and, and insomnia and, and the same type things that Druin was talking about. He was battling. So hopefully he feels better because. Right, that trade, we've shit on that trade a lot, how good Sergachev is and what's happened with Druin, but he's still, there's so much in there as a player. Let's see if this year he's feeling healthy and better. He can go light it up. And kudos yeah. to him for talking about it because exactly. it's, not, it's not easy to do and for him to come out and acknowledge it and talk about it. You know, I, I, a gen, I think it helps people. I know it genuinely helps people out. So good job, Jonathan. Yeah, and, and, th- and there's probably tons more guys who who suffer from this. Maybe not to the extent that he was, where he had to finally say, "Hey, I I I got to take a step away." But the you know the the fact that he's being vocal about it is huge because moving forward, if I feel like more guys will, will you know tend to put their own personal health. It gets it gets it gets difficult, man. You're under the bright lights playing in the NHL, and like you feel like yeah. you'd be letting your teammates down by leaving, especially around playoff time. So, so on top of the anxiety he's probably already dealing with, the the conversation of of going in there and talking it gets about compounded. it, yeah, it, it yeah, it probably made it even worse. So, like I said, kudos to him, and uh, and I, and I hope that he he can recover. What what's going on here? G texted us, and hopefully he didn't get us some Wikipedia, or if he did, it sourced. Uh, Bruins are the longest team without a captain, 1967-68 through 72-73, six seasons, uh, according to the text from Grinelli. Chicago and Pittsburgh also each did five seasons as well. Okay. And, of course, the um, Johnny Busick. A lot of people think Bobby O was the captain, but Johnny Busick was the captain for the Bruins, a lot of those Bruins teams. Oh, a misconception for you. Uh, let's see. Moving right along. Uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Um, back in June, they hired Sylvain Lefebvre to be an assistant on Brad Larson's staff, but he declined to get a COVID vaccination, which violates the NHL protocol. So the team let him go. So he will not be an assistant coach, the Columbus Blue Jackets, because he didn't want to get vaccinated. Um, 
The OHL suspended Montreal draft pick uh, Logan uh, Mayu indefinitely for violating the league's expectation for appropriate conduct by a player. He can exp- uh, he can apply for reinstatement January first of twenty twenty two. But what's interesting to me, guys, is that like this is he, bullshit. He wasn't suspended before the draft. They, I think, it's safe to say they knew the details of what had happened. And then he gets drafted, and then all this year, all this time later, and again, we're not defending his actions or what he did. It's just that odd he gets suspended now, whereas if he didn't get drafted, then there'll be no action, or if he get drafted later, it's just sort of a weird cause and effect, almost like they're trying to catch up to something. Am I am I off here, boys, or what? I uh, yeah, I was certainly surprised by it, and like it, it almost makes it sound like. So I think they'll let him play when he when he, put, he tries to reinstate right January first. So it's like they're suspending him for half the season. But I don't know. Like it was it was a it was a big story, and what he did it was not right by no means. Is that fucking acceptable? He came out. He said he didn't want to be drafted. I th- I think now granted the story goes back to where he didn't give an apology to what the girl wanted and and there's a long backstory to this but i thought he came out and and seemed responsible enough to to say that he really fucked up and needed to learn from his mistakes and i don't know they're just like all right well even though you just got drafted in the first round you can't play in our league i was just surprised i don't agree with it but the ohl seems to be doing things occasionally that that I don't agree with more I mean, often nowadays. If he did some suspension where the why wasn't he suspended right when this became knowledge, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm not saying he should or shouldn't be. It's not, that's not really what we're arguing. It's just the fact that. I'm just, just curious. I'm just curious to know if, if, if maybe sometimes the people making the decisions are unaware as to like the amount of public backlash it will actually receive when it's well, done. And then it, yeah. and then it does. And then they, and then, like you said, RA, they're just trying to catch up to it on well, the back end. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's uh, yeah. but I, but I would imagine for a guy who said he didn't want to even be drafted, he's probably okay with the punishment now, and he probably just wants to put this behind him, as does I'm sure everyone involved with the situation. I, I agree 100, percent Paul. And again, to reiterate, we're not defending him or what he did. We we no. you know obviously it's not not acceptable what he did. He's owned up to it. But it just seemed the timing of the suspension was just a little odd. That that's all. Like that it was just a little weird. And I think you guys agree. Um, uh, we got a couple of sad notes uh, from the last time we met. Unfortunately, um, legendary Chicago Blackhawks goalie Tony Esposito, Tony O, uh, he died at 78 from pancreatic cancer. Uh, a hockey Hall of Fame goaltender. I mean, Tony O, he's a guy I've seen, you know, late in his career, kind of the ass end of it. And this is a guy who did it with panache. He did it with style. Like you just knew it was Tony Esposito when he was playing that. He just had this sort of own style about him. Of course, you know, yeah, he, he did it from the goofy hand or whatever they call like the opposite hand of doing it. Uh, and also he, he was a, a early pioneer of the, the butterfly technique. I mean, that's something we take for granted nowadays that goalies do that all the time. Well, he was an, an early, um, what's that early adapter, I guess, to that. Cause it's not something you really talked about way back then. People didn't even talk about goalie technique back in the day. So uh, our condolences like strap to- on the Boston globe to your knees and good <laughs> yeah. luck. It was, yeah, basically that was it. Um, exactly what, so, uh, you know, our condolences to, to Phil, of course, and, and the, the extended Esposito family, friends, and, and anybody who played with him. And, uh, also we want to, uh, send our condolences to the family and friends of Rod Bear, Mr. Ranger. Uh, he passed away at 80 years old. Uh, his number seven was the first to be retired by the Rangers. So, uh, again, our, our sympathies, condolences to the extended Rangers family. I saw a great um, video. A guy was in like in one of the arenas watching the Rangers warm up and he had his Jersey on from back in the day. And he went down, he like tapped him on the shoulder. He turned around as Roger Vera is pretty cool. I, I heard, I read and heard some great things about him. What a player too. I didn't know how good he was. Right. You start yeah. learning and hearing once he passes away. Unfortunately, it took that. But holy fuck, what a career. Well, it goes to show how much, like, you know, cops matter. Because those Rangers teams in the 70s yeah. had a lot of good squads with, but they couldn't get over the hump. And, you know, uh, Mr. Ranger, Roger Bill was a key part of them. So, again, our condolences. Uh, a little bit of a happy note, at least we can go to here. Happy 70th birthday to the flower, the original flower, Guy Lafleur. Uh, this is a guy who tortured my childhood <laughs> as a Bruins fan, a, a Montreal Canadian photo, uh, 50 goals. I believe he was the first player to have 50 goals and 100 points for six consecutive seasons just a dynamic player uh an awesome player to watch i I hated him as a kid but i appreciated him so uh i think i'd give a nice little happy birthday to Guy Lafleur. i don't know if he listens but hopefully someone can't convey the message to him if they don't because he was a a a hell of a player all right boys this is 
probably, as you know, my favorite part of the episodes when we get to them, the ETC part, as I call them in our email, the et cetera part, the non-hockey part, the uh, celebrity, entertainment, movies, news, all that. Unfortunately, again, there's a few death notices of folks that we really liked, really appreciated, and we do want to acknowledge them here right now. Noah McDonald, 61-year-old comedian, hosted SNL for, uh, what, the weekend update for a bunch of years, a bunch of movies. I've seen him in concert. Um what you you obviously familiar with Noah McDonald? Oh, he's a, Dirty Works, one of the funniest Dirty movies Works. of all time. Like I, I, a lot of people don't even know about it. I didn't even know about it. Then somebody told about me. It's comedy. Artie Lang's in it. They, those two were kind of in a lot of stuff together, huh? Yeah, yeah, they knew each other very well. But what was the weekend update too? He always talked about OJ. <laughs> well, that's why he lost the job there. Yeah, because he really. Yeah, oh because, yeah. O- OJ was friends with Don Olmai, who ran NBC or NBC Sports at the time. And Norm, like, he did not not be shy about calling in on OJ because obviously he was a n- double murderer, even if he wasn't convicted. So he would just say it like, it's like, oh, murder is legal in the state of California now. And, like, eventually he got warned about it, warned about it, and then they fired him basically because he would just do too many OJ jokes. Yeah. like I mean, him and crazy. Artie Lang are – pretty aggressive and i think they've been blackballed a few places for their aggressive comedy now the, the norm mcdonald on these talk shows how he oh would God. just go into these stories like the moth one is incredible how he just ranted on about the moth the moth <laughs> family telling him, <laughs> the moth telling him the doctor all of his problems and, and then coming back with the punchline after like five minutes then there was also the the one girl who uh, was on the conan show who was promoting her movie with, uh, with uh, Carrot, uh, Carrot Top. Top? Oh my goodness, he was just ruining Carrot Top. Dude, him on the View. Oh my God, he's talking <laughs> about Bill Clinton murdering someone, and it. I, I, I. He just like loved the awkward moments, like the the, the moments that make most people skin crawl. I think he like wanted to live in those moments, and the more uncomfortable everyone was, the happier he was. That's what it seemed yeah. like, at least. Yeah, yeah. no, he was a master that, uh, I mean, he didn't specialize in awkward comedy, but he had no problem, like, venturing into it. Was so, he so. Was he always on the uh, Conan O'Brien show? Was he one of the guys that would come in frequently? He, I mean, he was, he popped on Letterman's couch. Yeah, I, I, he did frequent guest spots. I mean, I didn't watch Conan enough to know how frequently he did, but, I, I mean, I think they were boys from going back 30 years because Conan used to write for SNL way Biz. back in the day. Conan, he went on Conan. So Conan got the late night job. And then I think nine months later, like got fired. Right. All right. Oh God. Yeah. He was supposed to get it. And then Jay Leno backstabbed him. And then yeah, like, Jay, yeah, like, exactly. I remember that. Yeah. So, uh, so Norm's Norm goes on and he's got this big, he's like, Oh, I forgot. I got this basket for you. I, I forgot to give it to you. I, I, I kept forgetting to bring it in. And it's, the basket is like, congrats on getting the job. And he's like, open the card up, Conan. And the card's like, congrats on this job and the next 25 years and your future. Is just straight out teeing him up. He's like, oh, I didn't get this to you right away, but still, it's congrats, man. Oh, funny basket. Oh, I also heard he... um. This might have been. I was listening to Minahan. They were talking about him a bunch. They, they, that he had an idea for like a a, a show like a that would that would be that that would be like a normal like say everybody loves Raymond where he's the husband and it's a it's a sitcom and and he's got the family and it's Norm. But then like a couple episodes in, his wife's brutally murdered and he comes <laughs> home and her head's cut off. <laughs> oh, oh my! And God. everyone's like, uh, Norm. Uh... <laughs> The deadpan, the deadpan. He, he was the master he of the is, deadpan. He is. I told you guys, I, I actually looked back to my old DMs. We used to trade DMs back in the day, like eight, nine years ago, but it was pretty cool. Like, you know, one of my comedy heroes to actually get a reply from via DM. It's pretty, pretty good shit. You were, you, you, were you don't know how to roll a joint. Get better, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he, I, I had tagged him about something and he, yeah, he followed me and slid in my DMs to talk about yeah, what I had tagged him about, but yeah, it was, it was pretty cool, but uh, moving right along, unfortunately, well, my favorite group in the world, you guys know the Rolling Stones, they lost their drummer, Charlie Watts, a few weeks back, nine, uh, he was 80 years old, and it's funny, man, like you guys know I wrote, I write obituaries at Boston, and I don't write every celebrity death I write if it affects me in a personal way, enough to want to write about it, 
And I always would think, ah, oh, what if when one of the stones dies and you always think it's going to be Keith or Mick. And then, you know, Charlie Watts dies. And it's like, fuck man. It, it was like the dude's 80 years old. He was the drummer for the best rock and roll band ever. And it's like, you know, you, you, you sat on one hand, but it's also like, man, this guy had the best fucking life ever. Like, and he wasn't like the, you know, he wasn't the look, seeking the spot, like mix a ham and egg, Keith's Keith, but like Charlie Watts is like a very, he was an English gentleman. He, he was a very quiet guy, but he was like the hot beat of the band, man. And when he died, it was like, I, I can't say, I was sad that, I, that the guy died, but it was like, man, what a fucking what a life. So, you know, some, some obituaries would, I, I sit down and I cried. Like when Tom Petty died, he wasn't young, but the way he died, it was unexpected. And it was, you know, I was sad. I cried right now, but Charlie, it was like, man, this guy had a fucking life, man. Like, you know, he went to a band audition 50 fucking eight years ago and got the job of his lifetime. He never missed 58 years of Rolling Stone. Never missed a gig. He was all what? set to yeah. Not he never, one gig. Not one gig. He was Holy all set shit. to go back on tour, and then they announced about two months ago that they did. You know, it was probably a pre pre tour physical. They said, "Oh, he, Charlie's not going to be able to tour." And then you know, he died two months later. So uh, you know, obviously, he had some sort of uh, calamity going on. But this guy was just uh, the backbeat. You know, you always think of Stones, Mick, Keith, whatever, even Ron Wood. But you know, Charlie was the drummer for fifty eight fucking years, and all of a sudden he's gone, man. It's like, uh, it's heartbreaking. I mean, it's a band. I get them tattooed on my leg and it's like, it's, it's sad, but it's like the ultimate tribute is this guy was, you know, a legendary drummer for a legendary band. So I think the fact he lived to 80, man, it's like, you can't cry too many. You can't cry too much biz. If you're a has, rock star and you yeah. make it that long, like the way they were living, holy I mean, he's a Rolling shit. Stone dude. He lives till 80 fucking years old. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the fact that like, they're all still alive is, is a miracle. It's crazy. Like these guys were, I mean, they were doing hard drugs like, oh, for and, fucking 20, 30 years, right? And, and, right. And Charlie, and Charlie, everyone thinks so. Because Charlie, he was so quiet, but he he confessed to having a heroin addiction during their their run. I think it was in the seventies or eighties, and you know, it, it was such a crazy thing. I mean, imagine being the most famous fucking rock band in the world for 40 50 fucking years yeah it's a lot and yeah he had his own personal trials and tribulations and he, and he got through them and he was just always such a low-key guy and i'll tell you i've seen the stones probably three dozen times and every time you saw them when they announced him it was the loudest cheer by far i mean everyone loves mick and cute but when they announced Charlie, because he just was shy he almost like he was like sheepishly would smile because he just it almost seemed like he was trying to get him going yeah, he was like, you gotta try to get him going, eh? His personality was at odds with being what what a rock and roll like personality should be. So, anyways, man, I, I just uh, he's a guy I, I loved, I've worshipped for a long time, and I, I want to, uh, you know, send my condolences. I don't know who might listen to to Spitting Chickens who loves Charlie Watts, but if you do, um, I'm terribly saddened that that we lost him. But uh, he had a great life, and I want to send everybody my sympathies. And finally, one last one here, um, Michael K. Williams. Anybody who watched The Wire uh, on HBO. Oh, Omar coming, y'all. I mean, uh, like I said in my, my old bit uh, that I wrote for Barstool, uh, Wit Biz, one of the most iconic TV characters in the history of the medium. Like, there was nobody out there who just personified a character, I don't think. I mean, you think of the Fonz, uh, like the Fonz and Henry Winkler. Like, that's what, like, Omar was like. Omar, Michael K. Williams, like, he was such a iconic character and just to lose him at 54, man, it's sad. It's it's sad that that, that we lost a guy like that because he, he was such a such a great guy, but more than the wire, dude. He was in movies, shows, he all was over in the place. Uh, Boardwalk Empire, too. Boardwalk He's Empire, good. Chalky White, per- exactly. I mean, gone baby, gone. Every movie he was in, he was just one of those person, one of those uh, actors who had such a presence that whatever you saw him in, they struck a call with you. And uh I mean the wire though, like his his thing with that. I mean this his character is a guy who robbed drug dealers with a shotgun, and he was beloved because I think because Williams's portrayal was so charismatic, wit that like you felt like you want to hang out with the guy, <laughs> even though he's like ripping off drug dealers. Like there was some about him where like yeah, he this um, guy's a, you know has a cool you know a cool veneer to him. When he when he died, like I I love the wire, one of my favorite shows, and somebody wrote or put up the scene with uh, Bunk when bunk meets him and at, at the, it's like a bus Sit stop or something. There, yeah, That's an yeah. unreal scene. 
Yeah. It's a great scene. Like, I, mean, there was I gotta so get many back into that, that show. Well, just, I tried it. You know, yeah, you know, Biz, I tried it. Was, it, it, it. It can be a little slow. I actually know a lot of people who don't like it. So I totally understand Fun. somebody who wouldn't be into it. I don't know, though. Maybe when you're older, maybe a couple years go by, maybe give it another shot. I just enjoyed the hell out of it. I didn't love season two, but Omar's number one character, no doubt. So uh, uh, are you one of those, I don't like season two uh, of The Wire people, what? I don't know. Yeah, I didn't like, I, I mean, I, I watched it. It was just my least favorite season. I hated that kid. I hated oh, that um, fucking kid, Ziggy. Oh, uh, Ziggy. Yeah, he, he's an awful character. But I think season two gets a bad rap because none of The Wire happens without season two. Like uh, all the events. That oh, go no, on I that, know. I just you got to set him up to knock yeah. him down, right, R.A.? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, Biz. But anyways, yeah. I, I, again, I just want to acknowledge a, a few of the uh, f- folks we've lost since we last met. Uh, but we can talk about some cheerier things while we're here. The Emmys. I don't know if you guys watched the Emmys. I know it was a, a, an awesome Monday night football game. Actually, you know, what? let's talk about football first. NFL. Brady and Gronk. Biz. Wit. It's tough to watch these guys still do it in a different city right now, but. I can't get mad. I mean, what you can't get mad watching Tom Brady. No, it's a, it's a, it's incredible. I at this point, I don't. How old's Brady? Forty four. Is he forty four yet? Yeah. Oh. Like I don't like. When will he be bad? It's like I don't know. Now you can't really hit the QB. Like when will he be bad? Like I don't really see in like two years. All of a sudden, like he's going to be that much worse. Who knows? Like I think Bill Belichick was asked, uh, if, could he play till he's fifty? And he said, like, if anyone could, it's probably him. Well, so the games change for the quarterbacks are protected so much. If he makes sure he's on a team with a great old line, he's got receivers, it's just wild to watch. But the first two weeks have been awesome. Uh, there was some sick 430 games yesterday. Um, I, I'm in an awesome uh, survivor pool, right? I I I, I it's 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 so interesting that how much gambling goes on. Go to the Barstool Sportsbook in the states that you can. So interesting in in the gambling world of the NFL to then look at how hard it is just to pick a winner every fucking week. Like these survivor pools, biz. When you pick a team, you can't use them again. Right. It gets crazy as I've the won weeks one go before. on. You you I took one down once too. It was split with like forty people, but. Um, yeah, the NFL's been good. I'm actually this game's on in the background right now. I have the over tonight in Green Bay, Detroit. Detroit went up early. So I, I I'm excited for the football season to get going, but the Brady Gronk thing is just a joke. Like I don't see how it's gonna they're gonna be stopped this year. They have the whole team back. I mean, yeah. all the primetime games have been awesome. I mean, I watched yeah. uh, a little bit of the Ravens Chiefs one. What was uh, what was the one with the Raiders in, in week one? Where oh, that was uh, crazy. Oh, was Baltimore? Like the, yeah. Was it with Baltimore? Yeah, where they, Baltimore. Yeah. yeah, they thought they had the touchdown. The the refs on the mic being like, "Hey guys, this game's not over." Everybody's still shaking hands and praying on the field. Finally, they get everybody off, and then they pick. They ended up getting the pick and going back the other way. It was, was uh, crazy. Yeah, there's been a lot of that shit. Like the Seattle uh, Tennessee game. Like Tennessee, they sacked Russell Wilson in the end zone. Should have been a safety to end the game, and they end up saying, "Nope, he didn't get he didn't get tackled." It was like the refs. So the so problem is this bad. new taunting dude. Oh. The dude, fact like, that they're throwing flags for taunting, and it's brutal, not even dude. taunting some of the flags they're throwing. It's like, it, as good as the NFL so is, they find ways to just fuck it up. They really do, dude. Like, no keep, fun you, know, when, you know, honestly, with, like, if, you, if a guy makes a play in boxing in a guy's face, who gives a fuck, dude? Like, I know. That's what, that's what they're getting paid for, to do those plays. And wait, we expect them to not be fired up and fucking yell Whose idea was when this? They do it? Was this the, just the league? Fucking, some cranky old dipshit, man. It's fucking brutal, dude. Like, but, like that's the passion people like with sports. I know. Like to, to say, oh, it's taunting. Fuck that noise. Um, uh, Ra and Wit, what have you yeah. been? What have been your initial thoughts on Mac Jones? I thought he's looked fantastic so far. I mean, he. I, I don't know about fantastic. Should he be definitely well. looks better than any other rookie QB. Now he's yeah. with a coach who's been around the game so long and a team who's probably better. Not probably, but. Jacksonville and the Jets with those other two guys have nothing on uh, the Patriots. And the guy in San Fran hasn't been playing. But he looks very, very comfortable and confident, which is the biggest thing. So, like, if you, it's very weird to me, too, because – so the, the kid on the Jets took, Zach Wilson, right? Like, I'm not saying he's bad. I'm not saying he's a boss. It's been two games. But the Jets pick him – and he was sick at BYU. I, I watched him, and I like used to bet on BYU. But 
How do you not take the fucking QB at Alabama who's played in the SEC and been through everything? It's like they they oh I know that they don't give Alabama QBs credit because of all the weapons they have, but if you're scouting, like what do you like you're seeing this kid's athleticism at BYU, or you're just seeing this like old school big body pocket passer who ran Alabama's offense in the best right. college. It's just so awkward. And you're and essentially weird. playing with NFL caliber yeah. players day in and day out, practicing and then and then and then hitting them. Um, they overthink it. They yeah. definitely overthink it. Yeah. And they look for athleticism, but it's like, I don't know, like Belichick, it, it, now it, it, two games, dude. So what the hell do we know? But it looks like this guy was a steal in the middle of the first round. It, it's just, he just looks very, he just looks, well, he looks like a pro. Since we're on uh, the football topic, did you guys see that kid propose to his girlfriend after oh the God. loss in the NCAA? Dude, Talk about Florida all, State. Um, all-time tough proposals. I mean, he was a barstool I, athlete too. They should have cut him. I said it. I tweeted it. Like, what? What the hell was that kid thinking? I don't. I, would, I don't even I would, understand how you could get engaged after losing a game on a hail mary. All right, you put proposing as a player post game, win or lose, as worse than doing it at a sporting event as like somebody there watching. I, I think any any proposal around any sporting event is just all <laughs> all all a loss, no matter before, after, during. It's just just. I wonder what the it. divorce rate is for. There was uh, a divorce on the big screen, though. <laughs> yeah, I think Barstool had it up there, or maybe it wasn't an announcement of a divorce, but guys were with his, with their buddies and they were like, "Congrats on the divorce, Max!" And it was up on the big screen. That's better than like, "Look, honey, Chelsea, will you marry me?" Chelsea Football Club, by the way. Holy shit, is my soccer team good? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This <laughs> Lukaku from Belgium, guys. <laughs> I'll go into that later. I don't uh, what, you mentioned soccer, and a few minutes ago, I mentioned Ted Lasso, and well, the Emmys were on Sunday night, and obviously we were all watching football, but I, I thought it was awesome that Ted Lasso won the uh, Emmy for Best Comedy. Jason Sudeikis won. Uh, Hannah Wadding- Waddingham won for the Best Actress. A gold Brett Goldstein went for best actor, dude. Ted Lasso was taking the world by storm, and everyone's still wondering: Has Ryan Whitney watched Ted Lasso yet? Um, no, but no. I've tried so many times where I have this stupid big controller that like can switch over. So, I can, on the controller I can press Apple TV, but I press it, and then I can't get off the screensaver screen because I don't have the Apple TV remote. I want to watch the show. Like, I'm actually now, like, dying to watch the show. I was with on a golf trip with uh, Horkoff and Cleary, my good buddies. Some other guys were on the trip. And they were mentioning Bertuzzi was on the trip. And, like, it almost would make you, like, coach different. Like, that's how good the show is, they're saying. Like, if you coach kids, it might make you, like, coach a different way. Like, I've – all right, I'm – Like, be once positive? Once my Apple TV works, I'm going to watch it. Like, Miz, will like- you? Like not, oh yeah, I haven't watched it yet. I'll hop on the train with you. But like you're saying like coach from like a, a way a way more positive perspective. Well, yeah, I guess he's like, you got to see the show. But in the end, it's all about being positive for what they said. And like more, they, they didn't want to give stuff away. Clearly tried ruining like the second season for me. I go, shut up, Bear. I started, I had to go, blah, 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 not listening. Because he was just trying to ruin it for me. Yeah. But I'm going to watch it. Dude. I, I, I listen. No, it, you know, it, there's a hundred people who've said it's the best show of all time. So I have to. Yeah. It, it really is that good, obviously. Um, but additionally succession that was not at the Emmys. That's just a show. I've been beating the drum. It's coming back October 17th. You, are, you, are, you, that. are you caught up on it? You've seen it, right? With, yeah. yeah. I've, oh, I've yeah. watched all, all, all succession. I love it. You watch succession. No, I'm, uh, I'm you, really behind on a lot of shows right now. I, I'll tell you right now. I'm busy. Hiking, if you're going to watch well, one show for the next trying to cure my dog months. from bedwetting biz watch succession it's a it's a one hour drama on hbo there have been two seasons of it it's fucking phenomenal like i could tell you to watch this comedy or that comedy but if i'm going to say to watch one show until we meet again watch succession it's absolutely phenomenal it's a unreal drama again it's coming back october october 17th there are two seasons to watch in the meantime also, uh, with another show I discovered, it's called The Other Two. Like, The Other Two. Apparently, the first season of this aired back in, like, uh, two years ago on Comedy Central. Never heard of it. Didn't didn't know it was a show. Well, HBO picked it up, and they sanctioned, uh, I'll, I'll pay for a second season. So I didn't hear about it until the second season dropped. And basically, it's a story about a, a family whose the youngest brother becomes a viral sensation for singing like a shitty song. 
and the two siblings become like, you know, his not hangers on, but they become his managers. Hence the name, the other two wet. I'm telling you, this show is fucking hilarious. Anybody it's a comedy? Listen, it's a comedy. It's a half hour comedy, right? They just finished the second, yeah, second season on HBO Max. Hilarious. You can whiz through the whole season or two seasons in, in an afternoon and night. I didn't even hear the show with a month ago. I can't remember. All right. How many people besides you, like normal people, can't fucking whiz through two seasons in a night? What are you talking <laughs> well, about? Well, the half hour, dude, the half hour. Do you have a episodes, job, folks? Just no, quit it. Yeah, dude, I, what are there, 10 episodes? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 10 episodes, Who's half hour. Five hours just dude, during the day to just uh, crush a fuck, show. Don't have fucking kids, man. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, no, all joking aside, like. Here's a vasectomy to add. <laughs> With a Biz Twenty <laughs> promo code now. <laughs> Even if you spread it out, with like I stumbled upon the show, ne- I literally never heard of it. And you know me, I'm a TV guy. I hear all the shit. I saw the other the other two, and it was season two HBO Max. I was like, wait a minute, I didn't even heard of season one. And I put it on, and it was on. It's come to find out, it was on Comedy Central. The show absolutely fucking hilarious. I blogged about it the other day. I wrote a big blog saying, if you're looking for a comedy show, watch the other two. It's that. How do I good. watch the first season? It's on HBO Max as well. So like, okay. like even though Comedy Central aired the first season, the, it's still on HBO Max. So you can go back, and it's it's just it's a brilliant satire of pop culture, uh, internet culture. Like I mean, The Simpsons are, are hilarious with that shit. This show actually, in some ways, reminded me what of The Simpsons about how funny. Oh my it's, goodness! No, li- listen, it, it's not a cartoon. How much it satirized like pop culture and internet culture and like. It, it was like, oh my god, the way this show is funny reminds me of how The Simpsons was funny. That's well, now I know saying. why you love it so much, and, and uh, I, now I'm going to check it out. And I'm not saying oh, okay. it's as so, funny collectively as The Simpsons, but the jokes they make are on the same level. Sorry, pick guys. one, RA, and I'll start tonight with my girlfriend. Uh, Ted Lasso, Succession, or the other two? Which one do you want me to start? Start the other two, like because okay. it's 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 a good. Goofy humor. He like, just yeah, said right. if you have one show to watch, Secession. So he changed his mind to other. Well, he two. said right now, and that's biz like on his own level. So like I was coordinating it for him, not you. No, I, like, I I I love your recommendations. I, you told me Mayor right. of East Town, and I, I fuck yeah. that show was unreal. I I binge watched that, so I turned in RA. I went straight. Uh, I think it was uh, about eight hours of uh, of shows. I went through the night. Uh, I had one other thing written down here. Wit, you uh, you mentioned this uh, NYPD. Um, uh, F- Den- oh FDNY God. hockey game on ESPN2. You said it was amazing. It was one of the best hockey games I've ever watched, dude. It was unbelievable. These guys were – it was full hitting, bro. Full hitting. Oh, they were killing, killing each other. other out there. They were brawling. It was unbelievable. It, 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 there was fights. The MSG was fucking sold out. Butchergrass, Kevin Weeks, Ryan Callahan on the broadcast for ESPN. What? Like – it was the 20th anniversary of 9-11, and this game was fireworks. I At this point, it's like, you know, there's only so much to be said, right? People can't watch it, but but holy shit, it was, it was so entertaining. Unreal you, hockey. Was it like 50-50 as far as who people were rooting for? I felt like I felt like it was 50-50. I think when the fire scored, it was maybe a little bit louder, but they these teams hated each, each other. Like you couldn't even imagine how much these teams were battling back and forth. It was, it was just awesome. It was a couple of weeks ago now, but entertaining game. The broadcast was incredible too. Just yeah, how they incorporated like nine 11 stories and yeah. stuff. I thought it was, it was awesome. Well, everyone, we, uh, we missed you guys. We missed talking to each other. As you can tell, we've rambled on for close to three hours, I think, but it's, it's, ha- it, it, it's happening boys. We're back. There's so many storylines. Like we mentioned, we got Biz as a national TV star now, oh, making a fool out of himself, allowing us <laughs> to use him as content. It's going to be excellent, and I can't wait to get going. So we'll have season previews coming up. We're all going to be together at the beginning of the year, watch some games, and we'll get the gambling. We'll get Merle's involved. So I, I cannot wait, and I'm so happy that that we are working again. Ryder Cup, wit? You want to talk Ryder Cup quick? Oh, do I want to talk Ryder Cup? We can go over that next week, but holy shit. Maybe one of the most dislikable, like this USA team – Brooks Kepka is a fucking idiot. Like I, I couldn't stand Bryson. I can't stand Bryson. This Kepka, did you see his quotes, Biz? No. 
he he's like, yeah, it's kind of a tough week. I'm like paraphrasing. He's like, you know, during the major weeks, I'm on my own. I get to nap a lot. You know, I have my schedule. You know, I don't even have time to lift at the Ryder Cup. I had to go to the gym at five in the morning, like a tiger at the press. It's just like, don't play. Paul Asinger was the captain. I think they won in 2008. And he's like, he came out. He's like, don't play, man. Like, I like cut him. Like, get like he's just such a. I, I, I don't know. I hated man. him from the beginning. Him. There was some arrogance about him I didn't like. Oh, yeah. It's like, it, it was easy to root for him over Bryson DeChambeau because, you know, well, I mean, I think his actions kind of speak for themselves as well. But I feel like they're just like two losers going at it. It, it really is. It's two clowns going back yeah. and forth. And it's. He just like, I don't know, something about him. He just thinks he's so cool. Like, yeah, dude, I want, you know, I would have been in the, I would have played Major League Baseball. I played hockey. Then I got hurt. It's like, I don't know, man. Once he started dog, I talked to my buddy. He's a Navy SEAL. He's like, uh, you can't put your fucking personal schedule aside for one week to represent your country in probably the most universally loved and watched golf event oh, every yeah. other year, the Ryder Cup. Like, just such a clown. So I wish they'd cut him. Uh, but he's playing. I love speed. I like Thomas. I, I, I've given Thomas shit before. I actually really like Justin Thomas now. It's just when he had the guy kicked out for telling his ball to get in the bunker was a tough moment for him <laughs> a few years ago. I love Morikawa. I love Shawfield. I like Scotty Scheffler. I like all the rest of the team. It's just like Brooks and Bryce and fuck. But for some reason, nine of the last 12 Ryder Cups, Europe, Europe's won. And every year the U.S. is favored. But this this course, Whistling Straits, had a chance to play it a few years back in Wisconsin. It is like a bomber's paradise, right? It's a long course. USA is the favorite again, but I do not know. So let's let's all watch that this weekend, um, and we'll be able to talk about it next week. I, I go USA, go USA. I'm gonna, I, you know, I'm a United States citizen. I'm an American fan. Just those two guys drive me nuts. Well said, Wit uh, boys. It's been right. a blast getting everybody right. back, getting the band back together, having some fun, raising some hell. And uh, we'll catch everybody next week. Thanks, Scotty Gomez. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Oh. Peace.